Section 1 And Moses gathered Rabbi Shia says that the war that Amalek waged against Israel was on all sides because an evil serpent strengthened up above and down below. He talks about defilement, impurity, and nocturnal pollution and tells how God supplied Balaam with a place of defilement as he deserved if it had not been for Moses above and Joshua below. Israel would not have overcome the evil serpent who had planned to steal the sign of the covenant. Rabbi Shia says that wherever there are sinful people, the righteous and pious among them are punished for their sins, but because the tabernacle was to be built only for the children of Israel, Moses gathered and separated them from the other nations. Rabbi Lazar says that when the people gave a great shout, the sound made the stone tablets fall and break because the letters flew from it, leaving the stones heavy and without spirit. We are told that this loud voice arouses the evil serpent who seizes like Rabbi Lazar. Also refers to the four seasons of the year Chesed, Burit, Tiferet, and Malchut, and the voice that rises in the four winds of the worlds. Therefore, Joshua heard means that the voice of evil had seized the light of the moon that is Malchut, that Joshua held onto Moses, who held onto the sun that is Zerampin, did not hear, and the light of all Israel darkened because of that evil. But because God had pardoned their sins, Moses was able to gather them all together, one, and Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel. Shema 351. Rabbi Shia opened the discussion with, and Saul said, The Kenite go depart. Ishmael 156. Come and see what is written about Amalek. I remember that which Amalek did to Israel of the two, but the Holy One, blessed be, he remembered all the wars that the other nations waged against Israel. Why mention this particular war? Because there was not a more difficult war before him as the one waged by Amalek. He explains, but of course, this war that Amalek. Wage was on all sides up above and down below because at that time the evil serpent strengthened up above and strengthened down below in this world too like an evil serpent that lurks in ambush on the crossroads so was Amalek an evil serpent before Israel that lurked in wait to ambush them on the crossroads as written how he laid in wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt Ishmael 152 and he lurked in ambush up above to defile the temple which is Malchut and lurked down below to defile Israel whence do we know that from the verse met you by the way to Barum 2518 it is written here how he met you had Karshah by the way and there if there be among you any man who is not clean by reason of uncleanness that chances had migrate by night to Barum 2311 in both verses the words relate to Uncle Anas 3 and therefore it is written about Bilam and Elohim met have Baker Bilam Bimid Bar 234 the word Baker denotes impurity namely nocturnal pollution as mentioned. Above you may say that Elohim is which implies holiness, yet the Holy One blessed be he supplied him with that place of defilement to be defiled in it so that he Bilam would be defiled by the same grade to which he cleaved. What did Bilam do? He planned by the offerings he sacrificed to rise to holiness immediately. The Holy One blessed be he supplied him with that place of defilement. He said to him, Here is impurity upon you as befits you, hence it is written, and Elohim met Bilam for in the same manner met you had Karja by the way refers to that supernal evil serpent that was sent to you to defile you on all sides, and if it had not been for Moses becoming strong up above and Joshua down below Israel would not have overcome it. Therefore the Holy One blessed be he bore a grudge against that one for ages. The reason is that he planned to tear the member of the sign of the covenant from its place, and therefore it is written, I remember also visit Ishmael 152, namely in Remembrance divine visitation which is Malchut because the secret of the holy covenant is implied in this word 5 come and look at the verse and Saul said to the Kenite Ishmael 156 who is the Kenite it is Jethro he asked who placed the children of Jethro in here to dwell in Amalek their abode being in Jericho and answers it is written and the children of the Kenite Moses father-in-law went up out of the city of palm trees with the children of Judah into the wilderness of Judah showed him 116 and when they moved from there they dwelt in the territory of Amalek until that time when King Saul came and removed the Kenite from Amalek 6 for when there are evil people the righteous and pious that are among them are punished for their sins this was already explained that is why Saul removed the Kenite from among Amalek in the same manner if not for the mixed multitude who joined Israel Israel would not have been punished for the sin of the golden calf 7 come and see what is written above of every man whose heart prompts him Shema 252 which includes everyone even the mixed multitude this is because the Holy One blessed be he wanted to build the tabernacle from all sides the inner part and the shell and since there were a mixed multitude among them it was said of every man whose heart prompts him in order to include them in Israel who are the inner part thus everyone was commanded to take a part in the tabernacle late afterwards people came together according to their ilk and the mixed multitude came and created the calf and those from among Israel were drawn towards them who eventually died the mixed multitude brought upon Israel death and killings the Holy One blessed be he said from now on the building of the tabernacle would be performed only on the part of Israel at once Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel together Shema 351 afterwards it is written take from among you an offering to Hashem a five from among you surely instead of as written before of every man whose heart prompts him Shema 252 and Moses gathered where did he gather them from because the mixed multitude was among them Moses had to gather and separate Israel from among them nine and Moses gathered Rabbi Abba opened the discussion with the scripture gather the people together men and women and children to Barum 3112 what is to be from now on the community of Israel is also here the community of Israel that is 600,000 people 10 Rabbi Lazer opened the discussion with Israel when Moses came down from Mount Sinai it is written and when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted had barrow he said to Moses there is a noise of war in the camp Shema 3217 he asked Joshua heard could it be that Joshua heard and Moses did not and answers until that time Joshua did not know and Moses did know and therefore it was written Joshua heard he asked what then does the word barrow mean and Answers Barrow is spelled with A to indicate that that voice was on the other side that is called evil Havariah and Joshua was the face of the moon which is Malchut he looked at the voice that was from the side of evil and immediately said to Moses there is a noise of war in the camp 11 at that time the first stone tablets broke and we already explained that the stones in the hands of Moses became heavy fell and broke what is the reason the letters have flown from the stone tablets and the stones remained without spirit and therefore grew heavy 12 come and see in the four seasons of the year which are Shesed, Burit, Tiferet and Malchut a voice rises in the four winds of the worlds the season of Nisan is south and Shesed the season of Tishrei is north and Burit the season of Tammuz is east and Tiferet and the season of Tavis is west and Malchut and each season incorporates all the others by that voice the other side is aroused and by that arousal enters between the Voices namely between the voice of Tiferet and the voice of Malchut so the light in the lower voice darkens namely in Malchut this happens because the light of the upper voice Tiferet does not reach the lower voice Malchut therefore this arousal of the other side comes early and the serpent that seduced the woman Eve enters between them that is between Tiferet and Malchut and receives light and that voice of the other side is the voice noise of war the voice of evil Hebarea this is the meaning of Barrow namely in the verse and when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted Hebaro Shema 3217 13 and therefore Joshua heard and not Moses because that evil had seized the light of the moon which is Malchut that Joshua was attached to and Moses who was attached to the sun which is Zeir and did not hear and all Israel their light darkened because of that evil that clung to them since the Holy One blessed be he had pardoned their iniquity then Moses gathered the congregation of the children of Israel together and said to them these are the words for the mixed multitude was separated from them section 2 3 night watches Rabbi Lazar describes how the night's 12 hours are divided into three each of which is allotted to a different host of angels the first is appointed to praise their master with love at that time the souls of those on earth leave their bodies to go up those that are not worthy are rejected and hover about the world but the worthy ones travel up to see their master on the holy mountain of Hashem where their deeds and merits are written down the second host recites poetry for two hours these angels of the second watch bewail the destruction of the temple and weep by the rivers of Babylon God weeps two tears into the great sea of flame is awakened and peered with a spirit from the north and the flame goes to hover about the world Rabbi Lazar refers to Esther and the secret of judgment of the left column which is at this
390 firmaments shed two tears into the great sea and tearfully remembered his children 15 for the night with its 12 hours is divided into three directions right left and center and if there are more than 12 hours to the night they are considered to be day and not night for only 12 hours belong to it to Malchut called night these 12 hours are divided into three directions and three hosts of holy angels are allotted to these three directions 16 it. First host is appointed to the first four hours of the night to praise their master namely in the right column which is Jesus what do they say they say the earth is Hashem's and the fullness thereof for he has founded it upon the seas who shall ascend the mountain of Hashem he that has clean hands and a pure heart Tehillim 241 to 4 what is the reason for saying this it is because the night spreads its wings over the world and then all the inhabitants of the world taste death and their souls leave. The body to go up and these angels stand and say about the souls who shall ascend the mountain of Hashem. The mountain of Hashem refers to the temple mount. His holy place refers to the men's section as it is in the celestial temple which is Malchut. So it is in the terrestrial temple 17 because in each firmament there are many chiefs and guards when the souls leave they want to go up but if they are not worthy they are rejected and the souls hover about the world and some troops of spirits take them and tell them some lies and some truths about what is to be in the near future. All this is as was explained 18 and the souls of the righteous travel up and doors are opened before them and they go up into that place which is called the mountain of Hashem which is like the secret of the terrestrial temple mount and they go up to that place which is called his holy place there all the souls appear before their master that place is like that terrestrial place where Yisrael appear before the Holy One, blessed be he in the men's lit Yisrael section at the time when the souls are standing there. The joy of their master is to construct with them a place that is called Holy of Holies where all their deeds and merits are recorded. 19. The second host is appointed to recite poetry in the second four hours, but they recite poetry only for two hours before midnight when the Holy One, blessed be he that is the central column, enters the Garden of Eden. 20. And these angels of the second watch are the mourners of Zion after the destruction of the temple, for they bewail the destruction of the temple in the beginning of the second four hours, which are the secret of the left column, which the other side mainly holds to the open and say by the rivers of Babylon there we sat down and also wept when we remembered Zion. Tehillim 1371. And it is they who weep by the rivers of Babylon together with Yisrael. This is the meaning of the verse and also wept for. The meaning of also is that we also wept like the angels and how do we know that they cried there it is written behold the mighty one shall cry outside Yeshua 337 what is outside it is Babylon for all the angels escorted the Shechinah to Babylon sat there and wept with Israel and therefore they opened with this by the rivers of Babylon and concluded with remember Hashem against the children of Edom Tehillim 1377 21 then the Holy One blessed be he awakens along with his grades and strikes the firmament so that 12,000 worlds are shaken he roars and weeps as the verse says Hashem shall roar from on high and utter his voice from his holy habitation he shall mightily roar because of his habitation Yermeah 2530 he remembers Israel that they are in exile and sheds two tears into the great sea then a flame is awakened from the north one spirit from the north joins that flame and the flame goes to hover about the world midnight comes then and the flame goes to Beat the wings of the rooster and he crows then the Holy One blessed be he enters the Garden of Eden 22 the Holy One blessed be he has no pleasure until he enters the Garden of Eden and enjoys himself in the souls of the righteous and the sign to this union is in the words of Esther, who I as Malchut to the king, namely Zeir and before we are sold I and my people to be destroyed to be slain and to be annihilated Esther 74 this is the secret of the dominion of judgments of the left column. And the king said who is he and where is he Abit 5 and she said this wicked Haman Abit 6 namely the clipper that is drawn from the left column and then and the king arising from the banquet of wine in his wrath went into the palace garden Abit 7 that is to the garden of Eden 23 when the Holy One blessed be he enters the garden of Eden all the trees of the garden and all the souls of the righteous open and say lift up your heads O you gates who is this king of glory lift up your heads O. You gates tell him 247 to 8 and when the souls of the righteous that are on earth return to their bodies then all those angels encourage them and say behold bless Hashem all you servants of Hashem tell him 1341 we learned that the third host says this verse in the last four hours which are the central column 24 and the third host recites poetry until the light of the morning rises and then all those stars and constellations praise their master and all those archangels that govern by daytime. Namely that are drawn from Zeir and then all praise their master and recite poetry this is as said when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of Elohim shouted for joy Eo 387 this refers to all the angels because at night only a part of the angels recite poetry meaning those who are drawn from Malchut but during daytime everyone recites poetry even the angels who are drawn from Zeir and 25 when the sun comes out by day all Israel sing below and the sun above this is as written may they fear you as long as the sun Tehillim 725 when the sun drives its wheels a pleasant voice begins to sing what is it singing it sings oh give thanks to Hashem call upon his name sing to him sing psalms to him Tehillim 1051 to 2 and Israel praise the holy one blessed be he by day this is the meaning of the verse may they fear you as long as the sun and though we established the scripture Rabbi Lazar said if the inhabitants of the world were not hard-hearted and blindfolded they would not have been able to bear the sweet voice of the will of the sun when it drives and praises the holy one blessed be he this is the meaning of may they fear you as long as the sun section 3 the angel of death is present among the women at daylight the rabbis rise from studying the Torah and go to see Rabbi Shimon he cautions them not to go outside because the angel of death is around and has permission to destroy whoever he wants Rabbi Shimon explains that the angel of death can ask for justice before God by repeating someone's offenses when the person is sentenced the angel of death kills him when a dead man is taken to the cemetery the angel of death is among the women so the men must not look at the women the ancient wise men decreed that a chauffeur should be blown when the dead person was taken from his house in order that the angel of death should have no power over the living then we hear that when Israel made the calf and many died the angel of death was among the women inside the camp of Israel Moses saw this so he gathered the men all by themselves the angel of death did not leave the women until the tabernacle was built Rabbi Shimon says that if the angel of death is among seven women he seeks justice but if he is among ten women he blames and seeks to kill after these admonitions the rabbis study Torah all day then Rabbi Shimon discusses the story of the ark asking why God did not just move Noah to a safe place where the Flood waters would not come he answers saying that since the destroyer came into the world whoever did not protect himself and was found before him in the open forfeits his life because he brings death upon himself we hear that while the rabbis are hiding at home thirteen people in town died and Rabbi Shimon says blessed be the merciful that the angel of death did not behold your images twenty six while they were studying the Torah daylight broke they stood up and went to be before Rabbi Shimon when he saw them Rabbi Shimon said laser my son you and the friends remain hidden for these three days and do not go outside because the angel of death is in town and has permission to cause damage since permission was given to the destroyer he can destroy whomever appears before him twenty seven furthermore when he the angel of death wants to destroy a person he rises to accuse that person and repeats his offenses he demands justice before the holy one blessed be he and does not leave before that person is sentenced and permission is given and he kills him 28 Rabbi Shimon said by Elohim meaning that he swore in the name of Elohim most people do not die before their time except those who do not know how to protect themselves because when a dead man is taken from his house to the cemetery the angel of death is among the women why is he among the women because this is his way since he seduced Eve and through her he brought death to the whole world this is why when he kills a man and the men are with the dead the angel of death comes in among the women on the way to the cemetery 29 and then he has permission to kill people he looks at the faces of those seen before him on the way to the cemetery from the time when they take the dead from his house to burial until they get back to their houses that is why he causes death for some men in the world before their time of that speaks the verse but sometimes ruin comes without judgment Michelet 1323 because he goes up and accuses and repeats the offenses of that person before the Holy One blessed be he that person is judged for those offenses and passes away before his
Decree that a chauffeur was to be blown when the dead was taken from his house. You might say this is solely to honor the dead, but no, this is to protect the living so that the angel of death would have no power over them to accuse them above and they might avoid him. 33 He started by saying, And if you go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresses you, be bar 109. I have observed that the enemy refers to the angel of death that oppresses you, forever killing people and seeking to kill everyone what is to be done about him, and you shall blow an alarm. Bar 109 on Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, which is the day of judgment above the angel of death, comes down to examine people's deeds and then ascends and prosecutes them. And Israel, who know that the angel of death comes down and then goes up to be their prosecutor, blow the chauffeur early and complain against him so he would have no power against them and in order to protect themselves. 34 All the more so when. The angel of death punishes and takes lives and also when people go to the cemetery and return from it because when women walk to the funeral he comes down and dwells among them as says the verse her feet go down to death Mishlei 55 where do they go down namely to that place which is called death for the angel of death comes before them while they walk to escort the dead because he brought death upon the whole world may the merciful save us 35 come and see it is written likewise the way of an adulterous woman Mishlei 3020 which we already interpreted but likewise the way of an adulterous woman alludes to the angel of death this is him and that is his name she eats and wipes her mouth before he burns the world with his flames and kills people before their time and says I have done nothing wrong before he asked for justice and they were found guilty and died according to true law 36 when Yisrael made the calf and many died the angel of death was among the Women inside the camp of Israel when Moses saw the angel of death among the women and the camp of Israel between them he immediately gathered all the men by themselves this is the meaning of the verse and Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel together Shema 3510 these were the men alone who were gathered and separated 37 and the angel of death did not leave the women until the tabernacle was built as was written and Moses erected the tabernacle Shema 4018 and even when the women brought offerings to the tabernacle the angel of death did not move away from them until Moses saw that and advised the men not to have contact with them and not to look at them face to face but to walk behind them this is the meaning of the verse and they came had you both men and women Shema 3522 it does not say and they brought had you but and they came this teaches us that the men did not walk with the women together but behind them all this is because the angel of death did not leave them until the tabernacle was built. 38 Come and see the angel of death is not among the women when they are less than seven together or less than ten together. He explains in public he is among seven women and seeks to punish and if there are ten women he prosecutes in order to kill and since he is among them openly it is written and they came both men and women is behind their backs as mentioned above and all the friends were watchful that day. And studied Torah 39 Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion and said and Hashem said to Noah come you and all your house into the ark. Beersheet 71 we already explained this verse but come and see could not the Holy One blessed be he keep Noah in one place in the world so that when there would be flood it would not reach that particular place. This is as was said concerning Eden let it be now only dry upon the fleece shoved him 640 or could he not keep him in the land of Israel of which it is. Written nor rained upon in the day of indignation Yashiskel 2224 meaning that the flood did not come upon it 40 and answer since the destroyer came in the world whoever did not hide himself and was present before him and openly forfeits his life because he brings death on himself how do we know that from Lot estates the verse escape for your life look not behind you Bereshit 1917 what is the sense of look not behind you it is because the destroyer walked behind his back and if Lot had turned his head and looked him face to face the angel might have done him harm 41 and therefore it is written of Noah and Hashem shut him in Bereshit 716 so he would not be seen by the destroyer and the angel of death would have no power over him and while the friends were hiding at home 13 men in town died Rabbi Shimon said blessed be the merciful that the angel of death did not behold your images 42 and Moses gathered he repeats the building of the tabernacle Second time as before in the portion of Truma Rabbi Shia said everything is as we learned that the building of the tabernacle was done solely by Israel and not by the mixed multitude for the mixed multitude drew again the angel of death and he descended into the world since Moses saw that he threw the riffraff out and gathered Israel only it is written in the verse and Moses gathered and not like in Truma where it was said of every man whose heart prompts him Shema 252 for the mixed multitude was part of the congregation and therefore there was need to say the building of the tabernacle a second time section 4 who has ascended up into heaven and come down we read a lengthy discussion of the verse who has ascended up into heaven and come down again who has gathered the wind in his fist who has bound the waters in a garment who has established all the ends of the earth what is his name and what is his son's name if you can tell Rabbi Shimon Explains that this is said about God Yudhav and that the name of his son is Israel who has ascended up into heaven refers to Moses. Another explanation for who has ascended up into heaven refers to Elijah. Rabbi Shimon says that Elijah left the world in his body, left that body in the storm of wind, and donned a new light body to rise above. Then he descended again, regained his body in the storm of wind, and returned to earth. Another explanation is that who ascended up into heaven refers to Elijah and came down refers to Jonah, whom the fish brought down deep into the ocean. Rabbi Shimon explains how all the pieces of the opening verse refer to Elijah, but then offers us yet another interpretation where who has ascended up into heaven refers to God, where heaven that is Zir and Ben lifts by this is the secret of the upper chariot composed of the four spirits of the world, Chesed, Bira, Tiferet, and Malchut, that are the primordial elements. 43 Rabbi Shimon opened it. Discussion with who has ascended up into heaven and come down again, who has gathered the wind in his fist, who has bound the waters in a garment, who has established all the ends of the earth, what is his name and what is his son's name, if you can tell Mishlei 304. We explain this verse together with its many interpretations. It is all said about the Holy One, blessed be he, which is all, and we learned what is his name and what is his son's name, if you can tell, this is the Holy One, blessed be he, what is his name, Yahweh, hey, and the name of his son Israel, as is written, Israel is my son, my firstborn, Shema 422, and we already talked about it, and we explained that who has ascended up into heaven refers to Moses, as is written, and he said to Moses, Come up to Hashem, Shema 241, 44. Another explanation for who has ascended up into the heaven, Mishlei 304, it speaks about Elijah, of whom it is written, and Elijah went up by a storm of wind to Melashim 211. He asks, and how? Could Elijah go up to the sky for the sky cannot bear a body of this world even the size of a mustard seed yet you say and Elijah went up by a storm of wind 45 and he answers but this is as you say and Hashem came down upon Mount Sinai Shemot 1920 and, and Moses went into the midst of the cloud and went up into the mountain yet the Holy One blessed be he was on Mount Sinai and it is written and the sight of the glory of Hashem was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain. Shema 2417 how could Moses climb it but it is written about Moses and Moses went into the midst of the cloud and went up into the mountain of 18 meaning that he entered the cloud as if he were donning a garment and here in the scripture and he said to Moses come up to Hashem he also donned a cloud and entered it and in the cloud he approached the fire and could come nearer so it was with Elijah as was written and Elijah went up by a storm of wind meaning that he was clothed with it. Storm of wind and went up 46 and I found a secret in the book of Adam which talked about the offspring that would come into the world that there would be a spirit that would go down to the world to earth and on a body and which name is Elijah in that body he would quit the world and then remove the body and remain in the storm of wind and another body of light would present itself before him that he may go with it among the angels and when he descends into this world he would don that body that was left in the other world namely in the storm of wind in this body he shall be seen down below and in that other body of light he would be seen above and this is the secret of who has ascended up into heaven and come down again Mishlei 304 for there was no man whose spirit would ascend to heaven after the body is gone and come down again later like Elijah who went up and came down 47 another explanation who ascended up into heaven refers to Elijah and came down refers to Jonah whom the fish brought down deep into the ocean Jonah draws from the strength of Elijah for he had Elijah's spirit Elijah ascended and Jon
Oath prayed again thus reviving the world so rain and food would be given to everyone what is his name Elijah and what is his son's name also Elijah and he explains what is his name when he ascended up it is Elijah and what is his son's name refers to the time he came down and became a messenger to perform miracles and his name is Elijah 50 another interpretation who have me has ascended up into heaven refers to the holy one blessed be he as we already learned the secret of it is. That the word me is used we already said that this word is the name of Bana and the explanation is that heaven which is Zeir and Benlitz Bana which is called Mi and this is the secret of the upper chariot composed of the four directions of the world namely the four Svirat Chisid Burit Tiferet and Malchud from the chest upward of Zeir and Ben that form a chariot to Bana that is called Mi they are the primordial elements that come all from that place which is called me namely they are its chariot as we learn section 5 whoever is of a willing heart Rabbi Shimon speaks first of the raising of Malchud to be united with Zir and Ben the uniting of the supernal chariot and the lower chariot we hear of the upper ministers and the patriarchs who have the honor to bear the holy chair Malchud whoever is of a willing heart refers to the four hosts of high angels in which are included the twelve hosts the four hosts are called the holy animals and the twelve Hosts are the offerings all these chariots are called whoever is of a willing heart Rabbi Yehuda speaks of how a man is blessed with happiness when a poor man comes to him he is as honored as if he created his soul Rabbi Abba then talks about the verse since the day that I brought forth my people Israel out of Egypt I chose no city out of all the tribes of Israel to build a house that my name might be there but I chose David saying that God does not choose a city until he has a good leader. For the people we hear a discussion on happy is he who has the yell of Jacob for his help whose hope is in Hashem his Elohim the righteous put their trust in God and are content to break themselves for his sake therefore they merit miracles and many signs whoever is of a willing heart refers to he whose heart is willing to draw the Sheshanah into himself 51 come and see when it is a time of goodwill before the Holy One blessed be he to unite the supernal chariot with the lower chariot so that they would become one voice issues from the uppermost holy place which is called heaven Zeir and, and gathers all those who are holy down below namely the righteous in this world all the holy ministers Michael Gabriel Uriel and Raphael and all the upper hosts of angels so that all would be ready together this is the meaning of and Moses gathered Moses is the secret of heaven Zeir and, and all the congregation of the children of Israel these are the twelve upper holy hosts which are the lower chariot upon which Malchut rides and they lift Malchut to be united with Zeir and, and 52 and he said to them what did he say this is the thing take from among you an offering Shema 354 to 5 which means prepare yourself all of you to bear and carry upon you the honor of the holy throne which is Malchut to raise it to Zeir and, and 53 allocate from among you the honored the elevated ministers Michael Gabriel Uriel and Raphael to raise this offering which is the secret of the holy Throne Malchut to be united with the patriarchs who are Chesed, Bura, and Tiferet of Zeir and Ben, and it is not meet that the matron Malchut come to her husband unescorted by virgin maidens who come with her and conduct her to her husband Zeir and Ben, as is said, the virgins her companions that follow her, Tehillim 4515, wherefore all that to bring her to join her husband Zeir and Ben, 54, whoever is of a willing head, net of heart, Shema 355 refers to the four hosts of high angels that come from Netzach, Hadyazid, and Malchut of Malchut, and them are included all the other hosts, namely the twelve hosts, since each of the four hosts consists of three hosts, they are all together twelve, and those who come out of the high patriarchs, Chesed, Bura, and Tiferet are called nobles, as we stated that it is written about the well that the nobles of Hednet, the people dealt, Bimidbar 2118, nobles refers to the fathers, 55, he asks, it is written, he will bring it, Hebi, Baiha, Shema 355, and not. They will bring it and says he will bring it which is in the singular indicates the unifying of everything into one that is to say the male and female principles also it does not say he will bring Hebyavi but he will bring it Hebyavi to indicate Malchud which is called an offering to be given to her husband honorably as is proper an offering to Hashem the particle et before an offering comes to add all the other hosts of angels so that everything should be united into one to make twelve hosts into one which are gold and silver and brass and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair and ram skins dyed red and badger skins and acacia wood and oil for the light and spices for anointing oil and for the sweet incense of it five to eight which are the twelve kinds these are the highest twelve hosts that are included in these four which are called the holy living creatures for each living creature consists of three so together there are twelve fifty six and all of them ascend to the holy throne which is Malchut to lift her up to be united with her husband Zeir and so that all becomes one and that he be with her in high glory then the supreme king sits on the holy throne and wife is united with her husband Malchut with Zeir and so that everything would be one and everyone rejoices 57 come and see here the count starts with gold and then silver because that reckoning is from below upward for Bura that is gold precedes silver that is Jesus. But when counting by the reckoning of the supernal chariot the counting starts from the right side first which is silver and then left which is gold whence do we derive this it is written the silver is mine and the gold is mine Chagai 28 first silver and then gold because it relates to the higher with the lower chariot which is Malchut it starts with left and then the right as is written gold and silver and brass first gold and then silver 58 and all these chariots are called whoever. Let all who is of a willing heart, Shema 355, all in the verse, all who is of a willing heart includes all the other chariots which are twelve. What is heart? It is the secret of the verse, but he that is of a merry heart has a continual feast, Mishlei 1515, which refers to the heart of all and is the holy throne, Malchut. Therefore, they are called heart. All who is of a willing heart is as we stated that the four legions include everything for each consists of three, and together they are twelve, and all are named after the meaning of all who is of a willing heart. A heap offering to Hashem, Shema 355, is the holy throne, and since they heaped it up and raised it, those Eir and it is called an offering to Hashem 59. For that reason, when Ezekiel saw the secret of the living creatures that were raising Malchut to union, he did not see what they were raising, that is Malchut that is riding upon them, because she went to the highest king's Eir and hidden and secretly within it. Supreme Glory 60 and every wise hearted man among you Shema 3510 refers to the 60 sources Chesed, Bura, Tiferet, Netzach, Hot and Yezid within Zeir and each containing 10 that water the world which is Malchut from them it is water shall come of it, why is it written and he answers for they shall come to receive from the treasury of life which is bind afterwards they will do what the Holy One blessed be he bind commands them, to cause enjoyment to the world 61 take from. Among you an offering to Hashem Rabbi Yehuda opened the discussion with the verse is it not to share your bread with the hungry Yeshua 587 come and see blessed is a man's portion when a poor man approaches him since he is a poor man he is a gift that the Holy One blessed be he sent him blessed is the portion of he who welcomes this gift cordially 62 come and see whoever pities the poor man and refreshes him the Holy One blessed be he honors him as if he created him this is why Abraham. Who pitted all the inhabitants of the world the Holy One blessed be he treated him as if he created them such is the meaning of the verse and all the souls that they had acquired in Sharon Bereshit 125 63 although we talked about the verse is it not to share had Paras Yeshua 587 yet what does it mean it means to spread over a tablecloth bread and food to eat there is another interpretation for this verse the word Paras also means to break and so pieces of bread should be broken before him that he would not feel ashamed and one should break it before him generously the word your bread of it is used and not just bread for your bread teaches us that the bread should be yours from your own money and not by theft oppression or robbery otherwise it is no merit on the contrary woe to him when his sin is brought up similarly take from among you an offering means to take and give from your own not from theft plunder or robbery as was already explained 64 Rabbi. She, Rabbi Yitzhak and Rabbi Yossi were walking on the way while they were walking they were met by Rabbi Abba Rabbi Shia said assuredly the Shechanah is with us when he reached them Rabbi Abba said it is written since the day that I brought forth my people Israel out of Egypt I chose no city out of all the tribes of Israel to build a house that my name might be there
Abraham or El of Isaac and answers because Jacob did not put his trust in his father nor in his mother when he fled his brother and walked alone without money as was written for with my staff I passed over this Jordan Beersheet 3211 and he put his trust in the Holy One blessed be he as is written if Elohim will be with me and will keep me Beersheet 2820 and everything he asked from the Holy One blessed be he was given him 67 whose hope Hepsibro is in Hashem is Elohim Talim. 1465 he asked it is written his hope not his faith nor his trust and answers do not pronounce it Sibro with the letter sin but Shibro with the letter shin which implies breaking for the righteous are content to break themselves and to be broken to pieces and all for the sake of Hashem is Elohim as much was written but for your sake are we killed all the day long Talim 4423 and because for your sake we have borne insult Talim 69868 the same happened to Jacob as is written now. When Jacob saw that there was corn, Hepshiver also trouble in Egypt. Beersheet 421 For Jacob saw the calamity of exile awaiting him in Egypt and put his trust in the Holy One. Blessed be he and the children of Jacob also suffered the trouble of exile, yet they did not waver from the faith of their fathers and the name of the Holy One. Blessed be he was constantly on their lips. 69 That is why it is written about Moses, and they shall say to me, What is his name? Shema 313 For the last letters of the words of the verse form Yud Hav a name that was constantly on their lips since they have known it, they never forgot it and suffered the trouble of exile for the sake of the Holy One. Blessed be he, therefore they merited many miracles and signs. 70 And you lofty saints who suffer the breaking of the body and wandering from place to place for the sake of the Holy One. Blessed be he, you are doubly worthy of miracles and redemption and deserve life in the world to come. They Walk together 71 he opened and said take from among you an offering to Hashem whoever is of a willing heart let him bring it Shema 355 come and see when a man wills himself to worship his master the will first reaches the heart which is the basis and foundation of the entire body then that good will is diffused in all the members of the body and the will of the members of the body and the will of the heart combine and draw to themselves the splendor of the Sheshen not to rest on them. Such a man becomes the portion of the Holy One blessed be he this is implied in take from among you an offering that is drawing to receive upon you that offering which is the Sheshen so that this man would be a portion to Hashem 72 and if you say that this is beyond man's power come and see what is written whoever is of a willing heart let him bring it or an offering of Hashem but whoever is of a willing heart assuredly refers to he whose heart is willing to draw the Sheshen not to Himself, this is the meaning of bring her, for though she is highly elevated, he will bring her, draw her to reside with him. 73 And when she comes to reside with him, how many blessings and how much wealth does she bring with her that is gold and silver and brass? Shema 355 He would not need any of the wealth of the world which is for other people, but you exalted saints take from among you an offering to Hashem, meaning that they will give new interpretations of the Torah to raise it. Shechan or Rabbi Shia said, Whoever started to raise her, let him continue. Section 6 In the works of creation, he set conditions for everything. Rabbi Abba says that when God created the world, he foresaw events and created conditions for everything. When he created the fish, he stipulated that a certain fish in the future would swallow Jonah. When he created the heavens, he stipulated that they would raise Elijah by a storm of wind. When he created the firmament to divide. Water from water he stipulated that the waters would divide between defilement and purity so that Israel might purify in them when he divided the land from the sea he stipulated that it would let Israel pass on dry land but drown the Egyptians also he stipulated that the dry land would open its mouth and swallow Korach and all his community when he created the sun and moon he stipulated that the sun would stand still in the days of Joshua and that the stars would fight Sisera when he created the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky he stipulated that the ravens would feed Elijah and the fish would swallow Jonah and vomit him out again when he created man he stipulated that a widow woman would descend from him and sustain Elijah so he saw all these things on the six days of creation 74 Rabbi Abba opened the discussion and said and Hashem spoke to the fish Yonah 211 he asks and where did he speak to the fish and answers when the Holy One blessed be he created the world he Created on the fifth day the fish of the sea, then he commanded and said that in the future there will be a fish that would swallow Jonah, keep him in its bowels for three days and three nights, and then vomit him out seventy five. And not only that, but to everything that the Holy One blessed be he created at the time of the creation, he added certain stipulations. On the first day he created the heavens and stipulated that they would raise Elijah up by a storm of wind, and so it happened as written. And Elijah went up by a storm of wind into heaven to Melashim 212. On that day he created the light and stipulated that the sun will darken in Egypt for three days, as is written, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. Shemot 1022 76. On the second day he created the firmament to divide water from water, it was written, and Elohim said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide water from water. Beersheet 16. The Holy One blessed be he. Stipulated that the water will divide between defilement and purity so that Israel might be purified by them and so it was 77 on the third day he brought out earth out of the water and collected the water into one place to with the sea he stipulated with the sea that it would let Israel pass in it on dry land and drown the Egyptians and so it was as is written and the sea returned to its strength have Eliitano Shemot 1427 the word Eliitano by transposition of letters becomes litno. Lit to its condition this to what the Holy One blessed be he stipulated with it at the time of the creation he also stipulated that the dry land would open its mouth at the time of the rebellion of Korah and swallow Korah and his entire community and so it was as is written and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up and Korah Bimidbar 1632 78 on the fourth day he created the sun and moon as is written let there be lights in the firmaments of heaven Beersheet 1 to 14 and Stipulated that with the sun that it will stand on the zenith in the days of Joshua as is written so the sun stood still in the middle of the sky Hashia 1013 he stipulated with the stars that they would fight Sisera as is written the stars in their courses fought against Sisera Shoftim 520 79 on the fifth day he created the fish of the sea and the birds in the sky he stipulated with the birds that the ravens would feed Elijah as is written and I have commanded the ravens to feed you. There I Melashim 174 commanded precisely at the works of creation also he stipulated with the fish that one fish would come and swallow Jonah and then vomit him out 80 on the sixth day he created Adam and stipulated with him that a certain woman would descend from him and sustain Elijah as is written behold I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain you I Melashim 179 I have commanded namely at the time of the creation of the world in the same manner Hashem spoke to the fish. Spoke on the six days of creation section 7 Jonah descended into the ship in the section Rabbi Abba draws an extended parallel between the story of Jonah who went down into the ship and the soul of man that descends into this world to dwell in the body of man the soul is called Jonah deceived because after it enters the body it is deceived by the world because man in this world is a sinner God rouses a mighty tempest that is his prosecution the soul must use his good inclination and repent of his offenses the tempest that is the prosecution asks the king to sentence the prisoners the counselors come forth to defend and accuse and the prosecution asks for judgment if the man is not found innocent those who pleaded his cause cannot bring him back into this world and the tempest grows stronger than three appointed messengers descend upon him one to write down his merits and misdeeds one to do the reckoning of the days and one who was with him still in his Mother's womb the prosecution does not subside until the man is taken to the cemetery if he is righteous they proclaim him homage but if he is wicked they proclaim woe to him Rabbi Abba says that the grave is the fish that swallowed Jonah he describes what happens as the body decays and the man is judged and the nefesh and the body are chastised when the nefesh ascends after 30 days the body rots until God rises to resurrect the dead at that time the angel of death will depart from the world. God will destroy death forever and there will be no more tears some of those in the cemetery will resurrect and some will not Israel will be the first to awaken Rabbi Abba then lists the seven ordeals that await man when he dies and says that when King David looked at all these judgments waiting for man he hastened to bless the holy name while there was still time 81 at all events we find support here because a verse always retains its literal meaning concerning people's actions in this. World the story of Jonah who went down into the ship is
and he lay down and was fast asleep. Yoda 15. O man is lying down sick. The soul does not wake and to repent before its master to redeem his sins. It is written. So the ship master came to him. Abid 6. Who is the ship master? The good inclination that guides everyone and said to him, What do you mean, O sleeper? Arise, call upon your Elohim. Abid, this is not the time to sleep because you are being brought to judgment for all you have done in this world. Repent your offenses. 84. Consider these things and repent before your master. What is your occupation with which you have been occupied in this world? Confess it before your master. And where do you come from? Consider whence you came. A future drop and you shall not be arrogant before him. What is your country? See that you were created from earth and to earth you shall return. And of what people are you? Look for ancestral merits to protect you. 85. Once he is brought up to the supernal court, the wind storm, which is a Prosecution that storms against him demands from a king to sentence the king's prisoners and they all approach him one by one at that time the court opens some defend him and others accuse him and the prosecution asks for punishment 86 and if that man was not found innocent it is written the men rode hard to bring the ship back to land but they could not have it 13 those who pleaded his cause try to bring him back into this world but cannot why is that for the sea grew more and more tempestuous against them the prosecution storms with his sins and grows stronger because of them 87 and three appointed messengers descend upon him the one writes down all his merits and misdeeds these are like two columns right and left the merits are on the right and the misdeeds on the left another does the reckoning of the days like the reconciling central column that weighs them yet another was with him in his mother's womb this is the secret of Malchut, the secret of the verse when his candle shone upon my head, IYOV 292, that refers to the months of pregnancy, and we explained that the prosecution does not subside until, as is written, they took up Jonah, Yona 115, they took up that IS when they take him from his home to the cemetery, 88, then proclamation is made concerning him, if he is righteous, it is thus proclaimed, render homage to the image of the king, he that walks in his uprightness shall enter in peace to them, that rest in their graves, Yeshua 572, once to. We know this from the words, and your righteousness shall go before you, the glory of Hashem shall be your regard, Yeshua 588, but if he be wicked, it is thus proclaimed, woe to that man, for it would be better for him not to be born, and then it is written, and cast him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging, meaning that they put him in his grave, which is the place of punishment, then the prosecution which was storming and sought punishment is now soothed from its wrath, since what it Want it came to pass, and the fish that swallowed him is his grave. 89 It is written, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish. Yonah 21 The belly of the fish is the belly of Sheol. We know that from the verse out of the belly of Sheol, I cried. Ibid 3 For Jonah was in the belly of the fish, and called it the belly of Sheol. Three days and three nights. Ibid 1 resembles the three days that man is in the grave before his bowels split open. 90 After three days, the filth in his bowels is spilt on his face, and says to him, Take what you put in me. You ate and drank all day, and gave not to the poor. All your days were like feasts and holidays, while the poor were hungry because they did not eat with you. Take what you put in me. This is implied by the verse, and I will spread dung upon your faces. Malachi 23 We already explained that 91 After three days, man is judged for his eyes, for looking at what is forbidden, for his hands, for doing what is forbidden, for his legs, for going to commit. Sin and it was said that it lasts up to thirty days. During those thirty days, the nefesh and body are chastised together. For that reason, the soul remains down on earth and does not rise to its place like a woman who sits apart all the days of her impurity. Afterwards, the soul ascends and the body rots in the dust until the time comes when the Holy One, blessed be He, awakens to resurrect the dead. Ninety-two and a voice will rise in the cemetery and say, "Awaken, sing you that dwell in dust for your do is as the dew on herbs and the earth shall cast out the shades of the dead." Yeshua two thousand six hundred and nineteen. When will that be? When the angel of death departs from the world, as said in the verse, he will destroy death forever. Yeshua two hundred and fifty-eight. Since he will destroy death forever, then and Hashem Elohim will wipe away tears from off all faces and the insult of his people shall he take away from off all the earth. But then it is written, and Hashem spoke to the fish and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. Yona 21193 since that voice has risen from among the graves all the graves vomited out the dead that were in them this is the meaning of and cast out the shades of the dead have refame also healed what is meant by cast out it means that it will vomit them out what are refame they are those who received healing were healed and became like they were before there and the bones were healed together these are called refame 94 and if you ask why it is written the shades of the dead shall not rise Yeshua 2614 he answers surely all the inhabitants of the world will heal by themselves in the cemetery but some will resurrect and some will not namely those who did not believe in resurrection concerning this the verse says the shades of the dead shall not rise happy is the portion of Israel about whom is written my dead body shall arise of it 19 and in that fish who swallowed Jonah I found implied words that may heal the whole world to resurrect the dead as was Explained 95 This fish when he swallowed Jonah died and Jonah was in it for three days afterwards it was restored to life and vomited Jonah out and we talked about the verse then Jonah prayed to Hashem his Elohim out of the fish's belly Yonah 12 the word fish also appears in the verse and the fish that is in the river died Shemot 721 also here the fish died and we explained that in a similar way the land of Israel will be the first to awaken meaning that it will be purified of all the wicked people and like the fish of Jonah it will resurrect afterwards and the earth shall cast out the shades of the dead Yeshua 2619 by later vomiting the dead and they will revive as was mentioned 96 as we said seven ordeals await man when he departs and passes away from the world the first is the high ordeal when the spirit leaves the body which is the ordeal of death the second is when his deeds and words march before him and proclaim his worth the third one is when he enters the grave, the fourth one is the ordeal of the grave, the fifth one is the ordeal of the worms that eat him, the sixth is the ordeal of Gehenna, the seventh is the ordeal of the spirit that roams about the world without a resting place until his deeds are perfected and purified. For that reason, a man should always examine his deeds and repent before his master. 97. When King David looked at those punishments waiting for man, he hastened to say, Bless Hashem, my soul, Tehillim 10435 before you leave this world while you are still with the body and all that is within me. Bless his holy name, Ibid the members of the body that are companions to the Rash now that you are with the Nefesh, hasten to bless the holy name before the time arrives when you will no longer be able to bless and repent. Therefore, he repeated, Bless Hashem, my soul, Hail Yahweh, the friends came and kissed his head. Section 8, the book above and the book below, Rabbi Shia explains in this section. The written and hidden Torah above and the oral Torah below, he says that when God created the world, he did so solely for Israel, so they would come and receive the Torah by the Torah. The world was created, and upon the Torah it perseveres. The man who studies Torah is saved from the ordeal of this world, the ordeal of the angel of death who cannot have power over him, and the ordeal of Gehenna. The Torah above that is Chakma is referred to as a book of remembrance, the sign of the Holy Covenant. The Torah below that is Malchut is referred to as a book of reckoning. The supernal wisdom is hidden in the palace of the Torah above, but wisdom is revealed in the lower Torah. When one deciphers it, 98 Rabbi Shia opened the discussion with the text, Take from among you an offering to Hashem, Shema 355. Come and see when the Holy One blessed be, he created the world, he did so solely so that Israel would come and receive the Torah by the Torah. The world was created, and upon the Torah it perseveres. This is the meaning of were it not for my covenant that endures day and night the ordinances of heaven and earth I would not have appointed your mayah 3325 the Torah is length of life in this world and length of life in the world to come 99 and whoever studies the Torah it is as if he labors in the palace of the Holy One blessed be he for the palace of the Holy One blessed be he which is Malchut is the Torah namely the oral law is the secret of Malchut and when a man studies the Torah the Holy One blessed be he stands and listens to his voice as says and Hashem here can and heard it Malachi 316 this saves man from three ordeals the ordeal of this world and the ordeal of the angel of death who cannot have power over him and the ordeal of Gehenna 100 and a book of remembrance was written but he asks what is a book of remembrance and replies that there is a book above which is Chakma and a book below which is Malchut
Lower end of heaven is it whose name is the lower point Malchut. This point is a book that can be numbered, meaning the Mokin of counting, which is the meaning of for those who took heed of the counted his name as written, and a book of remembrance was written before him for those who feared Hashem and took heed of his name. Malachi 316. And this book of remembrance is for those who counted his name, which bestows Mokin of reckoning and counting the book that we mentioned and the name are the same in all respects, namely Malchut 102. This point is superior to all that were united in it since it is situated in the center. He explains that six ends Yisrael Saba and Tevuna were united in the upper book, which is Chakma, and it is above them six ends of six chambers of Bria were united in the lower book, which is Malchut, which is above them. Therefore, there are a higher book and a lower book, and everything is considered Torah 103. He asks what is the difference between them. It Higher book and the lower book and answers the higher book is the written law which is supernal chakma for it is concealed and available only in writing namely it is worthy of being revealed for there is a place there Israel Saba and Tevuna where chakma may be revealed down below in Malchut and that place is the world to come Israel Saba and Tevuna the lower book is the Torah which is called the oral law by oral armament the lower chariots the seven chambers of Bria upon which Malchut stands as was mentioned before and since they are not part of the supernal writing they are considered oral that is they are not in the realm of the hidden as is supernal chakma in Israel Saba and Tevuna that is called writing and hence they are called oral which is the revelation of all that is contained in writing 104 and the Torah is established orally that is on seven chambers that are its mouth by which chakma may be revealed for it is written and from hence it was Parted and branched into four streams, Bereshit 210 to it from the garden, Malchut downward begins the world of separation, and the seven chambers of Bria are already in the world of separation, therefore Malchut stands on them, namely oral lid above the mouth, and the supernal Torah, which is supernal Chakma, though it too stands upon its chariot, Yisrael Saba and Tevuna, nevertheless is not called Torah above writing, but only Torah in writing, for it is in the midst of the writing, and that writ Yisrael Saba and Tevuna becomes a chamber above the supernal Chakma, which stands in that chamber and is hidden there, that is the writing, that is Yisrael, Saba and Tevuna is also the world of Atzalut, like supernal Chakma, and hence the script is considered its chamber, and it is therefore called lit the Torah in writing, and not Torah above the writing 105, but the lower Torah Malchut is situated on its chariot, and is literally called on mouth because it stands upon them, it is not. Consider the inner part of the writing that is Chakma within it does not disappear because of the chambers as is the written Torah since writing indicates the hidden until someone comes reads the writing and exhibits it and Chakma therein is revealed in the chambers and is no longer a mystery therefore the seven chambers did not become a chamber to that point Malchut as Yisrael Saba and Tevuna became a chamber to the higher point since a chamber means a cover and these do not cover. However by themselves they are also considered chambers and since Malchut stands upon them she is called the heave offering section 92 out of 100 here Rabbi Shia explains the meaning of heave offering that is the tithing of two parts out of 100 each of the ten Svirat includes ten Svirat so this makes 100 to lift Malchut she must be raised with her husband Yisit so these two Svirat are called the heave offering 106 I also heard from the holy. Luminary what is he offering have true it is like we explained about setting aside the contribution to the priest to with two Aramaic tri parts out of hundred Aramaic Mia parts come and see all those sacred grades that are part of the faith in which the Holy One blessed be he is revealed are ten grades which are ten sayings namely the ten Svirat like we said and these ten amount to a hundred because each sphere includes ten Svirat and when we have to lift this lower point Malchut we must not take her by herself but with her husband Yizit and these are two Svirat Yizit and Malchut out of the set hundred for she must never be separated but united with her husband therefore she is called the he offering an inclusive term a combination of Yizit and Malchut section ten the intent of prayer Rabbi Shimon is speaking about the secret of prayer that when a man devotes his heart and will to prayer he amends the supernal amendment we hear of the parts of it. Prayer the benedictions of sitting and the standing, then we are told that when the high holy kings are and ben reaches for Malchut and they embrace in a kiss, one may ask for any request during the last three benedictions a man should wish with all his heart and will that the people on earth will be blessed from those three benedictions of the secret bliss of union. If a man prays properly, he is bundled in the bundle of life in this world and in the then God calls him peace later when he passes away from this world. His soul goes up and cleaves all the firmaments he enters in, and thirteen mountains of pure bomb are opened before his soul. Rabbi Shimon says this is why a man is happy who puts his heart and will into prayer. Rabbi Yossi says that understanding is superior to wisdom because wisdom is contained in the heart that is found in Malchut, but a man of understanding exists both above and below and understands himself and others. One hundred and seven come and see each day the crier calls to all the People of the world, this depends upon you. This is the meaning of take from among you an offering to Hashem Shema 355. And if you find this difficult, then whoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it her. Ibn 180 asks, What is the meaning of let him bring her? And answers here, we learn the meaning of prayer. For when a man fears his maker and devotes his heart and will to prayer, he forms a supernal arrangement, like we said first by the songs and praises that the high angels say. Above and in the series of praises that Yisrael say down below, Malchut adorns herself and arranges herself like a woman adorning herself for her husband. 109 in the order of the prayer that is said sitting down, that is from the benediction who forms light until the prayer of Amida. All those maids were prepared, the seven maids of Malchut and all her retinue are adorned with her after all was arranged and prepared when reaching true and certain, then everything is ready, she and her maids. In reaching who has redeemed Israel, then everyone has to stand up 110 by the time a man reaches true and certain everything is already established the maids conduct Malchut and she bears herself to the high king's eir and then once we reach who has redeemed Israel, the high holy king travels with his grades in the order of the three columns and comes out to receive her Malchut 111 and we have to stand up before the high holy king in awe and trembling for then he reaches his right hand to her which is the benediction of the shield of Abraham the secret of the right column and he put his left hand under her head according to the secret of his left hand is under my head sure 26 which is the benediction of you are eternally mighty which is the left column they then embrace together in kisses in the benediction of the holy El, which is the central column for from there on is the secret of the kiss until the last three benedictines these are the first three Benedictions of the Amida, a man should devote his heart and will and meditate on all those arrangements and sequences of the prayer with his mouth, heart and will together 112. Now that the high king and Malchut are blissfully united in those kisses, whoever needs to ask for any request or petitions may do so because it is a time of goodwill since a man submits his request before the king and queen, namely in the middle 12 Benedictines, then he should prepare himself in will and heart to the last three Benedictines to stir the secret bliss because from these three Benedictines he is blessed by a different devotion, the secret of unison, and a man should prepare to leave them in the secret bliss in these three Benedictines as was expounded at length, therefore he should wish it that the lower beings be blessed from those three Benedictions of the secret bliss 113, then he should prostrate himself and offer his nefesh at the time when Malchut takes hold of the nefesh and Rishat for then is the time to offer one's nefesh among all those nefesh she takes because then the bundle of life which is Malchut is as it should be 114 this I heard among the secrets of the holy luminary but I was not given permission to reveal it except for you lofty pious ones if one Malchut takes hold of human nefesh and Rishat a man with a single devoted wish sets his heart and wish to surrender his nefesh with devotion and wish of incorporating his nefesh in such devotion and if the offering of his nefesh is then acceptable when the nefesh the Rishat and the neshamat that she holds are willing this man is bundled in the bundle of life in this world and in the world to come 115 also when the king and the queen Tiferet and Malchut need to be included on all sides above and below and be adorned with souls on all sides she is adorned with souls from above and souls from below namely from those who surrender her their souls and when a man directs his heart and Will to it and gives her his soul from below devotedly and willingly as we said then the Holy One blessed be he names him peace below after that peace of above which is Yezid that is called
the world when the terrestrial light will pass and be absorbed in the celestial light who will illuminate the light of Torah for the world. Rabbi Abba stood and kissed Rabbi Shia. He said to him, Those thoughts were with you, therefore the Holy One, blessed be he sent me here to join you. Happy is my portion 119. Afterwards, Rabbi Yossi opened the discussion with the following verse, and every wise hearted individual among you shall come and make Shema 355. We already explained this text, but come. And see when the Holy One blessed be he said to Moses, Take wise men and understanding. Devarim 113 he searched throughout Israel but did not find men of understanding. This is why. So I took the chief of your tribes, wise men and known of it. 15, but understanding is not mentioned. You might say that understanding is in a grade superior to wisdom, and that is why he did not find men of understanding. And this, of course, is right that understanding is superior to wisdom. 120 he asks, What is the difference between them, between a wise man and a man of understanding? And replies that we explained about a wise man that even a people who imparts wisdom to his rabbi is considered wise. A wise man knows for himself what is ought to be done. A man of understanding has many grades in him because he examines everything and knows for himself and for others. You may derive this from a righteous man regards the life of his beast. Habbihim Mishlei 1210 for the righteous yes, it imparts to Malchut that. Is the secret of Yud Hei Vavhei of the numerical value of 52, which is the numerical value of Behemoth, and also righteous ruling in the fear of Elohim. 2 Shmuel 233 is the righteous Yezid rules and fills Malchut that is called fear of Elohim with plenty, and here wise hearted is precise, meaning that the wise mentioned here is of the aspect in Malchut that is called wise hearted man is wise in his heart that is Malchut and not elsewhere, because wisdom lies in the heart Malchut and not elsewhere. But a man of understanding exists both above and below and observes himself and others. Section 11 The Ascension of Prayer Rabbi Yossi tells us about the external service of deeds that relies on the 12 outer limbs and the internal service of prayer that relies on the 12 internal organs of the body. A man's prayer is considered a worship of the Ruash and it has great power above Rabbi Yossi goes on to tell of the rulers of the day and the rulers of it. Night who are all different prayer sense to them if the man is righteous they kiss the prayer and it ascends even higher we are told of many guardians first of the four sides and then of the guardians of the firmaments Rabbi Yossi says that on the east the twelve letters of the holy names soar and ascend with the prayer the prayers of those who pray brokenheartedly ascend to the south while the prayers of those who pray for deliverance from enemies ascend to the north after the prayers ascend to the four directions they are escorted up and through the firmaments into their gates as the prayer reaches the seventh firmament it unites Sir Anpin and Malchut and the righteous man is blessed Rabbi Yossi then turns to a discussion of the six precepts of the Torah and describes their meaning in some detail he says that these six precepts correspond to Chesed Bureau Typhorat Net Sachat and Yezid we learn that there are thirteen more precepts that draw the thirteen attributes of mercy thus the man who puts his heart and will into his prayers to perfect them every day is a happy man. Rabbi Yitzhak reminds us that those who worship the golden calf died and Moses gathered the children of Israel together and gave them the laws of Shabbat 121 he opened with and said to me you are my servant Yeshayah 493 here this refers to the prayer man should recite before the Holy One blessed be he which is a great and precious service among the worships of his master come and see some. Worships to the Holy One blessed be he are based on deeds that is based on physical activity namely precepts based on action and that is considered a service and there is worship of the Holy One blessed be he that is a more internal worship which is the essence of all it has to do with inner work which is the essence of all namely precepts that concern speech and intention 122 in the body there are 12 organs that relate to physical activity as we said which are two arms and two legs. Three joints in each and three times four are twelve. These are the members of the body and the worship of the Holy One. Blessed be he through action related precepts is based on them for there are two ways to serve the Holy One. Blessed be he the first is by the outer limbs the twelve joints of the arms and legs the second talks of the twelve internal organs inside the body the brain heart liver mouth tongue the five lobes of the lung and two kidneys they are the internal fixtures inside the body with which to establish the ruash which is the inner and precious worship of the Holy One. Blessed be he these precepts are based on speech such as prayer benediction and thanksgiving as we explained from the inner secrets that Rabbi Shimon told and it is the secret of the supernal wisdom that is known among the friends. Happy is their portion 123 a man's prayer is considered the worship of the ruash which is of the second kind of service mentioned above that concerns speech it is based on Supernal secrets but men do not know that a man's prayer can cleave the ether and the firmaments opens gates and ascends 124 and when the morning light breaks and the light is separated from darkness a proclamation sounds in all the firmaments be ready rulers of the gates rulers of the chambers each one in his post for those who rule by day are not those who rule by night and when night comes the day rulers withdraw and other rulers are assigned to rule by night and they interchange. 125 this is the secret of the greater light to rule by day bear sheet 116 the day rulers and night rulers refer to those who are in charge by day and those who are in charge by night the ones are considered the day rule and the others are considered the night rule 126 and when night comes a proclamation resounds be prepared rulers of the night each one in his post and when the day breaks the proclamation resounds be prepared rulers of the day each one in his post and when the Proclamation is heard each one is assigned a place he is worthy of then the Shechina goes forward and descends and Yisrael go into the synagogue to praise their master and start to sing and give thanks 127 for it is incumbent upon a man to have prepared himself for the worship by deed to wit of the first kind with the implements of precepts and holiness that are the fringes hepsits and tefillin he should consecrate his heart to establish the inner work for his master that is the second kind and put his heart and will to that work by those words in the praises because the speech goes up 128 and all those guards who stand in the air are assigned over the four directions of the world to the east is appointed one guardian who stands in the air and is called Zerdia with him are other appointed ministers they await that utterance of the prayer that rises in the air on that side and that guardian takes it 129 and if that speech is proper all the ministers kiss that speech and go up with it until they reach the ear of that firmament where there are other ministers when they kiss that utterance they open and say happy are you Israel who can protect their master with holy crowns happy is the mouth from which that crowning speech came forth 130 then the twelve letters of the holy name that stand in the air soar for that name has power over the air and that is the name Elijah soared with until he went up to heaven this is the meaning of what Obadiah told Elijah. The spirit of Hashem shall carry you may Lashem, my 1812 for Elijah soared in the air by means of that name that rules the air 131 and these letters soar and ascend with that particular word and that guard who has the keys to the air and all the other assigned chiefs all go with it up to the firmament where another chief is assigned to carry it further up 132 to the south she said there is another chieftain who rules the air on that side and some chiefs and ministers together with him his Name is Pesagnia, he has the keys to the air on that side, and those who are laden with troubles and pray brokenheartedly to their master from the midst of their troubles with a broken heart, if their utterance is worthy, it ascends into the air of that side, there the chieftain receives and kisses it. When he kisses it, he says, May the Holy One bless be he have mercy upon you and be filled with compassion for you. 133 All the holy ministers and all the chieftains on that side go up with it. For on that side the letters are of the holy name Yahya of the twelve-lettered name that is four letters on each side, as mentioned, the ministers who rule over the side of the air go on that side up to the southern firmament, which is Chesed, namely the sixth firmament, as we expounded at length up to the chief of the firmament who governs that south side, for on the southern firmament there is already another minister by the name of Anfil 134 on the northern side, which is Gur, there is. Another chief who rules the air and with him some appointed ministers who rule the air this chief is called Pedakiah and he is in charge over the air on that side and the utterance of all those who pray for deliverance from enemies who distress them ascends into the air of that side if that individual is righteous the chief accepts and kisses in 135 then one rash is roused and emerges from the abyss on the northern side and that spirit calls out to all the ears and they all take that utterance raise it to the northern firmament which is the fifth firmament and kiss it they open and say may your master cast your enemy from before you 
the sense of Belial who is appointed over the air and also over that superior gate and they all go out and kiss it and come with it to the second firmament 138 and when the prayer rises to that firmament is it its twelve gates are opened and in the twelfth gate stands a chief by the name of Anel he is in charge over some hosts and legions and when the prayer rises this chief stands and proclaims concerning those gates open the gates Yeshua 262 and all the gates are opened and it Prayer enter all the gates 139 and an ancient chief is aroused who stands to the south by the name of Israel Saba who is sometimes called Machniel since he is chief over 600,000 camps Hebekah not all of them wing camps of ones next to them are camps of eared ones that are called here since they listen to all those who whisper their prayers in silence with devotion that prayer is not heard by anyone else that prayer rises and is heard by all those who are called eared ones 140 and if that prayer is overheard by another man no one will accept it above and it is never received once it was first heard by someone that is people other than the man who overheard it this is why we ought to be careful lest that prayer is overheard by people another reason is that the words of the prayer are united in the supernal world zeir and an utterance of the supernal world ought not to be heard 141 in the same manner when reading the Torah one reads aloud and the other one is silent if two read the Torah they lessen the faith of above since one voice and utterance are all one but two voices and two utterances cause lack and blemish to the faith which is malchut thus there should only be one voice and one utterance so that that one voice zeir and which is called voice and the one utterance malchut that is called utterance will be one 142 and that minister's name is Israel Saba when the prayer rises secretly all those 600,000 camps and all those eared and eyed beings all come out and kiss that word of the mounting prayer as written the eyes of Hashem are towards the righteous and his ears are open to their cry Tehillim 3416 the eyes of Hashem are towards the righteous refers to the eyed ones from below namely those said angels in the firmament of Yezid of Asia yeah, since there are eyed ones above therefore it is written the eyes of Hashem are towards the righteous and his ears are open to their cry refers to the eared ones 143 the third firmament is net sash and hot of Asia the prayer mounts and reaches that firmament where there is a minister by the name of Gedariah accompanied by some ministers and chieftains he ministers three times a day before a scepter of light that comes out goes up and down and is never still in one place this is the scepter which travels three times and then is concealed when the prayer ascends the scepter descends and bows before this prayer the third firmament Netzach and Hadavisia is called the firmament of the scepter named after the scepter that is active in IT 144 and when that prayer rises that minister after bowing towards the prayer strikes with that scepter a strong luminous rock placed in the middle of that firmament and 375 troops come out of it that were concealed there from the day the Torah come down to the earth and since they insisted on refusing and withholding the Torah from descending to the earth the Holy One blessed be he. Rebuke them and they entered into that rock and they do not leave that place except when prayer goes up and they open and say Hashem our master how majestic is your name in all the earth. Tehillim 82 this is the prayer which is called majestic since it mounts over all those firmaments and then they bow before it 145 from now on the prayer is adorned with supernal crowns and ascends into the fourth firmament which is Typhoret and the sun which is Typhoret comes out with its great end. Shamshiel from Hebshemish Litzun the superior chief comes out and ascends into that firmament together with 365 camps that are called the solar days since they are graves that come from the sun which is Typhoret and they all adorn the prayer with perfumed crowns from the garden of Eden 146 there the prayer stays some time until all the troops ascend with it into the fifth firmament which is Bura the minister Israel is there who is in charge over wars waged by the other nations for. Bura is the secret of the left column to which the nations are attached and when the prayer goes up he and all his troops shudder and their might is enfeebled they go out and bow and adorn that prayer 147 they mount with it until they reach the sixth firmament Chesed when some hosts and legions come out and receive that prayer until they arrive at 70 gates which are the seven Sfirot, Chesed, Bura, Typhoret, Netzach, Hadyazid and Malchut each including ten for Chesed includes in it. All the seven lords fire out there stands a chief by the name of Enfiel who is the supreme chief who adorns the prayer with seventy crowns one hundred and forty eight and after the prayer is bedecked with all those crowns the soldiers from all firmaments who accompanied the prayer up to here from one firmament to another jointly raise the prayer to the seventh firmament bino which includes the first three fire out then the prayer enters that place and sandal phone the precious supreme minister who has all his masters. He's in his hands ushers the prayer into seven chambers of Yetzirah the chambers that were already printed in Bereshit two are missing here one hundred and forty nine these seven chambers are the king's chambers is the seven chambers of Malchut of Atzalon where the king's Zeir and Ben is united and when this prayer adorned with all those crowns goes up there it unites Zeir and Ben and Malchut together and crowns them from above thus everything becomes one as is befitting and the name of the holy one blessed be he. Malchut is decorated on all sides above and below and becomes one with Zeir and Ben then blessings are upon the head of the righteous Mishlei 106 for Yezid that is called righteous bestows blessings on Malchut 150 happy is the portion of the person who knows how to arrange his prayer properly for when it is as it ought to be the holy one blessed be he protects himself with it while waiting for all the prayers of Israel to be completed and included in the whole prayer then all is properly complete above and below so far were discussed the matters of prayer to know the lofty secrets in IT from now on there are precepts of the Torah that are based on speech just as there are others that are based on actions 151 there are six precepts that are observed during the prayer one that you may fear this glorious and fearful name Devarim 2858 two to love him Devarim 1012 three to bless him four to profess his unity five that the priest would bless the people six to surrender the soul to him these are the six precepts that apply to prayer based on speech excepting those that are based on action like the fringes hefzitzit and tefillin 152 he explains these six precepts one this precept applies to the poems of king david and the sacrifices mentioned in the torah for their man should indicate fear of his master since these particular chants are in a place called fear that is malchut and all these halalus that are written allude to the secret of the fear of the holy one blessed be he which is malchut therefore a person should be attentive to those chants with already the friends explained all the secret of the chants and praises and all the secrets of halalu 153 two upon reaching praise be one should concentrate on the benedictions before the holy one blessed be he such as blessed are yahoo who forms like blessed are you hashem creator of the luminaries three to love him upon reaching eternal love followed by and you shall love hashem your elohim which is it Secret of the love of the Holy One, blessed be he, for to profess his unity, namely, Hero Yisrael Hashem, our Elohim Hashem is one, Devarim 64, for here is the secret of the unifying of the Holy One, blessed be he, and we ought to declare his unity with a willing heart as is fit from there on is the remembrance of the Exodus from Egypt. It is a precept to mention the emergence from Egypt as is written, but you shall remember that you were a bondsman in the land of Egypt, Devarim 515, 154, 5, that the priest would bless the people in order to unite Israel together while they receive blessings from above, for at that time the congregation of Israel Malchud receives blessings, 6, and it is a time of goodwill to surrender one soul to him with a willing heart when one prostrates and says to you, Hashem, do I lift up my soul, Tehillim 251, when one should direct his heart and will to surrender his soul with complete devotion, these are the six precepts pertaining to prayer that correspond to the six. 100 precepts of the Torah 155 you may argue there are 13 more precepts in the Torah for there are 613 precepts and why say that 6 precepts are equivalent to 600 he replies the purpose of the 13 precepts is to draw the all encompassing 13 attributes of mercy namely the 13 attributes of mercy that we say correspond to them and the prayer adorns itself with the 6 precepts to it corresponding to Chesed Bure Typhoret Netzach Hot N. Yes, that the prayer which is the secret of Malchud receives from Zeir and 156 happy is the portion of he who puts his heart and will to it to perfect them every day and upon them depend many other things however when a man reaches these passages he should concentrate his heart and will to complete that precept that is connected to that particular word then the proclamation resounds and he said to me you are my servant Israel in whom I will be glorified Yeshua 493 Rabbi Abba. Approached and
The shining star that comes from the north and strikes another 70 stars until all 70 become one and the star expands into a blazing flame that extends across a thousand mountains. We are told that the storm wind that Elijah saw is that star that swallowed up the others. It is called a storm wind because it disturbs everything above and below and it came from the north since out of the north the evil shall break forth. We read of the great cloud, the cloud of darkness that hides it. Like the fire flaring up refers to the fire of judgment and the brightness was about it. This means that although it is from the side of defilement, a man should not treat it with contempt because there is a brightness about it. Rabbi Hamna Nasaba the elder disagrees, saying that it should indeed be treated with contempt because inside it is the form of Chashmal that can be translated as beast of fire muttering. But now we hear from Rabbi Shimon the secret mystery of how these meanings are. Symbolized in the circumcision of the foreskin that allows the light to be revealed, Rabbi Hamna Nasaba the elder says that the snake seduced eat with the brightness of that star that was spoken of earlier. Finally, then we are told why people must not kindle another fire from those that are hidden. 158 You shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations. Shema 353 Here there are most high mysteries revealed to those in possession of supernal wisdom. The friends have already expounded on it. Secret of Shabbat, yet this mystery was given to the wisest men, for it is a very high secret. 159 Come and see on Friday when evening sets a shining star comes from the north, and with its 70 other stars, the star smites these 70 stars which become incorporated in that star, and within IT all 70 become one that star then expands and turns into a blazing flame on all sides. This flame is extended across a thousand mountains and stands upon them like a thread encircling them. 160. And this flaming mass draws to it other colors that are inside it underneath its own color. The first color is green, which is the light of the central column. When this color is established, that flame of fire jumps upon this green color and enters inside it and throws the green color out. The green color stays out, and the flame of fire of that star included of 70 stars is inside 161. Afterwards, it draws to it a second color, white, the light of the right column, this white color shown inside. But after that color is established the flame of fire of the star rose expelling the white color and entering inside the same procedure transpired with all the other colors it threw them out went inside and approached the hidden point to receive light 162 he opened and said and I looked and behold a storm wind came out of the north Yashiskal 14 Yashiskal saw that vision in a pattern that appears only when that star rules as we said for it does not always rule but is hidden we explained that and behold a storm wind refers to the wind that comes to conquer the world for Nebuchadnezzar yet the storm wind is that star we mentioned that swallowed 70 other stars this is the storm wind Elijah had seen of which is said rending the mountains and breaking up the rocks I may lash him 19 for there is no force that could withstand it it is that which always stands against all the clipot on the outside to protect what is inside like a shell protects the fruit 163 why is it Call the storm because it storms against everything above and below and nothing can stand in its way it came out of the north for this is the side it came from we can tell this from the verse out of the north the evil shall break forth here may 114 for many other aspects besides the north hold on to that storm wind therefore the scripture says about them that it comes out from the north 164 the second clip I mentioned in Ezekiel is called a great cloud it is called a cloud because it is the dross of gold this dross clings to the northern side namely to the left column and is the central point which abides in deserted places once it learned how to seduce it controls the central point of the inhabited world and everything that pertains to it save the land of Israel when Israel dwelt in it, it had no power over it but later when Israel sent it took control over the holy land too that is shown in the verse he has drawn back his right hand from before the enemy Isha. 23 165 he asks why it is called a great cloud and answers for it is a cloud of darkness that darkened the whole world come and see there are different clouds of that cloud it is written and the cloud of passion was upon them by David. Bar 1034 and that your cloud stands over them Bar 1414 that cloud is shining and luminous and all lights are seen within that cloud but this cloud of the clipot is a cloud of darkness that sheds no light but prevents all the lights from being seen through it 166 he asks it is called great yet if it is dark why call it great if it is small he answers it is indeed great because it has power also it is called great since the darkness in it is great and it covers all the light so that they are not seen because of it and it is greater than anything done in the world 167 and the fire flaring up yashiskal 14 alludes to the fire of rigorous judgment that never leaves it meaning that the clipot itself is not fire rigorous judgment but the fire that came from below from the storm wind it catches the fire and never leaves it and the brightness was about it but indicates that even though all this is in the clip of the fire flaring up nevertheless the brightness was about it hence we learned that though this is but the side of defilement there is a brightness about it that there is brightness and the illumination of holiness around it therefore a man should not cast it out the reason is that since the brightness was about it it has part in the holy side of faith and one should not treat it with contempt therefore it should be given part in the holy side of faith 168 rabbi hamna nasaba said that this was written as a question is there a brightness about it therefore it should be treated with contempt because there is brightness only inside it not outside and around the fire flaring up and since that brightness is inside it is written and out of the midst of it as it were the color of electrum hapshashmal Yashishkal 14 in the midst of what? Of that brightness the color of Shashmal consists of the letters of Shashmal namely muttering fiery living creatures have Jayat Ashmemel 169 but from the holy luminary we heard the most secret mysteries concerning the subject when the foreskin rests on the member of the holy covenant and defiles the temple which is the glance penis the secret of Malchut then the temple is prevented from exposing the secret of the sign of the covenant inside the foreskin and when that brightness enters and separates the foreskin from the temple it is called Shashmal which means it hastens have Shash to be revealed but he asks there is also Mal in Shashmal what is Mal he answers it is written Joshua circumcised have Mal Yahashua 54 which alludes to the secret sign of the covenant circumcision that was detained from revealing its light by the foreskin but now since he already circumcised have Mal the light is revealed and the meaning of Shashmal is that he hastened Hebshash to expose since he already circumcised Hebmal the foreskin 170 another secret states that the light of the clipot was both visible and invisible which means that there was still in them a tiny ray that may be seen once but when Shashmal was revealed their light was gone completely but the first secret that we said is well embedded in the written verse while the secret cannot fit properly in the writing nonetheless all is well and correct for both are true. 171 with this brightness the snake seduced the woman Eve to receive light that is the meaning of and her mouth is smoother than oil Mishle 53 for it put light against the covenant that is why it seduced her and she took its light this is the temptation with which attempted the woman is written for the lips of a strange woman drip honey Ibid 172 come and see on Friday which is yes when evening sets at its conclusion the burning flame the storm wind leaps inside to enter within it. Colors then Yisrael make ready below fix the meals and set the tables each his own table a flame of fire then comes out and strikes the burning flame and joins it once it struck and they join the flame of fire and that flame roll together and enter a hollow in the great abyss where they sit concealed 173 and that flame of fire is from the right since it is from the right side it cancelled the judgments of that fire and put it into the cavern in the great abyss there it sits in the great abyss until Shabbat is concluded when Shabbat is concluded Yisrael must say the benediction over fire by that benediction from below the flame of fire comes out and has power over that flame all that night after Shabbat and this flame is subdued for its power is concealed 174 come and see when Shabbat enters and that flame was hidden in the great abyss all the flames of the harmful fire are hidden and subdued for the flame which is a storm wind is the root of all the strict judgments and even the fire of Gehenom rests and all the evil therein have respite and all above and below have rest and at the end of Shabbat when Yisrael recite the benediction over fire all the hidden flames come out and return each to its place in order not to kindle another flame of those that are hidden it is written you shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations on the Shabbat day Shema 353 and it was already explained why the fire on the altar is allowed on Shabbat section. 13 what is Shabbat Rabbi Hamna Nisabah the elder says that when Shabbat enters the crier proclaims throughout all the firmaments be prepared O chariots be prepared O legions before your master after this a
Master, then a spirit comes from the south which is the light of Chisa that spirit expands over all those armies and legions of the right side and they wrap themselves in it that spirit is called the precious garment of Shabbat and the tables people set in this world are placed in one chamber which is Malchut happy is the portion of the person who said table is considered well prepared and everything is arranged without shame each man according to his means 176 when Shabbat comes in. The holy nation has to wash themselves from the work week's habits what is the sense during the work week a different spirit roams and hovers about the people and when a person wishes to be released from that spirit and come into the influence of another holy and supernal spirit he should wash himself so that that holy supernal spirit shall rest upon him 177 come and see the lofty meaning of the matter all these six days Chisa Bureau Typhoret Net Sash and Yezid of Zeir and Ben are united. Within the secret of a certain holy point Malchut and all the days become one with it there are other days that stand outside on the other side namely Chisa Bureau Typhoret Net Sash and Yezid of the Klippot and there are days which are Chisa Bureau Typhoret Net Sash and Yezid of Malchut that stand inside the holy circle united within the holy point Malchut of Malchut 178 and holy Israel and all those who work in holiness all the days of Shabbat their six days are joined with the six. Inner days which are Chisid Bureau Typhoret Net Sash and Yezid of Malchut that are united within the point of Malchut of Malchut to guard and keep it and all the six days of that Shabbat pertain to that hidden point and when Shabbat commences the point Malchut of Malchut ascends and is crowned and united above and they are all hidden in it 179 come and see there are days and there are days there are work days as we learned that are outside for the nations Chisid Bureau Typhoret Net Sash and Yezid of the other side the days of Shabbat the six weekdays exist for Yisrael Chisid Bureau Typhoret Net Sash and Yezid of Malchut when this point ascends everything is concealed the sixth Firat in IT and it goes up once it ascends it is called Shabbat 180 he asks what is Shabbat namely why is it called by the name Shabbat you may say it is due to rest from work as written because in it he rested had shaved at Beersheet 23 and this is correct but the secret of the matter is that since that point ascended and its light is shining it adorns itself with the patriarchs Chisid Bureau and Typhoret of Zeir and when it does so it is joined and united with them and together everything is called Shabbat that is to say the patriarchs together with Malchut are called Shabbat the word Shabbat is composed of these letters Shin and the segment that it has been explained that Shin refers to the three patriarchs who are united in the only daughter Hadbat which is Malchut for the three bars. Of the Hebrew letter Shin allude to the three patriarchs Chisid Bureau and Typhoret and she who is called daughter is crowned with them and the patriarchs are crowned in the world to come which is Bana and all is one and Shabbat indicates that all are one 181 you may say that the great Shabbat which is Bana that is also called Shabbat is high up where Shakma is hidden and not revealed why is it called Shabbat he answers assuredly it is so called Shabbat and the secret thereof is that the point is always the essence of the eye that is it has chakma in it which is called eyes it is named pupil have bad as is written keep me as the apple have bad of the eye tail in 178 182 the world to come by is a chamber to that supernal point namely to supernal chakma and when it rises and takes the patriarchs in its wings to protect them above they all are called shabbat in a way that the patriarchs adorned above in the supernal point are called shabbat and when the point below malchut is adorned by the patriarchs it is called shabbat section 14 the additional soul we are told that malchut is the lowest point and when it emerges on shabbat night it expands along with its lights and spreads its wings over the world to protect it then another spirit of neshama is added to each person and joy replaces sorrow and wrath ash descends washes itself in perfumes from the garden of eden and rests upon the holy nation 60 chariots descend with it when it goes down to the Garden of Eden the Ruash is the secret of Shabbat that dwells below and since it joins in the pleasures and delights of Israel on that day it should be given pleasure in food and drink during the other six days it is gladdened by the supernal spirit of the Ancient of Ancients and on the Shabbat it takes pleasure from the body and the meal of faith Rabbi Shimon explains that every nefesh of Israel is adorned on Shabbat by the crown of the Ruash that dwells inside them. When Shabbat leaves and the Ruash goes up the nefesh feels sorrow for what it lost we read of the reason for performing marital duties on Shabbat nights Rabbi Shimon explains the difference between intercourse on that night and intercourse the rest of the weekend in the daytime. On this night a holy superior Ruash descends into the holy children 183 the lower point Malchud when it emerges to become seen namely when it receives Chakma called side and is decorated with supernal mokin. There is bliss above and below and all the worlds are enjoyed at Shabbat night the point expands along with its lights and spreads its wings over the world and all other rulers are removed and the world is protected 184 then a rash of the soul is added to Israel to each and everyone with this additional soul all sorrow and wrath are forgotten and above and below there is only joy that rash that went down as an addition to the world's inhabitants when it comes down washes itself with perfumes of the garden of Eden and descends to rest upon the holy nation happy are they when that rash is aroused 185 when the rash descends 60 chariots decorate the six directions descend with it to the garden of Eden the six ends are the six fire rachis of at net sash and yes each consisting of ten amounting to 60 and all when the rash arrives in the garden of Eden then all these spirits and souls in the garden of Eden are protected with it the crier calls and Announces happy are Yisrael a holy nation for the goodwill of your master is awakened toward you 186 the most guarded mystery is for those familiar in wisdom happy are they when that rash is aroused that rash is the expansion of the point malchut it comes from it and spreads throughout the world and that rash is the secret of Shabbat that dwells below therefore it is written regarding it that it should be kept wherefore the children of Yisrael shall keep the Shabbat Shema 3116 it has been explained that it does not say Shabbat but the Shabbat alluding to that additional rash that dwells in everything and should be kept since it stays with man therefore it is written that keeps the Shabbat and does not profane it Yeshua 562 187 within that secret there is another one that rash partakes on this day in the pleasures and delights of Yisrael it therefore should be given pleasure in food and drink three times in the three meals of the three grades of the faith. As was explained and that Rash receives gladness and pleasure from these meals of Israel happy is he who gladdens and delights it on that day 188 that Rash enjoys during the six days the supernal spirit of the most ancient on Shabbat day after descending and washing in the garden of Eden during the night it takes pleasure in the physical pleasure at the meal of faith and is adorned above and below it is situated on all sides viz in Chakma and Chesedim on the higher crown Chesedim and the lower crown Chakma 189 since it is with man it should be properly kept therefore it is written wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Shabbat Shabbat is the lower point Malchut the Shabbat refers to that Rash which is the expansion of that point this expansion when holiness was added to that point and blessings from above everything became illuminated and the expansion turned into a Rash luminous on all sides half of IT divides and turns up and shines and half of IT divides and turns down and shines this is the meaning of between me and the children of Israel Shema 3116 for the rash was divided between him and Israel and together we share a portions and heritage 190 the upper portion is adorned on that day by the higher holy pleasure and enjoys the supernal glow of the most ancient which is Keter the lower portion is adorned on that day with the lower pleasure by enjoying the meals prepared by Israel therefore one should delight it with food and drink with respectable attire and much joy 191 when the lower portion is adorned and kept as it ought it rises up high and joins the other higher portion and that point Malchut receives everything from the rash from the upper portion and the lower part and is incorporated on all sides and since it is adorned by Shabbat from above and from below all the rest of the days which are Chisid Bureau Typhoret Net Sash and Yezid give power to everything and Malchut is given dominion above and below and among the secrets of the book of King Solomon is the secret which the holy luminary Rabbi Shimon explained happy is the portion of Israel 192 it is written and he rested Hebe in Nefesh Shema 3117 which is explained as woe for the loss of the Nefesh this is correct but if this is so it should have been said woe to the body for losing the Nefesh yet in Vey Nefesh only the Nefesh is
Night and gives food to her household and a portion to her maidens. Mishlei 3115 she receives through intercourse by day and by night she gives so there is no intercourse at night. Yet now you say master that there is union on that night of Shabbat 195. He said but of course there is union on that night. The reason is that that night of Shabbat which is Malchut distributes souls to those wise men who are versed in the secret of wisdom and there is no union on any other day that is completely joyful and without a mixture from the other side like on that night since these souls that she distributes she distributes them to the wise the righteous and the pious as fit similarly a union surely occurs every night between Zeir and Ben and Malchut at midnight as was already explained but it is not complete on all sides like that union of Shabbat night 196 for that reason the wise men who know these secrets should organize and perform their conjugal duties on that night why because on all the days of the week we have a different Rash dwelling in the world on this night we have another holy superior Rash that descends to the holy children this Rash blows from the most ancient Keter and goes down to the lower point to bring their rest for all the spirit is divided on all sides above and below as was said between me and the children of Israel Shema 3116 197 when these wise men dwell with that holy Rash the supernal Rash they should perform their marital duty for that Rash draws down with it all the holy souls and lofty saints inherit from it holy souls for their children as fit section 15 of safekeeping on Shabbat when the spirit of Rash rests upon the world it protects all Israel from harm from evil spirits and prosecutors Rabbi Shimon says that on the eve of the fourth day one should be careful of the other side for curses and maledictions exist when the moon is not full therefore a man should not go out alone on Shabbat the evil ones disperse to a hole in the ground but a person should still be careful in case they see him on their way to the hole or in case he is harmed by the mere sight of them still there is protection because when Shabbat enters everyone from Israel is given an additional Neshama the tabernacle of peace by is also spread over the people to protect them when the people come to pray in the synagogue the higher and lower worlds are happy together this day is the day of it. Soul 198 When the spirit rests on the world all the evil spirits and prosecutors are gone from the world and we do not need to pray for protection for Israel are kept protected by that spirit and the tabernacle of peace Malchut spreads its wings over them and keeps them safe from all harm 199 You may say we learned that a man should not walk solitary on the eve of the fourth day of the week and on Shabbat even that a man should be careful we on the other hand said that on Shabbat he all people are kept from prosecution and we do not have to pray for safety 200 he answers come and see it is certainly so that on the eve of the fourth day of the week one should be careful of the other side the reason is in the verse let there be lights had me or she 114 me or is spelled without Bob which indicates that the moon was waning and since the moon Malchut is waning some troops of spirits were included in these curses had me for there are curses and Male dictions when the moon is not full which all have power on that night therefore a man should not go out on his own 201 on Shabbat Eve all demons disperse to enter a hole in the ground so they would not be able to have power and cause harm we learn from it that before they go into the hole they do have power to harm therefore a man should be careful not to go out alone for they could harm him on their way to the hole in the ground also even though they have no power they could sometimes be seen and man should guard himself from seeing them for he could be harmed by the side 202 he mentions the meaning he learned concerning the matter saying that this is the way he learned it in the following words he asks if it is so that a man should not go out alone on Shabbat Eve then the protection is inadequate he answers still there is protection on Shabbat for the holy nation and when Shabbat commences the holy one blessed be he protects everyone from Israel with an additional so they should keep the holy crown they were adorned with and though the demons are not in inhabited places they nevertheless appear before lone persons and diminish their good fortune a person should be adorned with the holy crown and guarded 203 and last there is keeping for the holy nation since the tabernacle of peace by is spread over the people for we learned that wherever the tabernacle of peace is present the other side is not therefore the tabernacle is considered to be protection and there is protection available 204 Shabbat day is joy for all and everything is protected above and below and the lower point Malchut shines in rising higher with the beauty of 70 crowns that are the additional parts from Shabbat even the eldest of the old Keter is awakened to give affluence to IT 205 when dawn rises the holy nation hasten to come to the synagogue gladly dressed in their best attire and protect themselves with that holy high crown from above and with that spirit the additional soul which awaits them below they sing with praises and hymns and the hymns go up the higher and the lower beings are all glad adorned together the higher beings begin by saying happy are you a holy nation upon the earth for your master is protect through you and all the holy armies are crowned for your sake 206 this day is the day of the soul not of the body because it is in the power of the bundle of souls by the higher and lower beings are all in unison with the crown of the additional holy supernal rash section 16 the shabbat prayer we learned that the shabbat prayer consists of three prayers that correspond to three shabbats by nazir and ben and malchut that are all really one anyone in the synagogue must occupy himself solely with praises prayers and study of the torah shabbat is the day of the souls we are told of many things of the praise to another great of the secret of the luminous light of the hymn to the world to come and of the mystery of the twenty-two sacred letters in the prayer El blessed great in knowledge when the praise reaches the holy throne Malchut it waits there until all Israel recite the high Kedusha of the music then Malchut rises to Iamabon and Zer Enpin rises to Abba with the passage Moses rejoiced in the gift of his portion the written law Tiferet up high becomes connected to the lower Torah the oral law Malchut 207 the Shabbat prayer of the holy people consists of three prayers which correspond to three Shabbat Ohet plural by the Zeir Enpin and Malchut that rule together as was explained and all of them are one once the holy nation comes to the synagogue they are not allowed to concern themselves even with the needs of the synagogue but with words of praise prayers and Torah study as they are 208 and whoever is occupied with other things and with worldly matters desecrates the Shabbat and has no portion in the people of Israel two angels are Appointed to that task on Shabbat they put their hands on his head and say woe to so and so who has no portion in the Holy One blessed be he therefore they should strive to praising and praise their master and study the Torah 209 Shabbat is the day of the souls for with it the bundle of souls by is decorated to that purpose the praise of the souls is sung the soul of every living being shall bless your name Hashem our Elohim and the spirit of all flesh had Nishmat praises refer solely to the side of the Rash and Neshama this day too pertains to the Rash and Neshama and not to the body 210 the song of another high grade the secret of the day and the Holy Sun Zeir and which is daylight is the benediction who forms light that is the secret of the luminous light from which all the armies and chariots stars and constellations and all those who rule the world take their sustenance and light 211 the hymn to the world to come by on that day is El the master over all works it is based on the meaning of the 22 sacred high and holy letters that crown themselves with the patriarchs Jesus, Bura and Tiferet and with the holy supernal chariot by the 212 the small letters the 22 letters of the lower world Malchut are in the prayer El blessed great in knowledge the letters appear in each successive word in alphabetical order and nothing breaks the sequence in between namely the initials follow the alphabetical order in the upper world by each sequential alphabet letter begins a phrase of a few words thus there is space and holy places between the letters this is the highest praise formed by the supernal letters of the seventh day by it praises and proclaims before the high king who formed the world at the beginning which is Chakma the supernal point 213 when this phrase El the master over all works rises the 60 high chariots we mentioned in the garden of Eden unite to take it from the holy nation and elevated to adorn some high chariots for the chiefs and all the righteous in the garden of Eden they all protect themselves with this praise and all the chariots and the souls of the righteous mount with that praise up to the secret of the throne Malchut 214 when the praise that was sung by all Israel reaches the holy throne Malchut it waits there until Israel recite the high Kedusha lit sanctification of the music lit the additional prayer namely they shall crown you then those below may rise up this Malchut the throne rises to Ima, Bana and Zeir and then rises to Abba which is the secret of the supernal point in that way everything is united high up and becomes one thus the praise El the master which already ascended with Malchut to Bana Bana recites it
Scroll is lacking all those mysteries of verse division, tonal accents, and Masoretic readings. We are told that the bare letters of the written law Tiferet are brought into the oral law Malchut and cause her to conceive the accents and Masoretic readings. He explains why on the Shabbat seven people read the Torah in public, yet on festivals only five people read, and on Yom Kippur six people are called up. We read about the throne chair that is made into the reader's desk when the Torah scroll is. Put there the people should concentrate as though they were standing below Mount Sinai to receive the Torah. We learn about the prayer that should be prayed and that only one person is allowed to read as though Elohim were reading to the people below. The reader should perfect his reading and never read into the portion of the next Shabbat. Fifty-three chariots are assigned to the service of the Torah. Each one to a portion of a certain Shabbat. The chariot raises the reading before God. Then the portion it. Throne and Zer and all become one two hundred and seventeen. The reason of reading the Torah scroll on that day was already expounded. We learned that so they read in the book in the Torah scroll of Elohim distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. Nechma eighty eight. We also explained that the mysteries of the verse divisions, the tonal accents, the Masoretic readings, and all the small details together with the supernal secrets were given to Moses on Mount Sinai. He asked if the Torah was given to Moses together with all these details and the Torah scroll given with these sanctities. Why then is it lacking all those corrections and mysteries that were given to Moses inside the Torah two hundred and eighteen? He answers the secret of the matter is that when the holy throne Malchut is decorated by and incorporated in the written law Tiferet, then all those punctuation marks, tonal accents, and Masoretic points are impressed upon the holy throne from Tiferet and concealed therein. On the other hand. It Shapes letters of the written law Tiferet are brought into the oral law Malchut and cause her to conceive as a woman conceiving from the male so the high letters in the written law remain alone in their sanctity as should be without additional signs and are thus shown in synagogue for the throne Malchut is blessed and adorned by the secret of the written law and in it in Malchut are put all those shapes which are accents and Masoretic readings as mentioned so it is sanctified by the written law the bare letters alone ought to be seen 219 then everything is sanctified with most high sanctity as fit most certainly and especially on this day Shabbat on this day seven people are called up to publicly read the Torah they correspond to seven voices Jesus Bureau Tiferet Net Sach Hadiyazit and Malchut of Zeir Anpin which are the inner mystery of the Torah Zeir Anpin on festivals only five people are called up in accordance with this principle because the seven Sfirot are principally Five Chesed Bureau Tiferet Net Sach and Hadiyazit is their inclusion from the giving part and Malchut includes them on the receiving part on Yom Kippur Day of Atonement. Six people are called up according to this higher mystery. Viz the sixth Firat of Zeir Anpin Chesed Bureau Tiferet Net Sach Hadiyazit of Zeir Anpin 220. All these rules he explains come from the same principle. The five people called up on holidays correspond to the five grades Chesed Bureau Tiferet Net Sach and Had that are beneath the grade of the ancient light by and the first three Firat below in Zeir Anpin. They are the secret of the Torah for Zeir Anpin is called Torah. The six people on Yom Kippur correspond to the six directions that is the five Firat and Yazid that includes them all comes from the same mystery for there is no addition to the principle five Firat. The seven people called up on Shabbat correspond to the seven voices for Malchut includes them to all these combinations stem from the one. Secret namely that they allude to the Sfirat of Zeir Anpin 221 on the day of the new month one person is added who corresponds to Malchut to the three readers on weekdays that allude to Chesed Bureau and Tiferet of Zeir Anpin because at that time the sun Zeir Anpin shines upon the moon Malchut this is the secret of the Musaflit additional prayer of the new month that signifies the said addition upon reading the Torah only one voice and speech ought to be heard 222 the holy nation should fix and prepare on that day as well as other days when the Torah scroll is read a throne to become a reader's desk that throne must have six steps the six Sfirat of Malchut leading to it and no more as is written and there were six steps to the throne to the Rehim 918 which alludes to Malchut and there is also one step above that refers to Chakma of Malchut the reader's desk to put on it the Torah scroll and show it to everyone because the reader's desk the secret of Chakma of Malchut enables the Torah scroll to be seen that is the secret of Zeir Anpin for sight is available only in Malchut 223 when the Torah scroll is put there the whole people should make themselves ready down below with awe and fear quaking and trembling and to meditate in their heart as if they were standing now beneath Mount Sinai to receive the Torah they should listen and lend their ears for the people are not permitted to open their mouths even to discuss the Torah not to mention other matters but they are all in awe as one who is speechless and we already explained it in relation to the words and when he opened it all the people stood up Nechmai 85 and, and the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the Torah Ibid 3 224 Rabbi Shimon said that when the Torah scroll is brought out to be read in public the heavenly gates of mercy open and stir the love of above and one should thus pray 225 blessed be the name of the master of the universe Blessed be your crown and your place, may your good will be with your people Israel forever, and the redemption of your right hand be shown to your people in your temple. May you bestow on us the bounty of your light and accept our prayers in mercy. May it please you that you shall lengthen our lives in goodness, and that I your servant shall be remembered among the righteous so as to have mercy upon me and safeguard me, and all that is mine, and that of your people Israel you are that giver of nourishment and sustenance for all you rule over all you rule over kings and the kingdom is yours. I am the servant of the Holy One. Blessed be he before him I bow and before the majesty of his Torah at all times, not upon man do I put my trust, nor upon angels do I rely, but only upon Elohim in heaven that is the Elohim of truth, and whose Torah is truth, and whose prophets are true, that acts with much kindness and truth in him do I put my trust and to his holy and precious name do I sing praises me. It be your will to open my heart to your Torah and to grant me male children to do your wish and may you fill the proper requests of my heart and the heart of all your people Israel for good and life and peace. Amen. 226. Only one person is allowed to read the Torah and everyone else are to listen in silence to hear the words of his mouth as if they were now receiving it on Mount Sinai. There should be one person standing next to the reader viz that was called up to the reading and he must be silent so that only one speech is heard and not two. There should be one who reads in the holy tongue not two because if two read the Torah it would diminish the secret of the faith and the majesty of the Torah is reduced. It is essential to have only one voice. There also should be one translator in the secret of the shell and the fruit because the translator is considered the shell and the reader in the holy tongue alludes to the fruit. There is no fruit without a shell. 227. All are silent. And one reads as is written, and Elohim spoke all these words, saying, Shema 201, he is above on the top of the mountain, and the people are below as is written. They took their positions at the base of the mountain, Shema 1917, and, and Moses went up to Elohim, Abid 3, for there was one reader, and one called up to the reading on the top of the mountain, and all the people at the base of the mountain listened in silence, so should it be with the Torah scroll 228. The reader of the Torah should concentrate in his heart and will upon that he reads and realize he is the messenger of his master in the orderly uttering of the verses before the whole people, for he is the likeness of the high one, like the holy one, blessed be he at the giving of the law. For that reason, he who is summoned to read the Torah should rehearse first at his home, and if he did not rehearse, he must not read once. Do we know that from what the holy one, blessed be he said before he uttered aloud the Torah to the holy? People as is written, then he saw it and related to he established it and searched it out. Eo 2827 and then to man he said, Behold the fear of Hashem that is wisdom of the 28. For before reciting it to man he prepared and related to himself each and every utterance. So it behooves every reader to do 229. The reader must not break the reading of the portion of the law, not even by one word save at the places Moses indicated to the holy people. Also he must not read into the next portion of it. Following Shabbat 230, the secret thereof is that when all the portions are read as divided, each and every one is adorned with a crown and stands before the Holy One. Blessed be he when all the divided portions of the year are completely read, they all come adorned before the Holy One. Blessed be he and say, I am of the Shabbat, I am of that Shabbat 231. At that time the Holy One,
Complete portion was properly read its words mount and adorn the holy throne which is Malchut and a chariot is assigned to serve it. Each chariot is assigned to serve the portion of each Shabbat meaning to its own portion and all are decorated within the holy throne which rises with them to be united above with Zeir Anpin so that all the portion of the throne and Zeir Anpin become one for that reason happy is the portion of him who completes the reading of the weekly portion in a proper manner. According to the division fixed above 234 the Torah is read twice on Shabbat in the morning and at dusk Minjil when judgment hangs over the world on weekdays before sunset we should combine left and right as the Torah was given from both sides as is written from his right hand went a fiery law for them to bar him 332 for the Torah is fire which alludes to the left together with his right hand namely right and left therefore it is read in the morning which alludes to the right and at dusk. Which alludes to the left for that reason ten verses or more are read in the book of the law at Minja but not a whole portion because a whole portion exists only in the right and the right prevails only before the time of Minja but at Minja is the left and this was already explained 235 on the second and on the fifth days of the week we read the Torah because the grades descend for on weekdays Jacob and Rachel take the duty of the great male and female which are the whole of it. Torah whom they clothe from the chest downward of Zeir and Jacob corresponding to the Torah like Zeir and you may say that only the prophets extend downward for Jacob clothes only net sash hot and yezid of Zeir and the grades of the prophets but not of the Torah which is the aspect of Chesed Bure and Tiferet therefore why read the Torah he replies assuredly this is so that Jacob clothes only net sash hot and yezid of Zeir and but all of those who are below the nine Sfirot of Jacob it. Torah is comprised of them all to with the whole of Jacob corresponds to Chesed Bure and Tiferet which are the Torah like Zeir and each of these three Sfirot is comprised of the other and since they consist of one another each has in it Chesed Bure and Tiferet 236 the secret of the matter is that these upper grades of seven Sfirot of Zeir and are called one portion namely the weekly portion from them emanate nine grades bound together the nine Sfirot of Jacob this is why nine. People are called to read the Torah three on Shabbat's Mincha corresponding to Chakmabana and to add of Jacob three on Monday corresponding to Chesed Bure and Tiferet of Jacob and three on Thursday corresponding to Netzach Hot and Yezid of Jacob altogether there are nine people. It was already explained that the nine Sfirot are included the one within the other and thus each has Chesed Bure and Tiferet that are the Torah even Netzach Hot and Yezid 237 it is written in the book of Rabbi Abbasabah the elder that on Mincha of Shabbat the mystery of the left is awakened and the lower point Malchud receives from the left side the mystery of the Torah at that time Malchud is going from the left from which side we read the Torah that is to say that though Malchud herself is not considered the written law yet since she receives the aspect of the written law from the left side of Zeir and then we read the Torah 238 for Malchud is based on the secret of the nine Sfirot and Therefore we call up nine people that is six people, Chesed Bure Tiferet Netzach Hot and Yezid of Malchut, on weekdays Monday and Thursday and three people that are her first three Sfirot when the left awakens on Shabbat at Mincha of Shabbat and we unite them into one Malchut adorns herself with them on three sides right left and central like the upper three sides Chesed Bure and Tiferet that are included in the weekly portion that we read in the morning happy is the portion of whoever is worthy of the preciousness of Shabbat he is happy on both worlds this world and the world to come section 18 the secrets of Shabbat the passage begins with let no man go out of his place on the seventh day saying that it is a profanation of the Shabbat to work with one's hands or to walk more than two thousand cubits out of the city limits now we hear that it is good to draw out the Shabbat as long as possible at the end of it the wicked are turned back to Sheol and it Demons torture them again in Gehenna we are told that it is wrong to fast on the Shabbat because it is a day for pleasure and rejoicing recompense for this error can only be made by fasting on the first day of the week we learn now of the significance of the 32 paths in Chakma the three grades of holy apples and the 70 words in the testimony of faith and the Kiddush we read a discussion of the prayers in the morning the daytime the evening and the night and of their different results. 239 it is written let no man go out of his place on the seventh day Shemot 1630 he asks what is his place and answers we learn that from his place means from within the place it is fit to walk in that is out of more than 2000 cubits outside the city limits the secret of this matter is written in the verses blessed be the glory of Hashem from his place Yashiskal 312 which refers to a specified place and for the place on which you stand Shemot 35 for there is a known place. Above Malchut by the name of place in which the high glory of above is made known which is Malchut therefore a man who is adorned with the holy crown of above is warned not to leave the place for if he does that is profanation of the Shabbat neither should he work with his hands nor walk with his feet over two thousand cubits out of city limits for all these are profanation of the Shabbat two hundred and forty let no man go out of his place refers to the holy place of glory which is Malchut for beyond. It lies the place of other Elohim blessed be the glory of Hashem from his place the glory of Hashem is the glory above by his place is the lower glory Malchut this is the secret of the crown of Shabbat and therefore let no man go out of his place blessed be he forever and ever two hundred and forty one it is written there is a place by me Shema three thousand three hundred and twenty one the place by me assuredly refers to a hidden and concealed place that is utterly unknown by me indicates that this place which is not. Revealed and remains hidden is the most high place is the supernal hidden and concealed chamber supernal bina but this place here is the lower place Malchut as we said this place is extended above in bina and below in Malchut therefore let no man go out of his place on the seventh day 242 it is written and you shall measure from outside the city limits on the east side 2000 cubits bimidbar 355 we already expounded on these high secrets but 2000 cubits are measured. Because Malchut that is called city inherited two sides right and left for Chakma clothed in Chesedim and Chesedim clothed in Chakma amount to two thousands because the Sfirot of Chakma are by the thousands and Malchut is always adorned on both sides both above and below you can tell that from the Sheshanah that does not hover outside the boundary proper to her which is outside the two columns 243 when Shabbat withdraws it behooves Israel below to delay it that is to take from. The weekdays and add to the holy because this is a great and high day and on that day a great and precious visitor stays with it the additional soul for that reason one should detain the guest and show that there is no hurry to press the holy guest by escorting him out then Yisrael commence with the hymn and he being merciful will forgive iniquity which is fit to be said on that night since judgment returns to its place not like on Shabbat Eve when judgment is gone and is not present. 244 while Yisrael start to recite the prayer and let the pleasantness and the holy prayer namely and you are holy all the wicked in Gehenna open and say happy are you holy nation of Israel and you righteous that keep the precepts of the Torah woe to the evil who were not worthy of observing the Torah then Duma makes haste and a crier resounds the wicked shall be turned back to Sheol all the nations that forget Elohim Tehillim 918 then all those troops of demons torture them in Gehenna. And no one has pity for them. Happy are those who observe Shabbat in this world and please the delight that hovers above, namely the supernal spirit, as mentioned. Two hundred and forty-five. Whoever fasts on Shabbat, two are stirred against him before the Holy One. Blessed be he. One is the Holy Supernal Spirit that should have been pleased, but was not. The other is a chief in charge of those who fast by the name of Sangaria. They rise to discuss him before the Holy King. Two hundred and forty-six. The spirit was gone since there was lack a pleasure and delight down below. And when that spirit is not perfected below, another upper spirit is not perfected since there is no perfection above and below. This man deserves to be cursed and punished. But if there was perfection at a different time by that same man, and the chief in charge of fasting is perfected among other chiefs in the upper pleasure, the verdict is remitted. That was sentenced by seventy high years. Jesus, Bure, Tifer, Net, Sach, Hadiyaz, and Malchut. Two hundred and forty-seven. In the same. Matter a king rejoicing in his banquet with all the people rejoicing about him when he saw a man sitting chained he ordered that he would be set free so that all shall be in gladness 248 afterwards the same officers return who punished the men and exact their due from the man that was the cause of diminution above and below for he did not
For the Holy One blessed be he is punished in this world and in the world to come happy is he who properly perfects down below the high delight 251 that day is bedecked with 70 crowns for it is the seventh day in which the seven Sfirachisid, Burit, Tiferet, Netzach, Hadyazid and Malchud were perfected and decorated each containing ten altogether there are 70 crowns and the highly holy name Bina is perfected on all sides from the three columns which are the secret of it. Patriarchs and all the great shine all in the gladness of the benedictions with sanctity upon sanctity and the additional sanctity had Kedusha of Musaf the benedict ions come from Bina and the sanctifications from Chakma 252 the sanctity of the commencement of Shabbat Malchud is the same sanctity of Shabbat of creation which is in the secret of Bina the secret of 32 times Elohim is mentioned in the acts of creation sanctified by the 32 paths of Chakma also Malchud was sanctified by the 32 paths of Chakma and the three grades of holy apple trees the apples represent the principle of the three columns that correspond to the three colors of the apple white red and green that draw Chakma that is the secret of sanctity therefore they are considered holy apples and Malchud that receives them is called the field of holy apple trees and the entire act of creation and the rest on the seventh day must be mentioned in the sanctification according to the principle of the 32 paths of Chakma and the three grades of apple trees incorporated in them that is the secret of the testimony regarding the acts of creation namely thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all their host and by the seventh day Elohim ended Beersheet 21 to 2 this testimony contains 35 words in correspondence with the 32 paths and three grades of the holy apples 253 the three grades that are the three times seventh and thus the heavens were finished contain the mystery of the upper world Bina that is called seventh from below up starting from Yezid and the secret of the lower world Malchut that is called seventh when you count from Shesid and the secret of all the faith which is the crown of Yezid of Zeir and that is considered as Malchut of Zeir and named seventh in the text thus the heavens were finished the word Elohim is mentioned three times one stands for the lower world Malchut by the name of Elohim another one stands for the fear of Isaac that is Bira of Zeir and is called Elohim and one stands for the holy upper world the holy of holies that is Bina by the name of Elohim a man should give this testimony gladly and willingly and to testify before the master of the faith and whoever gives this testimony and puts his heart and mind to it his sins are thereby atoned 254 the Kiddush lit sanctification of the day blessed are you Hashem our Elohim king of the universe who has sanctified us by his commandments and has taken Pleasure in us, is the Kiddush that balances the testimony of faith thus the heavens were finished and likewise it contains 35 other words as in thus the heavens together there are 70 words with which to adorn Shabbat in its beginning namely Malchut happy is the portion of whoever meditates upon these things to the glory of his master 255 the Kiddush in the morning consists as we said of the blessing over the cup of wine and no more because the day Zeir and sanctifies Malchut which is the secret of the cup of wine for by day male and female ascend to Abba and I am a the secret of holiness and are sanctified through them but at night we should sanctify Malchut by the recital we mentioned the 70 words the night Malchut is sanctified only by the holy nation down below at the time when the higher spirit the additional soul rests upon them and we should sanctify it with a willing heart and meditate upon it 256 and the day Shabbat the principle of Zeir and that ascended to the supernal Abba and Ima and became sanctified like the mighty sanctifies Malchut that is called Kupnat we and Yisrael sanctified by prayers and supplications as through the prayers of the morning the music prayer and the repetition of the Amidah by the cantor we raise male and female to Abba and Ima and they need no Kiddush to sanctify them further for they are sanctified by the sanctity of Zeir and Pen in Abba and Ima on that day happy are Yisrael the holy nation that inherited this. Day is an everlasting heritage section 19 the luminaries of fire we are told that at the end of Shabbat permission is given to the lower chiefs to govern the world and a man must now separate the holy from the secular at this time he must say the blessing over the light of fire this fire is not the everyday fire but Shabbat's fire that comes from the fire of above drawn down to the altar Malchut when this fire is blessed by the benediction all the other fires are. Given permission to illuminate four chariots appear Michael, Gabriel, Uriel and Raphael each in charge of a legion of angels that are shining with that blessed fire they are called the lights of the fire we are told of the fingers of the right hand how they allude to the lights of the fire how they are raised to demonstrate the supernal sanctity of the upper grades that rule over all and how they are bent to point at the lower grades the chariots at the end of Shabbat Malchud lets out the luminaries of fire as if they were created anew at that moment and they are assigned their place to rule the higher grades are called the luminaries of light that rule by day and shine by the supreme light by the 257 at the end of Shabbat it behooves a man to separate the holy from the secular why the reason is that permission is now given to the lower chiefs to govern the world and all its matters one has to demonstrate the unity in a holy place in supernal holiness that is Shabbat separate. The lower beings from the supernal unity and say the blessing over the light of fire 258 for all other fires are hidden and concealed on Shabbat except the one fire of supernal holiness that is revealed and included in the holiness of Shabbat which is Malchut clothing bina and when this fire is revealed all other fires are hidden and concealed before it and that is the fire of the binding of Isaac the central column that ties and binds the left column called Isaac so it would spread its light only from below upward in order to be included in the right it burns on the altar on Shabbat for the altar fire that burns also on Shabbat is drawn from the central column to Malchut that is named altar for that reason we should say the blessing over the luminary of the fire at the end of Shabbat this fire is not the everyday fire but Shabbat's fire that comes from the fire of above for it is drawn from the central column to the altar which is Malchut 259 this is the fire that Sustains fire is a fire within Malchut and when that fire which emanates from the upper fire from the central column is blessed by the blessing over light all the other fires go out and are assigned to their places namely they are given permission to illuminate 260 when we recite the blessing over fire appear four chariots four lower legions Michael Gabriel Uriel and Raphael each in charge over a legion of angels which are shining with that fire of Malchut that was blessed they are called the luminaries of fire because their illumination is coming from the fire of Malchut that was blessed and therefore we should bend the four fingers of the right hand so the light of the blessed candle would shine upon them 261 these fingers allude to the luminaries of fire namely the said four chariots which shine and rule from within the light of the blessed candle and since they are lower grades a person when showing his fingers in front of the light of the candle should bend them before it since this light rules over them and they shine with its light 262 when reciting other blessings that are priestly benediction one should raise the fingers to demonstrate the supernal sanctity of the upper grades that rule over all the secret of the grades in the right of Zeir and that draw their holiness from supernal Abba and I am a the secret of holiness for the holy name Malchut is crowned and sanctified by them thus all the grades together are blessed and shine from within it. Highest luminary the first three Sfirat of Bina the root to all the Shesedim for that reason one should raise one's fingers but in this blessing we must bend our fingers before the candle to point at the lower grades the four set chariots that shine from within the upper luminary which is Malchut for thence they rule and shine forth these are the luminary of fire 263 every day we say the blessing over the luminaries of light who creates light who creates the luminaries that refer to the supernal lights which dwell in that primordial light which is Jesus and all the grades are blessed and shine forth together by the supreme luminary Bina but these in here are called the luminaries of fire for that secret reason do we bless who creates the lights of fire 264 and one may ask why say who creates the luminaries of light and not who lights and he answers because the luminaries shine by that fire of the blessed luminary which is the fire drawn to it from the central column however with the commencement of Shabbat all the lower grades the said four chariots and all those which shine and rule by the light of that fire enter and become included in that candle Malchut and are kept hidden and concealed in it they are there invisible save that point alone Malchut all of them are hidden and stored in it the whole of Shabbat day 265 at the end of Shabbat Malchut lets out those luminaries of fire each and every one as if they were created anew at that moment. They all come out and are created as in the beginning and are assigned to their place to rule the candle is then blessed and
That shows the light spreading from the first three spirot from above downward by the raising of the fingers. The upper and lower grades are blessed together by lowering the fingers, which alludes to the six directions that do not shine, but from below upward only the lower grades malchute and the chariot strong from IT are blessed, so they may shine. Section 20 The fingernails We learned that the fingernails are the secret of the luminaries of fire, while the inner parts of the fingers are the secret of the luminaries of light. This is why the fingernails should be exposed to the candle when the blessing over the candle is said, but the inner fingers must not face that light. The nails should be exposed to draw shakma from that candle. Now we are told that we should smell perfumes at the end of Shabbat because the additional neshama and the Ruash leave man leaving the nefesh naked the meaning of and he smelled the smell of his garments is explained referring to the Garments of Adam that were given to him by God before he sinned. The fingernails are a remnant and must not be grown and must not be thrown away because they emanate from the back and are of fill 268. This is the secret meaning of the fingernails at the back of the fingers, which is the secret of the luminaries of fire and the fingers themselves on the inside of the hand. The secret of the luminaries of light. He explains that the fingernails at the back of the fingers are considered outer heb. A cherim countenance that need to shine from within the candle malchute, which faces name dickering lid hind parts. The fingers inside the hand without the nails are the inner head countenance that is covered because there is no side chakma in them. This is the secret of the verse, and you shall see my back head a gray shema 3323. For my back alludes to the nails at the back of the fingers, but my face head pain shall not be seen. It refers to the fingers on the inside of the hand apart without nails the inner countenance 269 when we say the blessing over the candle we should expose the nails at the back of the fingers which alludes to the four chariots to be illumined by that candle which refers to malchute but the inner side of the fingers must not be exposed to the light of the candle to shine by it malchute because they do not shine save by the supernal most high candle chakma of zeir and pen which is covered and concealed and its chakma is not revealed at all they do not shine from the uncovered candle malchute in which chakma is revealed therefore the nails at the back of the fingers should be exposed to draw chakma from that candle malchute but the inner side of the fingers must not be seen by that candle because it is hidden and shines secretly and does not receive chakma from that candle for it pertains to the inner part and shines from the inner side it is supernal and therefore illuminates from the supernal luminaries having are Yisrael in this world and in the world to come 270 it behooves us at the end of Shabbat to smell spices because the Ruash leaves man the additional soul of Shabbat and the Nefesh of man is left naked because the Ruash left it we already expounded on the subject 271 it is written and he smelled the smell of his garments Bereshi 2727 this was already explained and we learned it but come and see the smell is sustenance to the Nefesh because it enters the Nefesh and not the body. Come and see the verse and he smelled the smell of his garments refers as explained to the garments of Adam that were given to him by the Holy One blessed be he to wear 272 when Adam sinned that precious garment he received when the Holy One blessed be he placed him in the Garden of Eden was stripped from him and he was given another garment the original garment he put on first in the Garden of Eden was of the chariots that are called hind parts which are the garments by the name garments. Of nails 273 when Adam was in the Garden of Eden all those chariots and holy legions surrounded him and thus he was completely protected and nothing evil could approach him once he sinned and those nail garments were stripped of him he started to fear evil things and evil spirits and the holy legions that surrounded and protected him left from those garments nothing remained but the nails at the tip of the fingers surrounded by the filth of the other side 274 for that reason we must not grow our fingernails for there is filth in them and as they grow so grows in relation to it the power of judgment from the power of the clipot that nourishes from the part of the nails that outgrows the flesh one should see to it daily to cut the nails but not throw them so as not to show contempt for the place for they emanate from a high place as mentioned because a man might be harmed by it. all that follows a higher pattern because the other side is around all the hinder vessels above in. The same manner the nails are surrounded by filth because they emanate from the back as mentioned and they should not exist in the place of the world namely in inhabited places section 21 smelling the myrtle branches we are told that after Adam sent God made him other garments from the leaves of the garden's trees that were lights these garments were made of the earthly garden of the world of Asia Adam's garments emanated the fragrance of that higher garden the Nefesh and Rash of Isaac were composed by that smell this is why we should smell fragrance at the end of Shabbat to let the soul be calm the best odor is myrtle for the sustenance of the holy place from which the souls emanate is called myrtle thus the Nefesh Malchut is sustained 275 afterwards the holy one blessed be he made for Adam other garments from the leaves of the trees in the garden of Eden it is written did Hashem Elohim make coats of skin Heborai and Rash Bershi 321 However, Rabbi Meir's Torah scroll had it as coats of light had or all afresh, for they were indeed made of leaves of the trees in the Garden of Eden that were lights. The reason for that is that at first his garments were made from the back of the higher garden Malchut of Atzalut, but now after the sin his garments were made of the earthly garden of the world of Asiyah and came from the garden. The original garments were emanating smells and perfumes of the garden by which the Nefesh is calmed and gladdened. This is the meaning of the verse, and he smelled the smell of his garments for the Nefesh and Rash of Isaac were composed by that smell. 276 For that reason, at the conclusion of Shabbat, we should smell spices to let the Nefesh be calmed by the fragrance instead of the high and holy fragrance that left it, and the most worthy odor is that of the myrtle for the sustenance of the holy place, namely Malchut, from which the souls emanate is the myrtle. It also gives sustenance to the Nefesh of man as well as the high one so it may be maintained when it is left naked after the departure of the additional soul of Shabbat 277 at the conclusion of Shabbat Adam wore the garments of the mentioned earthly garden of Eden that emanate fragrance and perfumes in which to sustain his Nefesh instead of the holy supernal and precious Rash the secret of the supernal splendor of Atzalut that departed from him and the myrtle gives certain sustenance to the Nefesh as well as to the high one and thus the Nefesh Malchut is sustained as mentioned above section 22 the supernal spirit Rabbi Yitzhak says that the additional Neshama gladly descends on man on the Shabbat to gladden his Nefesh as man is given pleasure which is the spirit and gives it pleasure so will he have enjoyment in the world to come Rabbi Abba is happy with this explanation he says that he saw today the three high luminaries that shine upon this world and the world to come and they are the three rabbis, Rabbi Shi, Rabbi Yusi, and Rabbi Yitzhak. He says all these utterances will go up before the holy throne and be taken by the chief minister Metatron, who will turn them into crowns for his master. As the sun has set, the four rabbis go to a village and sleep, then arise at midnight to study the Torah. Rabbi Abba says this is the time when God and all the righteous in the Garden of Eden listen to the voice of the righteous on earth. Two hundred and seventy-eight, the high spirit, the additional soul, gladly descends upon man on Shabbat to gladden his nefesh. Then the nefesh of man is transcended, so to speak, into the world to come, in which it is to find pleasure in the future from the spirit. As man gives pleasure to the spirit in this world, so does the spirit give pleasure to man in the world to come. As is written, and shall you delight yourself in Hashem Yeshua five thousand eight hundred and fourteen, and and satisfy your soul in drought. eleven, as man is given pleasure, which is the spirit, and gives it pleasure, so will. He have enjoyment in the world to come and when a man is worthy of and accomplishes the precious wholeness of Shabbat as we said the Holy One blessed be he says to him you are my servant Israel in whom I will be glorified Yeshua 493 279 Rabbi Abba and the rest of the friends stood up and they kissed his head of Rabbi Yitzhak they wept and said happy is our portion that the Holy One blessed be he led us into this way and Rabbi Abba said the Holy One blessed be he led me into this way so I may be with you happy is my portion to be worthy to be in this way 280 he said to them I will repeat to you what I saw today when I went on the way I saw one light divided into three lights they went ahead of me and then were hidden I said assuredly I have seen the Sheshana happy is my portion and the three lights I have seen are you that is Rabbi Shi, Rabbi Yosai and Rabbi Yitzhak you are the lights and high luminaries that shine upon this world and the world to come. 281 Rabbi Abba said
are like ten curtains the ten Sfirot that God made together with the legions of angels in them in order to rule over the lower world the tenth firmament is the principal one of Keter the ninth firmament is Chakma that rules over all the lower ones Rabbi Shimon goes on to explain the relationship of the firmaments to one another Rabbi Abba asks if no firmament rules over the land of Israel how can it still have rain and do Rabbi Shimon explains that God rules over it directly within hereof the portals within each firmament and how the authority of the chiefs lie between those portals 283 Rabbi Abba opened the discussion with the verse the heavens are the heavens of Hashem but he has given the earth to the children of man Tehillim 11516 we should look carefully into this verse for it should have been said the heavens are to Hashem but he has given the earth to the children of man why say the heavens are the heavens he answers we should note that there are heavens and Heavens there are heavens down below in the world of Asiyah and earth beneath it and there are heavens above in the world of Atzala and earth beneath this heaven and all the higher and lower grades are drawn in the same fashion one from the other and everything that exists above also exists below they resemble each other as the seal resembles the insignia and all that is in the seal is also in the insignia each one down below receives from its counterpart above 284 the heavens below in the world of Asiyah are like ten curtains that is ten Sfirot as written in the verse who stretches out the heavens like a curtain Tehillim 1042 the Holy One blessed be he made them together with the legions of angels in them in order to rule over the lower world of Asiyah the ninth firmament Chakma rules over the lower beings and circles them like a string of precious stones that circles the neck which means that nothing is made in the lower world save by him this is the inner meaning of it. Verse in wisdom have you made them all of it. 24 the tenth firmament is the principal firmament since it is the sphere of Keter the root and source to all the other nine Sfirah 285 in all the firmaments there are assigned camps up to the seventh firmament which is Chesed but in the first three firmaments there are no appointees from the seventh firmament upwards in the first three Sfirah Keter Shachma and Bina light emanates down from the high throne which is Malchut of Atzala and Illuminates the tenth firmament which is Keter of Asia and the tenth firmament gives the light it received to the ninth firmament which is Chachma the ninth firmament illuminates the eighth firmament which is Bina and downward 286 in the eighth firmament there are stars and when the host of stars are enumerated and it brings them out that same light it received from the firmament of Chachma gives from its strength to each and every one so it may be assigned in its own place as needed. This is written in that brings out their host by number because of the greatness of his might. Yeshayah 4026 The greatness of his might is the supernal radiant splendor I.T. received from the firmament of Chakma which is called greatness of might. 287 In each firmament there is a chief assigned to a world and a land to rule over all of them except over the land of Israel. No firmament rules over it nor other force but the Holy One blessed be he alone. This was already explained but one may ask how is there a firmament over the land of Israel without effect and still there is rain and do over it like any other land. 288 He replies that in each firmament there are assigned chiefs who rule the world and the chief who rules over a certain firmament gives it from his strength and the firmament receives it and transmits it to the land that chief gets but the remnant of that light above for the peoples of the world are sustained by the remnant alone but the Holy Land is not under. The rule of any firmament and other assigned chief nor any other force but under the Holy One blessed be he alone and he rules over the Holy Land from the firmament above it. 289 in each firmament there are several designated portals and the authority of each chief lies between two portals he has no authority outside his area even by a hairbreadth except when he is given permission to rule over his fellow chief and the kings on earth also rule one over another namely the kings of the lands. Designated under these firmaments and chiefs 290 in the middle of the firmaments above the land of Israel which is in the middle of the world there is an opening by the name of Gebelon under that portal there are 70 other portals and 70 chiefs guard them from 2000 cubits away in the secret of Shabbat limit from the opening Gebelon which they do not approach from this opening away mounts higher and higher until it reaches the supernal throne which is Malchut and from this opening its authority is spread over to all the quarters of the firmament up to the opening called Magdan where the firmament over the land of Israel ends 291 all the 70 doors marked in that opening called Gebelon are engraved on the holy throne and are named gates of righteousness after Malchut which is called righteousness for no other rules over them and the holy one blessed be he rules over the land of Israel in that firmament from one opening to another that is from the opening called Gebelon to the opening called Magdan from his worthy authority namely from the full needed influence the remnant is given to the said 70 chiefs who transmit it to all the other chiefs that rule over the peoples of the world section 24 the firmaments over the garden of Eden Rabbi Shimon tells us of the firmament that stands upon the earthly garden of Eden when God made it he brought fire and water from the throne of glory the world of Bina and put them together to form our firmament he added to this other fire and water from the holy high heaven which then made the firmament expand we are told of that expansion and the movement of the letters that illuminate and of the chariots we read of the garments that the souls are worthy of wearing in these garments the good deeds are recorded and the angels clothe the souls of the righteous with them in the garden we are told however that in those days immediately following death the soul is punished before it enters the garden of eden we hear that the 22 letters are engraved upon the firmament they still do on all those who study the torah rabbi shimon says that the lower garments of the earthly garden of eden are connected with deeds and the higher garments are connected with the intention and the will of the spirit in the heart now he tells us that we cannot know the source of the river that flows out of eden because if this place were disclosed and revealed down below then that place of the higher holy Eden would have to be disclosed and known also therefore this Eden is not revealed even to the souls in the garden of Eden Rabbi Shimon explains the meaning of the name Elohim and then he says that when the soul leaves the darkness of this world it longs to see the light of the upper world like one thirsting for water in the river that flows out of Eden sit all the souls clad in their precious garments without which they would not be able to bear the lights now. They slake their thirst in the brightness the souls of the righteous ascend by way of the pillar in the middle of the garden through the door of the firmament of the garden of Eden the souls go out and listen to the sweet voice that comes of the firmaments revolving later they receive the illumination of Chakma from the joy and gladness caused by what they see they go up and down come near and retreat Rabbi Shimon turns to and over the heads of the living creatures there was a likeness of a firmament like the color of the terrible eye stretched out over their heads above he speaks about the firmament above and the firmament below when souls ascend they bathe in the river of fire and are washed in it not consumed but purified we learn of Gehenom that place of purification in Gehenom we learn that God brings out the sun after the purification and heals the broken soul this is the meaning of but to you who fear my name the sun of righteousness shall arise with healing in its wings Rabbi Shimon tells us that at every new moon and Shabbat the souls in the lower garden of Eden hover about the world and see the bodies of the wicked being punished and they wash the sick and suffering then they go back to the garden of Eden and tell these things to Messiah who cries for the wicked Messiah enters the temple of the sick that exists in the garden of Eden and calls upon him all the diseases pains and agonies of Israel but for him no man would ever have been able to bear the sufferings of Israel for the punishments of the Torah Rabbi Shimon says that Rabbi Lazar also used to take sufferings upon himself for the sake of Israel for now Messiah detains the illnesses and agonies until a man passes away from the world and receives punishment finally Rabbi Shimon says those who observe the precepts of the Torah are happy because when the point down below wants to be delighted in the garden of Eden by the souls of the righteous it is like a mother happy and delighted with her sons 292 upon the lower earthly garden of Eden there stands a firmament in which are contained high mysteries when the Holy One blessed be he made the firmament he brought fire and water from the throne of glory which is the world of Bria and put them together to form the lower firmament of our earth they expanded until they reached that place the garden of Eden and settled that is expanded no more what did the Holy One blessed be he do he took from the holy high heaven Chakma and Bina of Zeir and been called heaven of Atzala other fire and water that both exist and do not exist both disclosed and not disclosed from these fire and water taken from the high heaven he caused the firmament to expand and stretch them over the lower garden of Eden that firmament which Iestead is united with the other firmament of our earth which is Typ
Right one letter engraved stands out and glitters from inside the light. It is a letter MEM, the first letter of Michael, which stands in the middle of that light. At that opening, this letter goes up and down and does not stand still. That light on the right side takes that letter out, therefore, it does not stand still. This is a mystery of, and the living creatures ran and returned. Yashisko 114, for they do not stand still. 296, within the light that illuminates the side opposite the front. That is east, which is tied for right one letter is engraved, shining and standing out and glitters from inside the light. It is a letter rush, which is the first letter of the angel Raphael. Sometimes the letter bed is seen, the first letter of the angel Boel. It stands in the center of that light in the opening, going up and down. Sometimes it is seen and sometimes not, and it does not stand still in accordance with the mystery of, and the living creatures ran and returned. These two letters stand in the Center of the light in the two openings, and when the souls of the righteous come to Garden of Eden, these two letters step out of the light and stand by that soul and go up and down in accordance with the mystery of and the living creatures ran and returned. And what is said here that the east is called Raphael is in opposition to some explanations in which Uriel is the east 297 from the two doors, two chariots then hasten to come down. One supernal chariot is the chariot of Michael the Great Prince, and the second chariot is of the superior chief Boel, who is the important minister called Raphael. They go down and stand by the soul until it come in peace. It shall enter in peace. Yeshaya 572 enter in peace. The two letters then mount stand in their places and are concealed within the light of the doors 298 through the other two openings shine two other lights glowing from the light of the fire in the openings, one to the left side and one to the rear, two other letters. Burn within the lights and glitter therein one is the letter Gimel and one letter is none which are the first letters of the angel Gabriel and the angel Muriel and when the first two letters return to their place these two letters glitter and go up and down leave the lights in the openings and stand by the soul 299 two chariots and descend from the two openings one is the chariot of Gabriel a high delegate and honorable chief the second is another holy chariot of the high superior Muriel. They descend from the doors and stand by the soul and the letters Gimel and none go back to their places 300 the two chariots then ascend into a hidden chamber called the Halid where there are twelve kinds of concealed sweet spices as is written nard and saffron calamus and cinnamon with all trees of frankincense sure hasherim 414 these are also the twelve kinds of spices of the lower garden of Eden 301 there you may also find the garments the souls are worthy of wearing. Each according to the soul's worth in that garment the good deeds are recorded which he did in this world all are written and proclaimed this is the garment of so and so and the angels take the garments and clothe the souls of the righteous in the garden in the likeness of the form of this world 302 this takes place only at the thirtieth day and afterwards for in the thirty days after death there is no soul that is not punished before entering the garden of Eden once it is punished it enters the garden of Eden as explained and after it was blanched namely after purification of the filth of this world by punishment it wears the said garment once it wore the garment it is given place according to its worth then after the soul receives its place all the letters mem rush none which are the initials of the mentioned angels go down and the chariots of those four angels mentioned go back up to their places for after the angels come back an impression of their illumination must Remain this is the secret of four the letters M.E.M. Rushkimel non 303 that firmament revolves twice a day by the journey of another firmament that is attached to it and that firmament does not go out of the garden of Eden for it only hovers above the garden exclusively this firmament is embroidered with many colors to wit white red green and black which are Shisid, Burit, Hyphorat and Malchut 304 the 22 letters are impressed and engraved upon that firmament above the garden of Eden each letter distilling dew from the higher dew over the garden by that dew which is illumination of Shesed in the souls are bathed and healed after immersing themselves in the river of fire for purification the dew comes down only from within the letters that are impressed and engraved upon that particular firmament because these letters are the entirety of the Torah for they are drawn from Zeir and of Atzalot named Torah because it was made from the fire and water of the Torah that is from the fire and water of Zeir and of Atzala 305 therefore they distill do on all those that are occupied in the Torah for its sake in this world for these words that are engraved in the garden of Eden go up to the firmament above the garden of Eden and take from those 22 letters that abide there do to nourish the soul this is the meaning of my doctrine shall drop as the rain my speech shall distill as the dew to Barim 322 306 in the middle of that firmament there is an opening facing the opening of the supernal chamber in Yitzhara through which the soul soar from the lower garden of Eden upward by means of a pillar that is stuck in the earth of garden of Eden and reaches that opening 307 into that firmament within that opening in the middle of the firmament above the garden three colors of light enter mixed together they are shocked by the which shine upon the colors of that pillar which goes up there then the pillar glitters and glows by the Glowing colors and the righteous who ascended by way of that pillar into the firmament receive the lights through that pillar. The righteous glow at any time from that high effulgence that goes on constantly but on Shabbat and the beginning of the month more than on other times because the Shechinah is then noticeably revealed in that firmament and all the righteous come to bow before her. 308 Happy is the portion of whoever is worthy of the said garments. These garments are made from the good deeds one did in this world by the precepts of the Torah, the commandments connected to action, and through them the soul stands in the lower garden of Eden wrapped in these precious garments. 309 When the soul ascends through the door of the higher firmament, other lofty and precious garments are presented before it made by precepts connected with wish and intention of the heart, study and prayer for when that which goes up it is used as a crown and part of it remains for that person and is made into garments of light for the soul to wear when it ascends and though it was said that the garments of the soul in the lower garden of Eden depend on deeds as was mentioned before nevertheless those that go up to the high firmament depend on the wish of the spirit alone as we said to be among the angels who are holy spirits this is the clarification of the matter and the holy luminary rabbi Shimon learned it so from Elijah that the lower garments of the earthly garden of Eden are connected with deeds and the higher garments are connected with the intention and the wish of the spirit that is in the heart 310 it is written and a river went out of Eden to water the garden Bereshit 210 this verse was explained but assuredly a river flows out of Eden the pleasure of the garden below the lower garden of Eden one should know that river that is flowing out of the lower garden its whereabouts and source he answers there is no question about its location because it is in Eden same as the river which flows out of Eden of Atzalot which is Chachma of Atzalot but Eden is a very high mystery and permission was not given for the mind's eye to have power over it the secret of the matter is that if this place namely Eden which is Chachma in the firmaments of the lower garden of Eden were disclosed and revealed down below then that place of the higher holy Eden would have to be disclosed and known but in order to keep the secrecy of the honor of the higher holy Eden which is Chachma of Atzalot which must not be revealed the lower Eden too is hidden and concealed which is Chachma in the firmaments of the lower garden of Eden out of which the river in the garden of Eden emanates therefore this Eden is not revealed even to the souls in the garden of Eden 311 as this river by Natifaret and Malchut departs and flows out of Eden which is Chachma at the top of Arakanpin to water the upper garden Malchut of Atzalot light comes out of the center Door of the garden's firmaments divided between the four openings in the four directions where the letters M.E.M. Gimel Reshnan are written this light divided into four lights and four glittering letters goes out of Eden where the upper point shines which refers to Chakma the aspect of the highest point of the firmaments of the earthly garden of Eden 312 that upper point shines and causes Eden to shine no one is able to see and comprehend that point only the light spreading from it by way of the door in the middle of the said firmaments the righteous in the garden of Eden bow before the light as we learned and this lower point malchute within the garden of Eden is the garden to the supernal Eden the upper point Chakma where it is not possible to know and behold 313 this is referred to in the verse no eye has ever seen that Elohim beside you Yeshaya 643 this name Elohim is explained Elohim beside you is the lower holy point malchute of Atzala named Elohim that knows the lower Eden in the earthly garden of Eden hidden in the garden which is known by none other save Malchut of Atzalot. Be Elohim besides you is the uppermost Eden above all the secret of the world to come that is Chakma of Atzalot named Upper Eden when revealed in Bina of
Within the brightness where they are able to stand at this river immense souls so they would be able to be sustained by and enjoy the brightness the souls are amended by it and settled by it. 316 As the high river is of Zeir and lets out souls and they soar from it into the garden Malchut of Atzalut so does the lower river in the terrestrial garden prepare the souls so they would be amended and settled within the brightness like in this exterior world where the souls are settled and shine within the smell of water for at first they came out this way as was already said and since the souls are prepared in the river that flows out of Eden they are able to be settled in the upper brightness and ascend higher by way of the door in the middle of the firmament and the pillar that stands in the middle of the garden as was explained thus is explained the verse and satisfied sash sash the trap also brightness above and below the brightness above was now explained the Brightness below are the lights of the garden, the firmaments and the chambers, as was said, both are formed by the river that flows out of Eden. 317 The souls of the righteous ascend by way of the pillar in the middle of the garden through the door of the firmament of the garden of Eden. Around the pillar there are a cloud and smoke and the shining of Shea. 45 This is the secret of the verse and Hashem will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon her assemblies a cloud and smoke by day and the shining. And though this verse was already explained, yet the cloud and smoke were outside and the shining light inside in order to cover those who mount so they would not be seen by those who stay below. 318 This is a secret mystery when the point the garden which is Malchut of of the earth of Asiyah called point wanted to be properly fixed and be adorned on Shabbat and the festivals and holidays. The Holy One blessed be he sent it the four faces of the eagle. They Stand upon the temple called Dror of Pure Hadro Mer Shema 3023 for that reason at the time of Jubilee we should proclaim freedom as says the verse and proclaim liberty Hadro to all its inhabitants Vayikra 2510 these four aspects utter a sound namely they proclaim freedom to all the inhabitants of the garden and no one hears it save the souls worthy of ascending and they gather there in the temple of freedom and are taken by the four aspects and put inside the pillar that stands in the middle of the garden 319 at that time the pillar raises cloud fire smoke and bright light from within these two the illumination of freedom and the souls are called dwelling place of Mount Zion and her assemblies of which it is written and Hashem will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon her assemblies a cloud and smoke by day and the shining of the flaming fire by night Yeshua 45 for the dwelling place of Mount Zion is the higher amendment when the lower point is adorned to it, it is the illumination of freedom by the four faces of the eagle of above and they the souls are called by that point to be adorned meaning these souls that heard the liberation call are considered her invited guests called to her 320 when the souls mount and arrive at the opening of that firmament then that firmament revolves three times around the garden from the sweet voice that comes of the firmament revolving the souls in the door of the firmament go out and listen to the sweetness of the firmament and see the pillar through which they ascended that emits fire cloud smoke and a bright light they all bow lowering their head they then ascend through that opening until they reach the circle that goes around that point namely into the firmament that revolves around the garden called point which is the secret of chakma then they see what they see to it they receive the illumination of chakma by the name of sight from the joy and gladness caused by what they see they go up and down, come near and retreat in the secret of Ran and return. Yashiskal 114, 321. Shakma, the secret of the supernal point, desires them and decorates them with its light, meaning the souls that rose to it become within it as may in Lukman female waters. Then one supernal righteous is clad with jealousy, is it of the world of Yetzirah, regards the light and beauty of that point, and its establishment seizes it and brings it up to him to Yetzirah, and light shines into light to with the light of Shasadim, and yes, it shines into the light of Shakma within the point, and they become one, namely, they unite all the legions of heaven open and say, At that time, happy are the righteous who observe the Torah, happy are you to be occupied in the Torah, for the joy of your master is in you who adorn the crown of your master, for they brought about that unity. 322. When light shines into light, namely, the light of Shasadim into the light of Shakma, the two lights. Become one and illumine and the colors the lights of the unity go down and observe so as to take pleasure in the righteous that ascended as female waters as mentioned and prepare them to be adorned above concerning this the verse says no eye has ever seen that Elohim beside you will do such a thing for him who waits for him. Yeshayah 643 323 Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion and said it is written and over the heads of the living creatures there was a likeness of the firmament like the color of the terrible eye stretched out over their heads above Yeshayah 122 the scripture was already explained but there is firmament and firmament the firmament below stands upon four living creatures the four living creatures within Malchut the secret of Michael Gabriel Raphael and Nuriel thence this firmament extends and takes a female form Malchut at the back of the male Zeir and this is the recondite meaning in the verse and you shall see my back Shema 3323 meaning that Malchut is at the back of Zeir Anpin as is written you have formed me behind and before Tehillim 1395 which alludes to Zeir Anpin in front and Malchut in the back it is similarly written and he took one of his ribs Gershi 221 alluding to Zeir Anpin and Malchut that were double faced front and back and then were sawed which the said verse alludes to 324 the firmament above rests upon the supernal living creatures Jesus Bure and Typhoret of Zeir Anpin thence from that firmament extends and prevails a male form which is a higher secret above the female this refers to Zeir Anpin these two firmaments are called the one end of the heaven and the other from the end of the heaven as is written from the end of the heaven to the end of the heaven to Barim 432 the heads of the lower living creatures in Malchut refer to the four living creatures which are supernal lights upon the four letters engraved on the four doors in the garden of Eden and these four living creatures are the Secret of the aforementioned angels 325 And though we said that the lower Eden is on earth and the garden receives from the lower Eden you say that the garden receives from the four living creatures he answers everything is a very high mystery as we learn for the said point Malchut of Atzalut as it has a part above in Atzalut so it has a part below on earth namely as it is the tenth part of Atzalut so it is the tenth part of earth that is the garden the lower garden is part of the point on earth and is delighted by the spirits of the righteous on earth taking pleasure on every side above and below above it enjoys the righteous Yezid of Zeir Anpin and below the fruit of the righteous the souls of righteous people born of Yezid of Zeir Anpin the soul delight above or below cause to Malchut is by the righteous for its fruit is also considered as the righteous as it is and therefore as the upper Malchut rides the four living creatures so the lower Malchut the garden receives from the four living creatures as said and the garden is drawn from that point called Eden that is also like Malchut above for she is discerned as the lower Chakma due to her being drawn from the higher Eden so too the garden that is lower Malchut is drawn from the lower Eden in a way that it receives from both however the four living creatures are from Malchut herself while Eden is the higher light drawn to Malchut above and below 326 the heads of the living creature are the four faces one is a lion as said the face of a lion on the right side Yashiskal 110 which is Jesus namely Michael one is an ox as is written the face of an ox on the left side which is Gura namely Gabriel one is an eagle as is written they four also had the face of an eagle which is Typhoret namely Raphael man embraces them all as said and the likeness of their faces was that of a man of it, which is Malchut receiving from them all namely Nuriel from another point of view Michael is of the right lion. Gabriel of the left ox Uriel in the middle Typhoret Raphael is the face of a man these are the four heads of the living creatures that carry the holy throne Malchut and perspire because of the burden the sweat because of the load they carry becomes the river dinner lit of fire as is written a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him a thousand thousand served him Daniel 710 327 when the souls ascend they bathe in the river of fire and are offered as sacrifice not consumed but wash come and look at the salamander that is born of fire a garment is made of it that is washed only by fire the fire eats away the filth and the garment is washed so is the soul made by the fire taken from the holy throne Malchut concerning which the verse says his throne was fiery flames Ibn 9 when it is time for the soul to be washed from the filth it passes through fire and is washed the fire consuming all uncleanness and the soul cleansed and blanched 328 and if you say that the Soul undergoes no penance that way for it
They are namely you are the purified souls and the soul is put in the Garden of Eden for that reason that place in Gehenom is called Ben Hinnom 331 how broken is the soul from the breaking of the purification in Gehenom because it was broken by lowly fire and though it descended from above from the river of fire yet when it reaches the earth below the fire there is not fine and the soul is punished by it and is broken and the Holy One blessed be he brings out the sun namely the supernal. Light which illuminates the four openings that shine upon the firmament above the Garden of Eden that reaches the soul and heals it. This is written in, but to you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in its wings. Malachi 320, 332. The second time the soul is purified by fire after sitting in the lower Garden of Eden for some time because it has not yet separated itself entirely from all worldly matters, and when it is brought up to the upper Garden of Eden, it must part completely from every worldly sight and matter. For that reason, it is immersed in the river of fire where the soul is thoroughly blanched and it comes out to be seen before the Master of the universe clear on all sides. Having looked at that light, it is completely healed and these souls stand clad and adorned before their Master. Happy is the portion of the righteous in this world, and in the next 333, the souls in the lower Garden of Eden roam at every new moon and Shabbat and rise to. The place called the walls of Jerusalem, the outskirts of Malchut of Atzalah, where some chieftains and chariots guard the walls, as is written, I have set watchmen upon your walls, O Jerusalem. Yeshua 626, they rise to that place, but do not enter inside Malchut before they are cleansed there. They bow and rejoice in the light and return into the lower garden of Eden. 334, they leave Garden of Eden and hover about the world and see the bodies of the wicked being punished, as is written, and they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have rebelled against me, for their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorrence to all flesh. Yeshua 6624, all flesh refers to the bodies around them as already explained, and they roam and watch the sick and suffering, and those who suffer for the unification of the holy name, they go back to the Garden of Eden and tell that to the Messiah who is in the Garden of Eden. 335, when they Tell the Messiah about the sorrow of Israel in exile and about the wicked ones among them who do not care to know their master. He raises his voice in crying for the wicked among them as is written, but he was shuddered because of our transgressions, heartbroken because of our iniquities. Yeshua 535, the souls return and remain in their places. 336, in the Garden of Eden there is one temple called the Temple of the Sick. The Messiah enters the temple and calls upon all the diseases, the pains and agonies of Israel to descend upon him, and they all descend upon him. But for him who eases them off Israel and takes them upon himself, no man would have been able to bear the sufferings of Israel for the punishments of the Torah. This is the meaning of he has borne our sicknesses. If before in the same manner Rabbi Lazar on earth used to take sufferings upon himself for the sake of Israel. 337, the sufferings daily in wait for man for the punishments of the Torah are innumerable. And they all descended into the world when the Torah was given. When Israel dwelt in the Holy Land, they averted those illnesses and agonies by way of sacrifices. Now the Messiah removes them from the world until a man passes away from the world and receives punishment. And as we learned, when the sins are many, the person is put in Gehenom in the lower sections where he receives heavy punishment because of the pollution in the soul, and more fire is kindled to consume that fill 338 happy are. Those who observe the precepts of the Torah because the holy point Malchud wants to be delighted above in its place and below in the Garden of Eden with the spirits of the righteous as we learned, and when the point down below wants to be delighted in the Garden of Eden by the souls of the righteous, it is like a mother happy and delighted with her children. So at midnight it descends into the Garden of Eden and is delighted by them. Section 25 The firmament above. Malchut Rabbi Shimon speaks now about the higher firmament above Malchut that is embroidered with holy colors that are Chesed, Bure, Tiferet, and Malchut. In this firmament, the 22 letters are written and adorned with crowns that are an aspect of Bun. Rabbi Shimon tells us of Yudhe Vavhe of the 32 paths of wisdom and of the additional Bav to make Bav Yudhe Vavhe, which then alludes to male and female. He tells of the lights, the colors, the chariots, and armies that are sustained by the holy. Do that is the eternal flame of judgment. We learn of the firmaments of the other side shining with worldly matters, and other firmaments above all colors come from the eighth firmament. Bun God is called by name, and this is significant because a name means perception. What we do not perceive, we cannot call by name. Therefore, from here upward, no wise man can by use of his intelligence know or grasp any but a slight illumination when one worships his master in prayer will and intention. He Connects his will as a fire to coal and unites the lower and higher firmaments. Rabbi Shimon tells us that the secret of secrets where all thoughts and wills are kept is in the secret of the endless light that should be meditated on every day at night. The souls of the righteous return up to their source. The chieftains who are appointed over these souls sacrifice them as fragrant sacrifice to their master. Then Malchut gives the souls birth as before. This is the secret of their new every morning. 339. The firmament above the garden stands upon the foreheads of the living creatures that are the four letters M E M Reshkimel and none said to be the mystery of the living creatures. Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, and Nuriel, and that firmament stands upon them as said the firmament of the point. The firmament above Malchut stands upon high four living creatures as said they are superior compared to those of the lower garden of Eden. That firmament above Malchut of Atzilut is embroidered with. Holy colors as there are four colors in the firmament above the lower garden so is the upper firmament above Malchut embroidered with colors the Zohar explains to us that all that was said concerning the firmament over the lower garden of Eden also applies for the upper firmament above Malchut of Atzala 340 the four living creatures and all the armies below observe at the firmament above the upper Malchut to see when it is shining and glittering in its colors the aforementioned colors. Jesus, Bure, Tiferet, and Malchut within the firmament itself shine through the portals the chariots and all the armies and legions know then that there is food to be had for they receive it through the portals this firmament is embroidered with holy colors the four lights of Jesus, Bure, Tiferet, and Malchut therein are four doors through each shines one color and the lights are impressed upon four glittering letters 341 one portal is to the east Tiferet one letter stands in it same as in the firmament above the garden only there stands a letter rush the first letter of Raphael and here stands Allah the first letter of the name Adonai this letter glitters and goes up and down inside the portal this portal is shining and scintillating from the supernal glittering that is from one of the colors of Chesed, Bure, Tiferet and Malchut the lights within the firmament itself the letter Allah glitters and stands out in it going up and down and gets marked in that opening 342 the second portal is inscribed in the northern side Bure and it stands one letter the letter Dalit of the name Adonai it stands glittering going up and down and glowing in that portal to the north sometimes it glitters sparklingly and sometimes it is concealed and therefore does not shine therefore this letter is not stable in its presence this letter is stamped upon that door 343 the third door is to the west Malchut and it stands one letter stamped upon the door and shines there this is it. Letter none of the name Adonai this letters glitters sparkingly in that portal 344 the fourth door is to the south Jesus in it stands the impression of a lower small point visible yet invisible this is the letter yet of the name Adonai these four letters of Adonai Allah Dalit Nunwayud glitter to the four sides of the firmament in the four doors at its ends 345 in this firmament other letters are written with crowns on their heads these are the 22 letters adorned with crowns the 22 letters are the mystery of Zeir and been included in this firmament of Malchut the crowns above their heads are an aspect of Bana which is Keter of Zeir and for the root of each letter named crown comes from Bana this firmament moves and revolves over the living creatures upon which the letters are marked based on the reckoning of the unity the secret of one alphabetical combination that are Allah Tepet Chetimel Zayin Dalit 346 these letters Allah Tepet Chetimel Zayin Dalit Vav go round this firmament based on the secret of other high holy and undisclosed letters that come from Bana and those other undisclosed letters revolve round that firmament and are then seen when turned into the letters mentioned before. Allah Tepet Chetimel Zayin Dalit Vav and are stamped upon this firmament 347 when this firmament shines four secrets are luminous in it the four letters Yudhe Vav of the holy names in combinations these are the
Column travels the four heads of four roots which allude to the four letters Allah Pet and Dalit all travel and ascend that is they disappear and when they disappear something disappears to with the illumination of Chakmada since the roots of Allah Pet Pet Himalzay and Dalit Bab go up afterwards the letters Allah Pet Himal Dalit reappear within the branches whole like in the first combination Allah Pet Pet Chet Himalzay and Dalit Bab they are woven into the firmament and it illuminates with the light of Chakmada 350 when the firmament shines upon the letters as before upon the letters Allah Pet Pet Kitabiri one roars again and seeks food once they roar and cry aloud it is heard above and those who are worthy come to collect blessings and holy things 351 the letters Allah Pet Pet turn around and revolve around the three columns they go around the firmament above Maljud and come to stand on the southern side they mount glittering and sparkling in the Glow then in the middle of that firmament an impression is stamped. This impression is comprised of one letter yet once it is written down and seen the other three letters Havav hey, hey, start to glow and the name Yud Havav hey, hey, is illuminating 352. These letters Yud Havav hey, hey, glitter in the middle of the firmament go up and down and burn glowing with twelve glitters namely with the twelve permutations of the holy name after they burn and glow twelve times something descends the illumination. Of Chakma it is absorbed in the letters of the twelve permutations of the holy name Yud Havav hey, hey, crowned by them and becomes unknown and all the troops and camps rejoice and utter songs and hymns 353. The firmament travels a second time revolves and turns around the three columns and the first letters mentioned above Allah Tepet Chitare all included within the supernal letters that are in the mystery of holy name Yud Havav hey, hey, as we said they turn around the firmament and the Letters Y U D Havav the secret of the holy name which were standing in its midst were imprinted on the northern left side imprinted and not imprinted because no one looks at that side namely to draw Chakma which is the secret of sight all are wrapped by Chakma and say in a pleasant voice blessed be the glory of Hashem from his place Yashis call 312 they wrap themselves in the northern side which is the secret of the left column and say it then they are wrapped on all sides and say it namely blessed be the glory of Hashem from his place the reason is that the north side comprises all the three sides of senses that Chakma is revealed only within Malchut that receives from the three columns and not within the three columns themselves 354 after explaining the actions done in the firmament on its three sides east south and north which are the three columns he now explains the actions done on the west side of the firmament which is Malchut that receives from all the Sides together he says this firmament revolves as before and sways from side to side to all four sides until it reaches west which is Malchut then a pleasant voice of many troops of angels arises from this side and a pleasant voice of many troops on that side and so on all sides east south north and west at that time the firmament illuminates with another greater light than it used to illuminate in the three sides for in it the light of Chakma is revealed which is revealed only in Malchut it illuminates displaying another color that comprises all colors for Malchut comprises the three colors in the three columns 355 these letters we mentioned Yud Havav mount up to that firmament namely to Zeir and where they receive one supernal letter from IT which unites with the name of those letters Yud Havav though these letters are of the holy name Yud Havav nevertheless this name is included below that is in the firmament of Malchut for the secret of that name is Included above in Zeir Anpin and below in Malchut, and when it is included below in Malchut, the letters of Yud Havav go up to receive one letter from Zeir Anpin for the letters Yud Havav below in Malchut are sustained by that letter. It is a letter Vav which descends into Malchut where the letters Yud Havav are united with it, namely Vav Yud Havav in which the first Vav indicates Zeir Anpin connected with the holy name within Malchut based on the principle of Yen. His courthouse then they become one crown and one complete name is formed 356. The holy name Yud Havav below is complete yet incomplete. It is complete in itself and incomplete being included in the aspect of Malchut. A whole name includes five letters Vav Yud Havav in which the Vav from Zeir Anpin united with Yud Havav alludes to Zeir Anpin and its courthouse Malchut. This is a secret which alludes to male and female for the Vav alludes to male and Yud Havav alludes. To female, the entire whole name indicating completeness consists of nine letters that are Yud Havav Elohim, whereby Yud Havav alludes to male and Elohim to female together. The name is completely whole. The other name Vav Yud Havav is an allusion for the Vav refers to male and contains five letters as said, but this name of nine letters Yud Havav Elohim is entirely complete. 357 when the letters are united, namely Vav Havav Yud Havav, the firmament illuminates with thirty two lights to with the thirty two paths of Chakma. Then all is filled with joy and is one mystery above and below. All the chariots and the troops are in the secret of completeness, and all the grades are established in their place. Each as it ought. 358 in the firmament of Malchut to the north, where Chakma is luminous within Malchut, there is one flame that shines forever to with the judgment verdict, where Chakma is revealed. This judgment is named flame. Other letters are imprinted to its. Write the ten names turned into seventy names they derive from the seventy-two names of the holy name of seventy-two iron bed letters as was said that they are the secret of seventy members of the Sanhedrin and the two witnesses all are engraved upon this firmament and illuminate together three hundred and fifty-nine from this firmament travel all the lower firmaments on the side of holiness until they reach the other firmaments of the other side called curtains of goat's hair as is written and he made curtains of goat's hair for the tent over the tabernacle Shema three thousand six hundred and fourteen three hundred and sixty there are curtains and curtains the curtains of the tabernacle are called the firmaments of the living creatures of the holy tabernacle the curtains of goat's hair are other firmaments of the other side these firmaments of the tabernacle are based on the secret of the chariots of the holy spirits and those firmaments outside the curtains of goat's hair shine with worldly matters and are considered aspects of repentance and Bodily worship by people and they cover the firmaments inside as a shell covers the fruit. The firmaments inside are like a thin skin membrane around the brain and called the heavens of Hashem, namely the one name Yud Havav hey, down below in Malchut 361. There are other firmaments above the inner firmaments of Zeir and been named the firmaments of the living creatures. They are the secret of the holy name Yud Havav hey, according to the mystery of the large upper living creatures. Jesus, Vera Tiferet and Malchut from the chest upward of Zeir and been they are the secret of the high letters of the mysteries of the Torah, namely the whole of the 22 letters engraved and impressed coming from the eighth firmament bind above the high living creatures. Jesus, Vera Tiferet and Malchut of Zeir and been this firmament has no visibility concealed and hidden without use. 362 all the colors are coming from the eighth firmament bind in itself. There are no colors, it is neither. Seen nor appears this is the meaning of it letting out all luminaries for all mokin of the three columns of bind to come out but in itself no light is seen nor darkness nor any other color except for the souls of the righteous who watch from the lower firmament of Malchut as if from behind the wall the light sent to shine by the upper firmament bina and no one is able to know or bear that light of bina which never stops 363 underneath the firmament of bina all the firmaments were designed to completeness by that name and are thus called heavens of those called in the scripture the heavens some bear the supernal name Yud Havav of Zeir and with some the holy name Malchut is adorned for the firmaments of Malchut received from the firmaments of Zeir and therefore it is written the heaven are the heavens of Hashem Tehillim 11516 that is they are concealed in the supernal firmament bina that is situated over them 364 up to the firmament of bina the holy name Yud Havav is alluded to in the verse the heavens are the heavens to Yud Havav for the Holy One blessed be he by is called by names and a name means perception for what we do not perceive we do not call by name from now upward higher than by no wise man can by use of intelligence know and grasp anything but one slight illumination that is not enough to grasp fully happy is the portion of whoever comes in and goes out and knows how to behold the mysteries of his master and be devoted to him 365 by these mysteries a man can be devoted to his master and know the wholeness of wisdom in the high secret while he worships his master in prayer will and intention of the heart he connects his will as a fire to coal to unite these lower firmaments of the holy side from Malchut and bedeck them with the lower name Yud Havav in the
United with white light over the black light that is from above its base is below in the wick of oil so is that point Malchut base below during the day it is united above with Z-E-I-R-N and at night it is united below with the souls of the righteous 369 all that is in the world go back to their source and root from which they came and for a few nights each of them is going to take what it deserves this is written in my kidneys also admonish me in the night tail 167 for everything goes back to its source and the soul hovers back to its root that fits it above and the body stays quiet as a stone and goes back to the place fit to hover above it to with the other side that will prevail over it after death for that reason the body returns to its side and the soul to its side 370 after the body returns to its side the secret of the other side prevails upon it and therefore the hands are defiled and should be washed as we explained that at night everything returns to their its place its root the souls of the righteous mount and return to their source their root which is malchut out of which they were born and the one who wishes to namely malchut is bedecked with crowns whole on all sides above and below then the glory of the holy one blessed be he rises to be adorned by all 371 the chieftains appointed over the souls of the righteous rule at night they elevate them and sacrifice them as fragrant sacrifice to their master the chief appointed over these legions is Called Surya a supreme chief once the soul mounts through all these firmaments it is brought before him Surya and he smells it same as in the verse and he will inhale the scent of the fear of Hashem Yashia 1113 namely as will the king Messiah do in the world of the future so does chief Surya and the souls pass before him under his charge to further approach Malchut 372 all souls approaching that place namely Malchut are seen there this is a secret then all the souls are contained within that point Malchut and it takes them at once as if swallowing them and conceives like a woman the secret is for the scholars engrossed in the law when this point conceives as a woman in conception it has pleasure having the soul of this world included in it together with its deeds and study of the Torah during that day it takes that will of this world and gladly rejoices in it becoming whole on all sides above and below 373 then Malchut lets them out and gives them birth as before. For the souls are the offspring of Malchut and the soul is now new as in its birth this is the secret of their new every morning each of 323 that alludes to the souls which are certainly new every morning what is the sense of their being new it is in the secret at the end of the verse great is your faithfulness of it for Malchut is named faith and it is indeed great and can contain the souls let them in and bring them out when they are new therefore it receives others from above during the day happy are the righteous in this world and the world to come 374 in the meantime the daylight broke Rabbi Abba said let us rise and go to thank the master of the universe so they prayed afterwards the friends came back to Rabbi Abba and said to him whoever started let him finish praising happy is our portion on the way that we so deserve to adorn the holy one blessed be he with the secrets of wisdom section 26 and Bet made the ark Rabbi Abba tells us that the Ark symbolizes Malchut and the written Torah symbolizes Zir and ben, so the Ark is a mystery in which the written Torah is put. Rabbi Abba discusses the meaning of the number of boards in the Ark. He also says that there is the Ark of the Malchut of Holiness and the Ark of the Malchut of the other side. This leads into a discussion of all these things. Did the king Arabna give to the king and the conquest of Jerusalem by David seeing the slaughter during that conquest? Hashem told the angel of destruction to stop through an examination of the letters in the name Arabna and the word Aaron Ark and the name Adam. Rabbi Abba ascertains that the holy side is called the Ark Aaron of the Covenant. He says it is fit for the body, i.e., that the image form of man should be put into it. Therefore, when the righteous die, they are put in a coffin. Aaron, this alludes to the union of Zir and, ben, and the Ark of the Covenant because they do not pertain to the body of Adam. There are no created bodies to the other side 375 Rabbi Abba opened the discussion and said and Bet Salal made the Ark of Acacia with Shema 371 though the friends explained all the secret of the tabernacle at the Holy Assembly nevertheless we should look in here for the secret is adorned with several mysteries as to impart wisdom this Ark is a mystery in which the written Torah is put for the Ark symbolizes Malchut and the written Torah symbolizes Z-E-I-R-N and the Torah is concealed within its six boards rounded for the Ark is made of six boards rounded four boards around the sides one above and one below altogether there are six this is called an Ark when the six boards the secret of Chesed Burit Tiferet Net Sash Hot and Yezid of Malchut become one they turn into a vessel in which the secret of the Torah can be put which is composed of six endings Chesed Burit Tiferet Net Sash Hot and Yezid namely Z-E-I-R-N 376 but there are five boards to this Ark four on the sides and one below corresponding to Chesed. Bure Tifer at Netzach and Hot for the board on top is the secret of the covering of the Ark and is not of the Ark proper. Five books are put in it. The five books of the Torah corresponding to Chesed Bure Tifer at Netzach and Hot of Zeir and these five boards become six together with one grade that comes in secretly called the secret of all and is the secret of the covenant being is it and concealed. There is no board corresponding to it in the Ark when it enters within those five boards. The Ark and the Torah are established in the secret of the nine grades. The two names Yad Hevav Elohim, which consist of nine letters, and there is one board, a high secret, the covering that covers all this is the secret of the firmament that goes round and above all the eighth firmament by a hand since the covering of the Ark is above them all they are concealed that is invisible. 377 here we should look and know the secret of the Ark for there is Ark and Ark to with of holiness. And Malchut of the other side one against the other he opened and said all these things did the king Arabna give to the king to Shmuel 2423 he asks but was Arabna king though the friends explained it yet David upon whom was written whoever smites the Yebusite and gets up to the aqueduct to Shmuel 58 took hold of and conquered Jerusalem where his temple lies why did he pay Arabna for the place you may say that the Jerusalem was David's nevertheless it was a heritage of Arabna and therefore had to be bought as in the case of Nebo the Jisraelite although Akkad was ruler and king he had to obtain his permission for the vineyard so did David 378 he answers assuredly Arabna was a king and that place was under his authority and possession when the time arrived for the place to be free of his rule it did not happen save by much bloodshed and killing among Israel that is through war later the angel of destruction stood upon that place in order to kill but could not for his strength failed him. 379. This was the place where Isaac was bound, where Abraham built the altar to sacrifice his son Isaac. When the Holy One blessed be, he saw that place. He was filled with pity as is written. Hashem beheld and he relented. I did Rahim 2115. What did Hashem behold? The binding of Isaac immediately. He felt compassion towards them. 380. And he said to the angel of destruction, It is enough, Hadrabib. But what is the meaning of Rabbit? Was explained as take the greater one, Hadrab. But here the meaning of enough is as in you have dwelt long enough in this mountain. Devarim 16. Enough here means that the place was in your possession for many years, and from now on it is enough. Return the place to its owners, despite that it could only be taken from him through sacrifice of lives and money. 381. He asks why is he called Arabna and replies, There is a name Arabna and Ornan. I did Rahim 2115. The reason is that while the place was still in. His possession it was called Arabna from Haveran Lid Ark alluding to the Ark of the other side there Malchut and as there are letters added Arvana instead of Aaron so there is an addition to the evil eye which is the secret of the other side for to him an addition is considered diminution 382 on the side of holiness once letters are deducted holiness is accumulated this is the secret of the verse 12 have Shnei Isar Oxen I Melashim 725 in which one letter is missing Shnei instead of Shnei the other side though is given additional letters as is written and he made curtains of goat's hair for the tent over the tabernacle Shema 3614 in 12 curtains there is an additional letter I into Shnei this implies diminution for Ashtay implies one short of Shnei on the holy side it is written Shnei Isar without MEM and no more and here it is written as Shnei with an additional I in Lid I to imply diminution so deserves the evil eye that wishes to fill his eyes that is his eye and is thus lessened in the secret of more is less 383 come and see the holy side is called the Ark Haveran of the Covenant alluding to Malchut of Holiness that Ark of the Covenant Malchut connected to the Covenant. Yes it is fit for the body's e -E -I -R and that is that the human head Adam form should be put in it namely why you dehave off fully spelled with all of has
Symbolizes the Holy Covenant 384 it is written concerning Joseph and he was put Hebeisim in a coffin Hebeir and Beersheet 5026 he asks why is Hebeisim spelled with two yuts he answers it shows the connection between one covenant and another covenant for Yud alludes to the covenant namely Jesus and the two written Yuds corresponding to the two covenants one in the secret of the lower covenant and the other in the secret of the upper covenant the Ark Hebeir of the covenant then he was placed in a coffin Hebeir and why so because he observed the Holy Covenant which was established through him therefore he deserved to be put in a coffin and everything is proper 385 Rabbi Abba and said woe to people who are unaware of that disgrace and woe to the punishment exacted from all those who wish to be put in a coffin after their death for only the righteous may be put in a coffin who knows himself and sees that he did not offend the covenant the sign of the Holy Covenant during. His lifetime and kept it as he should, and if this is not so, he must not be put in a coffin Hebaran after his death and impure the Ark Hebaran, for the impairment reaches the Ark of the Covenant 386. The inner meaning of this is that a man has to be connected with the sign of the Holy Covenant, the secret that is fit for him, which alludes to Yezid of Zeir and Pen, and not for the other. The other side for the Ark or Coffin alluding to Malchut is united only with the righteous who keeps the sign of the Holy Covenant, and whoever impairs the member of the Covenant and is nevertheless put in a coffin, woe to him for impairing it in his life, woe to him for impairing it in his death, woe to him who receives this punishment for impairing the sign of the Covenant and the Holy Ark of the Covenant, woe to the disgrace for which there will be forever upon him the revenge of this world and of that impairment. This is the secret of the verse for the scepter of wickedness shall not rest upon the share. Allotted to the righteous tail in 1253 387 when a man is judged in that world his deeds are examined if he used to impair the secret of the holy covenant stamped in his flesh and now he also desecrates his coffin he is not of the righteous they look at him and sentence him to be excluded from the community of mankind and from those who were given eternal life he is given to that side which has no part in the secret of man namely the other side as mentioned when he is delivered to that side woe to him for he is putting Gehenna never to leave upon this says the verse and they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have rebelled against me Yeshua 6624 these stay apart from mankind that is they were left out of humanity 388 that is true only for those who did not repent completely enough to wipe their misdeeds it is nevertheless better for them not to be put in a coffin for as long as the body exists the soul is judged and does not go to its place Save the high righteous worthy of ascending in their bodies happy is their portion in this world and in the world to come 389 for there is not a greater offense before the holy one blessed be he than that of lying and impairing the holy sign of the covenant that person may not see the face of the Shechinah if he does since as is written and er Judas firstborn was wicked in the sight of Hashem Bereshit 387 and also nor shall evil dwell with you Talim 55 for this offense is called evil 390 it is written and Betzalel made the ark Shema 371 he asks why did not the wise man who made the tabernacle proceed to build the ark he replies that Betzalel was of the grade of the ending part of the body which symbolizes the holy covenant and kept it therefore he deserves the part allotted to him the ark he made namely Maljud he strove in what he did and not another all the friends came and kissed Rabbi Abba section 28 the path of just men is like Gleam of sunlight Rabbi Shimon opens with but the path of just men is like the gleam of sunlight that shines ever more brightly until the height of noonday he says that the path is the way of truth another explanation draws a distinction between the path and the way maintaining that the path is the word that describes the way of the righteous who have opened it for the first time also the Shechinah now goes into that place that has been opened Rabbi Shimon moves to and Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom for Moses had laid his hands upon him comparing Moses to the sun and Joshua to the moon when the moon is full it is in completeness and is called Yudhei Babi 391 when they came to Rabbi Shimon they repeated before him what was said on that way he opened and said but the path of just men is like the gleam of sunlight that shines ever more brightly until the height of noonday Mishlei 418 this verse was already explained nevertheless we should Look at it the path of just men namely the path in which the righteous walk is the way of truth preferred by the Holy One blessed be he a way in which the Holy One blessed be he goes before them and all the chariots come to hear the words of their mouths the gleam that shines forth is not darkened as in the way of the wicked whose way is always dark as is written the way of the wicked is like darkness of 19392 there is another explanation concerning the path of the just man the difference between a way and a path was already explained but a path means a certain place in which a path was just now opened discovered and formed where no feet have yet trodden away is that treads in the one press Yeshua 63 to anybody who wishes can tread it 393 therefore for the righteous a way I is called the path for they were the first to uncover it and not of the place I is it said that it was open for though other people walk in this particular place nevertheless now when Righteous walk it is new as if newly opened and not trodden by anyone else before this is so because the righteous renew that entire place with many new holy expositions with which the Holy One blessed be he is pleased 394 furthermore the Shechinah now goes into that place a thing which did not happen before therefore it is called the path had arch of just man for a holy and high visitor had or ACH came to visit namely the Shechinah way is open for all and whoever wants to can tread it even the wicked way is in the mystery of the verse who makes a way in the sea Yeshua 4316 for in the sea the way is not safe since the other side treads in it and though uninvited rules it and defiles the tabernacle therefore the righteous alone exists in and rule the specified place called path as I explained for a way is open and available to all to this and that side to holiness and defilement 395 and you holy saints a high and holy path was presented before you and you where its guests supernal and excellent matters were expounded before the ancient one have adequate and happy is your portion 396 Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion and said and Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom for Moses had laid his hands upon him Devarim 349 we learned a few times that the face of Moses was like that of the sun which is Zeir and that of Joshua was like the face of the moon which is Malchut for the moon does not have light save the light of it sun Zeir and that shines upon the moon Malchut the moon grows full from the sun when it is full it is whole 397 he asks what is the fullness of the moon and answers the mystery of all this is that the image the secret of Malchut is named after the secret of the upper name Yudhei Vavhei it does not bear that name Yudhei Vavhei save in its fullness for many are the names it inherited and bears according to its state and when it is in the state of the secret of fullness whole on all. Sides it is called Yudhei Vavhei for its completeness resembles the completeness of above that is Zeir and been called Yudhei Vavhei therefore Malchut too is called Yudhei Vavhei for the daughter inherited her mother that she received all the Mokin from Iamei that is by through Zeir and been section 29 the 15th day of the 7th month Rabbi Shimon explains the mystery of the 15th day of the month talking about the fullness of the moon and saying that Joshua is full of the spirit of wisdom because of his designation son of Nun we learn that a spirit rash issued from the expansion of the higher firmament and it formed a temple below Malchut in its fullness Joshua is full of the spirit of wisdom because Moses laid his hands upon him Moses is considered to be the face of the sun and Joshua the face of the moon Rabbi Shimon tells the rabbis that each of them is also filled with the spirit of wisdom because God has laid his hands upon them 398 Malchut is named Yudhei Vavhei on the 15th day as is written the 15th day of the 7th month Vayikra 2334 and on the 10th of the 7th month of 27 all has the same meaning when the world to come by a composed of the secret of the 10 utterances its 10th Firat rests upon this month Malchut it is called the 10th and when the moon is impressed between the 10th Firat of Bina for one wholeness Malchut is called the 15th since A equals 5 which is Malchut was joined and engraved among the 10th Firat of Bina 399 this is the secret reason why Malchut is called Yudhei Vavhei when it is called by that name Yudhei Vavhei it is connected to the last hay of Yudhei Vavhei and added to become part of the secret of the last hay of Yudhei Vavhei as before then it is part of the secret of the whole name Yudhei Vavhei and is its last hay so it is engraved
lower chamber Malchut in its fullness so everything was filled and became within Malchut the secret of the holy name Yud Hei Vav Hei is one whole 402 for this reason Joshua is full of the spirit of wisdom because Moses laid his hands upon him but for Moses considered to be the face of the sun which is Zeir and poured out his blessings upon him and the well was filled from it Malchut that is Joshua who is the face of the moon was filled by Zeir and Peneset and you exalted saints. Each one of you is filled with the spirit of wisdom and is full of the mysteries of wisdom since the Holy One blessed be he takes pleasure in you and has laid his hands upon you happy is my portion that my eyes beheld it and beheld the spirit of wisdom in its whole section 30 whoever eats without a prayer Rabbi Shimon opens with you shall not eat with the blood neither shall you practice divination nor soothsaying he says that whoever eats without praying for his blood is the same as someone who practices divination and soothsaying we learn that during the nights the souls go up and since man is sustained by the power that permeates the blood he tastes death for the power of the blood is not strong enough to receive the power of the neshama therefore when a man awakens he is not pure the other side has power over a place vacant of soul even after a person washes himself with water the nefesh rules him not the neshama but when he prays the power of the Neshama is strengthened and the man is properly perfected with the Nefesh below and the Neshama above. Finally Rabbi Shimon explains how a man who eats before praying is considered a diviner and a soothsayer. 403 He opened the discourse with the verse You shall not eat anything with the blood neither shall you use enchantment nor soothsaying. Vayikra 1926 This was explained but its secret is this whoever eats without praying for his blood is considered as if he practices divination and soothsaying. 404 For at night the soul mounts and gazes upon the mystery of the supernal glory each according to its merits man is sustained by the power that permeates the blood and preserves the body therefore he tastes death for the strength of the blood is not able to awaken to the power of the soul and receive it for that reason when man awakens from sleep he is not pure we already explained that the other side has power over a place vacant of soul. 405 After washing himself with Water though he is occupied in the Torah the Neshama is not kept in its place nor rules man only the power of the blood alone does which is called Nefesh the Nefesh always permeates the blood as we already explained and when a man prays worshipping his master then the power of the blood resumes its place and the power of the Neshama is strengthened so it settles in that place in the body then a man is properly perfected before his master the Nefesh below and the inner matter the Neshama. Above 406 therefore whoever prays before eating is considered to be in a good position the Neshama amounts to settle in its place as ought but if he eats before praying causing the blood to settle in its place he is considered a diviner and a soothsayer why because it is the way of the diviner to elevate the other side and humiliate the holy side 407 he asks why is a man who tried to please that side namely who ate before praying called an enchanter head he replies it is so. Since he worked hard for that serpent had Nakash of the clipot to raise its power and strength it is like one worshipping other Elohim serving the power of the blood not the Holy One blessed be he by strengthening the side of the Neshama the Holy Side 408 he asks why a man who eats before praying is called a diviner and answers because he worked towards sins and did not place his effort for merits for the Hebrew word soothsayer have me o n e n i s derived from the letters of the word sin have and if you say that there is an extra none in the middle of the word me o n e n and therefore it should have been said ma'an without the extra none in the middle then he explains that it is assuredly so for we cannot have power over the other side only when we mix in it a little from the Holy Side as a thin thread whoever wishes for a lie to endure should mix some truth in it so the lie will prevail therefore sin is a lie and in order to keep it intact some truth is added this is the Meaning of none in the middle of the word meon and to keep the lie therefore he who does not pray for his blood for himself before the Holy One blessed be he before eating is considered a diviner and soothsayer section 31 the four corrections of prayer Rabbi Shimon says that in a prayer man's body and nefesh are corrected and become whole prayer consists of four kinds of rectifications the first is of the self for a man should mend himself with precepts and holiness and sacrifices and offerings that will purify him the second is of this world to bless God for each deed in creation that sustains the world the third is the rectification of the higher world together with all its armies and camps the fourth rectification is that of the prayer of Ammon of fixing the secret of the holy name or the holy perfected name 409 the prayer of man is as you described it exalted saints happy is your portion through prayer man's body and nefesh are mended and become Whole prayer consists of corrections carried out together. Four corrections in all. The first correction is mending oneself so one may become whole. The second is correcting this world. The third is to correct the heavenly armies. The fourth is the correction of the holy name by means of the holy chariots and of all the worlds properly corrected above and below. 410 He expounded upon what he said. The first work I mentioned is the correction of the self for a man should correct himself with precepts and holiness and with sacrifices and burnt offerings that will purify him. The fringes have are what is meant by precept and tefillin are what is meant by holiness. By saying the prayer of sacrifices and burnt offerings he is corrected as if he offered them. The second correction is of this world namely regarding the work of creation to bless the holy one. Blessed be he for every action by saying praise him all you stars of light. Praise him heavens of heavens. Tehillim 1483 to 4 ideas. Said to sustain this world therefore we say blessed be he who said for blessed means blessed for everything 411 the third correction is on amending the higher world together with all its armies and camps is the praise creator of ministering angels all of whose ministering angels and the opening and the holy living creatures the fourth is the correction of the amid of prayer establishing the secret of the holy name as you said happy is your portion and here is the secret of correcting the entire name happy is my portion with you in this world and in the world to come section 32 fear your Elohim Rabbi Shimon opens with you shall fear Hashem your Elohim him shall you serve and but you shall fear your Elohim live from your Elohim he says that from your Elohim means from that place that is connected to and surrounds the inner brain from inside we read that this is the session named Elohim and there is a fire around it there are three kinds a fire the first receives fire gladly and they love each other in the second the brightness the Sheshana is seen this fire gladly dwells within the first one the third fire surrounds that brightness and in it lies the fear of judgment on the left side is the fear of punishment but this must be joined with love that is drawn from the right Rabbi Shimon says that we should not be afraid of strange deities after this he talks about love saying that he who worships with love joins the high place above the holiness of the world to come that is bind and the right side that is Jesus of Zer and but nothing has power over the level of fear but love 412 the precepts of the Torah you spoke of in relation to prayer are assuredly so he opened with the words you shall fear Hashem your Elohim him shall you serve to 1020 and but shall fear your Elohim live be afraid of your Elohim Vayikra 1914 the second verse should have been read your Elohim for it is written fear Hashem your Elohim and not of Hashem your Elohim what is meant by of your Elohim he answers the secret meaning is that of your Elohim surely refers to that place that is connected to and surrounds the inner fruit from inside it is the Shechina named Elohim and the fire around it is the mystery of the fire surrounding the brightness from which judgment is drawn upon the wicked as will be expounded later this is what is meant by of your Elohim that is the surrounding fire he should be feared for judgment prevails there drawn from the higher judgment in that place 413 there are three kinds of fire here the first is the fire which receives fire gladly and they are glad and love each other upon the second fire it is written and there was a glowing brightness to the fire Yeshua 113 for the brightness which is the Shechina is seen in it this fire gladly dwells within the inner fire as said namely the first fire the third fire surrounds that glowing brightness and in it lies the Fear of judgment that smites the wicked 414 and though we learn that there are four colors to fire namely white red green and black and these four are one each consists of these four colors which are Shesed, Burit, Tiferet and Malchut nevertheless this does not apply to the fire mentioned before we are only referring to the area which is where lies the fear of judgment therefore we particularly expound it as required upon three fires only and no more about this speaks the verse and you shall be afraid of your Elohim meaning of his punishment this is why it is written of your Elohim 415 one should concentrate with love and fear together to fear on one side drawn from the left and love on another side drawn from the right with the
That once fear dwells upon the head of man which is from the left love is awakened from the right that is from Chisit of Zeir and Penhi who worships with love cleaves the high place above and joins the holiness of the world to come which is Bina for he rises and bedecks himself and joins the right side which is Chisit of Zeir and Pen upon which dwells Bina 418 and if you say that worship out of fear is not considered worship this is not so for it is precious worship though it does not rise. To be joined above to Zeir and Pen and when one worships with love one rises and bedecks oneself above and cleaves to the world to come this man is summoned to the world to come happy is his portion for he has power over the place of fear and nothing has power over the level of fear but love which is the mystery of the right the mystery of unity of Zeir and Pen and Malchut 419 the person worthy of the world to come should avow the unity of the name of the Holy One blessed be he and connected. Organs male and female to the higher grades Abba and I am the high with the low and to unite them all and put them in their proper place in the blessed endless light and tie knots this is the secret of hero Yisrael Hashem our Elohim Hashem is one Devarim 64 section 33 the secret of SH Ma we hear from Rabbi Shimon that name Shem is included in here SH Ma all is considered one for Zer Enpen and Malchut alluded to in the SH Ma are united to be one with Yisrael. Sabah the heart which is to cleave to infinity where the supernal tabernacle shall be joined with the lower tabernacle Rabbi Shimon speaks about the letters in Yud Hey Bab Hey and Yud Hey Yud Hey we read that the purpose of the word one is to strengthen the desire to bind all together and raise our will in fear and love up to infinity one is the secret of above below and the four directions of the world 420 the secret meaning of the word SH Ma here is a name Hashem which is Malchut. Amounting to Ayan equals 70 names which is the name of 72 names Ayan bet equals 72 of the upper chariot that is Jesus Bureau Tifera and Malchut of Zeir and Pen above the chest everything is one whole that is Malchut called name is included within Zeir and Pen above the chest which is the secret of large Ayan Yisrael refers to Yisrael, Saba the six ends of Bina for there is also small Yisrael which is Zeir and Pen as is written when Yisrael was a child and I loved him Hashia 111 but here it is. Yisrael, Saba one mystery into one whole for Zeir and Pen and Malchut alluded to in the SH are one with Yisrael, Saba for they rise up and become one with him SH Mal Yisrael lit hero Yisrael indicates that here in Yisrael, Saba wife is united with her husband that is Malchut with Zeir and Pen 421 after Zeir and Pen and Malchut were included the one within the other into one in Yisrael, Saba then all the organs should be joined together the six ends of Zeir and Pen and Malchut too. Unite two tabernacles together in all the organs the supernal dwelling is the secret of Yudha and the lower dwelling is the secret of Bavhe with the heart wishing to rise to cleave with the endless light where all the upper and lower will cleave and become one will 422 this is the inner meaning of Yudha Yudha as it said and Hashem will be Habu Yudha Yudha one Zechariah 149 namely one in the secret of Yudha Yudha of Yudha Yudha the secret of Chakma is to be united and attached to the Hay of Yudha Yudha which is an inner chamber by the place where the supernal point is concealed which is Yud Chakma this is the secret of Yudha Bavhe our Elohim these two names are Yudha Chakma and Bina Hashem being Chakma and our Elohim being Bina 423 also all the body parts are put together the six ends of Zeir and Ben and Malchud where they came from in the inner chamber Bina as was said and everything returns to its place to its essence. And root up to where the root of the covenant is that is Abba 424 then the other two letters of Yudha Yudha are combined and attached together the Yud with the Hay the Yud is the inner meaning of the holy covenant to Yud of Zeir and Pen and the Hay is a temple and a place to conceal the holy covenant the Yud namely Malchut is a temple to Yud is Bina is a temple to Chakma is said and though we explained that Yud is the second Bab of the letter Bab fully spelled Bab Bab first Bab being Tiferet and the second being Yud why then is it said here to be Yud he answers the implication of Yud is uniting them into one that is when in the secret of unity with Malchut Yud is called Yud 425 the purpose of the word one is to cause unity from there upward that is from Malchut upward to awaken the desire to bind all together and awaken our wish with awe and love up to the endless light this desire to go up to the endless light will not be lacking in these grades. And body parts, but will appear in them all. Nothing shall be without it to attach them, so that all will be one unity bound together in the endless life. Four hundred and twenty-six. This is the avowal of unity of Rabbi Hamnon the elder, who learned it from his father and his father from his rabbi, and so on up to the mouth of Elijah. This avowal is very well, and by reparation, and though we explain this avowal by many secrets, other ways all the secrets amount to one. But this I found in his book, and it is well for. It is an avowal of unity by amendment. We expound it upon another secret elsewhere, which is well and proper as it should be. But this avowal is by amendment. The avowal of Rabbi Hamnon the elder, four hundred and twenty-seven. He also says that whoever wishes to unite all the secrets of the avowal of unity within the word one, this is better. Therefore, we lengthen the pronunciation of one to awaken the desire to draw from above downward and to raise from below upward. So all will be one. This is the secret of Yudhe. Yud that alludes to this as we said 428 we learned that within the word one is the secret of above below and the four directions of the world it is so and we need to unite the higher and the lower as we said they being Abba and Ima and male and female the four directions of the world are the secret of the supernal chariot Jesus Bureau Tiferet and Malchut of Zeir and Pen above the chest and we should put them all together in one bond one unity all the way to the endless light as we explain section 34 mentioning the exodus from Egypt Rabbi Shimon tells us that the upper and lower worlds could not be joined while the Shechina was in exile he speaks of the freedom of Malchut now united with Zer and Pen during the exile of the children of Israel the Shechina always remained with them but when she left the exile she asked God to redeem her four times against the four exiles so she would be free she was thus redeemed four times by the exodus Therefore the four redemptions are repeated in the prayers before and after you have been the help of our fathers to make them fortified and lasting. Lastly Rabbi Shimon mentions the initiated who behold the holiness of their master saying that the mystery of surrendering the soul to one's master is very important. 429 After the meditation of SH Ma there is a mystery of mentioning the exodus from Egypt since the Shechina was in exile and when she is in exile there is no joining together the upper world Zeir and Pen and the lower world Malchut. Therefore one needs to demonstrate the freedom of that redemption from Egypt carried out by several signs and miracles performed by the Holy One. Blessed be he this redemption ought to be mentioned and be held for though it occurred in exile now it is free since the day the bonds of Egypt were thrown open and several miracles were performed. 430 One ought to point at freedom of Malchut because she is united with her husband Zeir and Pen and also in order to bring nearer the uttering of the word redemption yes it to the amid of prayer the secret of Malchut so all will become one without separation or divorce meaning that Malchut is divorced in exile from her husband Zeir and this is implied by neither shall they take a woman put away from her husband Vayikra 217 431 and you may say that she is in exile and divorced from her husband Zeir and this is not so she is in exile to dwell with Israel for wherever Israel were. Exiled the Shechinah is with them to protect them but not put away by Zeir and the Shechinah was not seen during the first temple or the second temple when Israel sinned therefore it was not considered an exile nor separation before Israel went in exile if they sinned the Shechinah went up and afterwards when they went in exile she did not mount up but her abode was with Israel but never was there separation 432 for that reason we must display redemption which enfolds four redemptions. The secret thereof is that when the Shechina left the exile in Egypt she asked the Holy One blessed be he to redeem her four times four redemptions against the four exiles so she would be free and no longer put away therefore at the time of the redemption from Egypt she was redeemed four redemptions by the exodus to it when receiving Mokin of the exodus from Egypt the Shechina was redeemed from all four kingdoms that is from all the exiles up to the coming of the Messiah in a way that she would no longer be considered as separated from her husband Zeir and Pen and now that the Shechina needs to be prepared to be united with her hus
Z-E-I-R-N and whenever there is an exile for the unification of the holy name therefore one should mention the redemption from Egypt always in every sanctification have Kadesha of the Holy One blessed be he blessed be his name forever and ever 435 this is the mystery of sanctification that is holy 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 that we say we explain that during sanctification everything is sanctified above and below the angels and Yisrael and all the grades and the chariots upper and lower we already explained. It's high mysteries to the initiated who behold the holiness of their master happy is their portion 436 the mystery of surrendering the soul to one's master that you expounded upon is very well friends happy is your portion and happy are my eyes to behold while still alive holy matters awakened in this world written above before the holy king section 35 then they who feared Hashem spoke to one another Rabbi Shimon opens with then they who feared Hashem spoke to one another and Hashem here and heard it and the book of remembrance was written before him for those who feared Hashem and took heed of his name he tells us that this means that the holy chariots and armies spoke with one another before God and when these holy words rise up the holy king delights in them and they mount to his head and become a crown we read that they who feared Hashem above means when they repent with love they stand before God they who feared Hashem below means that afterwards they go down to earth but even then their words retain their shape above all the words that the righteous on earth bedeck themselves with stay standing before God in the same shape of wickedness turned into merit and afterwards they are written in the book of remembrance before him so they would exist before him always took heed of his name means that those who value the importance of the Torah fix the wisdom of their master's name in their hearts 437 he opened and said then they who feared Hashem spoke to one another and Hashem here and heard it and the book of remembrance was written before him for those who feared Hashem and took heed of his name Malachi 316 we should examine this verse it is written spoke to one another but should have merely been written spoke why is it so he answers the holy chariots and army spoke with one another before the holy one blessed be he 438 since these holy words they spoke mount up some hasten to carry them before the holy king and they are adorned with crowns of supernal light and speak about it with one another before the supernal king who has seen joys and who has seen praises mounting through all the firmaments and when these words rise the holy king looks at them and adorns himself with them they come up to sit in his lap and he delights in them from there his bosom they mount to his head and become a crown upon this the Torah said and I will be daily his delight Mishlei 830 it is not written I was but I will be in the future tense namely any time and whenever the supernal words mount before him 439 they who feared Hashem is written twice namely then they who feared Hashem and a book of remembrance was written before him for them who feared Hashem the meaning is they who fear Hashem above means when they repent with love they stand above before the holy one blessed be he they who fear Hashem below means that afterwards they go down to their place on earth and even when they who fear Hashem are already below in their place those words retain their shape above I found the secret in the book of Enoch that all the words that the righteous on earth bedeck themselves with stand before the king namely when they repent with love they are adorned with their wickedness which turned into merit as said they stand on their own above before the king and the holy one blessed be he is delighted by them after that the righteous descend and the words stay standing. Before him in the same shape of wickedness turned into merit as the righteous uttered them the holy one blessed be he is delighted in that image and afterwards they are written in the book of remembrance before him so they would exist before him always 440 he asks what is the meaning of took heed of his name he answers it was already explained that those who heed and value the words of Torah cleave to their master in the secret of the holy name to know him so the wisdom of his name will be fixed upon their heart of them it is written who took heed of his name for this is the secret of the holy name section 36 and above the firmament we hear the meaning of and above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne in appearance like a sapphire stone the firmament refers to the lower firmament for no one can behold the one above the throne refers to the throne below had it said the throne it would have meant the supernal throne and this is impossible because the supernal throne cannot be seen it is concealed and undisclosed in the likeness as the appearance of a man the appearance includes all the forms of the utterances of wisdom the secrets of shock go up and stand in the likeness of man rabbi shimon tells the rabbis that he can see the secret of man is impressed upon them all and that the righteous are destined to be seen by all he admonishes rabbi Yussi for thinking of worldly matters and rabbi Yussi. Comes back to the words of the Torah, so his image is complete. 441 It is written, and above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne in appearance like a sapphire stone. Yeshua 126 This verse was already explained, yet above the firmament refers to the lower firmament beneath Malchut, as you friends have explained, for they mentioned it in the name of Rabbi Shimon. Happy is my portion, and happy is your portion, for nobody can behold the upper firmament by no, but it is written about the firmament below within Malchut, and you shall see my back. Shema 3323 And above this firmament that sapphire stone is located, which we said, I as Malchut, based on the inference of its being a good and precious pearl, as I explained. 442 It is written, the likeness of a throne, and not the likeness of the throne, for there is throne and throne, the throne is supernal, concealed, and undisclosed, that is not revealed, and no one can bear look at it and know it being by no. Therefore it is simply written a throne without the definite article for it is a lower throne namely Malchut 443 the likeness as the appearance of a man Yashiskel 126 he asks since it was said likeness why add as the appearance would not it suffice to say the likeness of a man he answers the likeness of man represents the high secret of the high glory that is Z-E-I-R-N in Y-U-D Hav faithfully spelled with Aleph is which equals the numerical value of Adam this is the likeness of man sitting on the throne which is Malchut and the addition the appearance includes all the forms of the words of wisdom called sight or appearance for Chakma is so called they are the secrets of Chakma that go up and adorn themselves above in Z-E-I-R-N and then assume the likeness of man namely that form with which the righteous are bedecked and in all these the holy one blessed be he is delighted in his crowns 444 and you friends the holy one blessed be he is delighted even now with the words you said and they are crowned on that way and you have established the likeness of a man before your master by your holy forms for when I beheld you and regarded your shapes I saw that you were marked with the secret of man and I knew that your shape is invited above and so the righteous are destined to be recognized by everyone and display the sacred form of their countenances before the whole world this is the meaning of the verse all that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which Hashem has blessed Yeshua 619 445 while he was speaking he saw Rabbi Yossi contemplating worldly matters he told him Yossi stand and complete your image for one letter is missing in you for since he was contemplating worldly things he called him Yosi and not Rabbi Yosi Rabbi Yossi arose and rejoiced in words of Torah and stood before him Rabbi Shimon looked upon him and said Rabbi Yossi now you are whole before the ancient one had him and your images. Whole section 37 and they made the headplate Rabbi Shimon opens with and they made the plate sits of the holy crown of pure gold sits means to peak and that is because the plate is to be looked at for the plate reflects immediately the level of righteousness of the person looking at it in the plate the letters of the holy name were engraved when a righteous person stood before it the light would come from the plate and shine upon his face the priest would notice this only the first time but not later the reflection is because the mirror shines on him from above as an indication that God wants him if a person stands before that plate and his face never shows the holy reflective light the priest knows that he is an evil doer 446 he opened and said and they made the headplate headsets of the holy crown of pure gold Shema 3930 he asks why is it called sits lit to peep and answers it I as meant to be looked at and since it is there for men to see it is called sits and whoever glances at that glint it is reflected at once on him whether he is righteous or not 447 he explains his words in the headplate were the letters of the holy name ornamentally engraved in it if a righteous man stands before it the letters engraved in gold would shine in relief and their lights would go from below upward protruding from the engraving and shine in the face of that person 448 at one time the sparkling would shine in him and at one time it would not he explains when the priest looked first at the person he saw the illuminations of all the letters on his face but when he looked closely he would see nothing but the light of his face to the extent of the sparkling coming from gold shining on him and no more only the priest understood what he saw at first glance which he saw for a while and the same with everyone else it is because the holy one blessed be he fav
Explanation where Boaz saw that many kings and rulers were destined to issue from her the kings are like eyes because the eyes lead the body now we hear that the field being reaped is Zion and Jerusalem for the eyes that will issue from her shall rule in that field where the Torah is received and when you are thirsty means that if you desire to be attached to a man and raise a seed you should go to the vessels who are the righteous the vessels of Hashem, only God makes use of these. Vessels 450 and they made the headplate headsets of the holy crown Shema 3930 Rabbi Yehuda opened the discussion and read from the scroll of Ruth Let your eyes be on the field that they reap brought 29 We have to examine the relevance of this verse here Rabbi Yitzhak said to him in the same way there are many verses in the Torah that seem as if they do not need to be written yet we see high secrets in them all Rabbi Yehuda said that whoever looks at the verse but not closely is like Someone who never tasted a dish 451 he answers there is a mystery which was written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit for Boaz the judge of Israel saw the humility of this righteous woman who did not lift up her eyes to look elsewhere but in front of her and he saw that whatever she beheld she did so with a benevolent eye and there was no impudence in her he then praised her eyes 452 for some eyes caused that there will be no blessing upon that place and Boaz saw a benevolent eye in her and also that she brings prosperity for the more she gleaned the more was to be gleaned in the field and Boaz saw that the Holy Spirit was upon her then he said let your eyes be on the field that they reap and go after them and if you say that it is for the other gleaners that he told Ruth on the field that they reap and go after them therefore why did he tell her to go after them and not to glean after them what is the meaning of go after them he said that about her eyes that Brought many blessings and therefore go after them after your eyes. No one in the world has permission to follow their eyes, but you shall go after your eyes, for they bestow many blessings. 453. Another explanation concerning let your eyes be on the field that they reap. Boaz looked at the Holy Spirit and saw that many high kings and rulers are destined to issue from her, and they are the eyes of all she is like Tamar, who sat by the entrance of an Amlet eyes. Bear she 3814, for she sat at the opening and through her issued high kings and rulers called eyes. It is written through the eyes of the congregation. Demit bar 1524, for as the members of the body follow the eyes alone, and the eyes lead the body, so are kings and the Sanhedrin and all the rulers. Everybody follows them. This is why he mentioned your eyes, which are those kings and rulers destined to issue from her. 454. He asks, it is written in the field. What is a field? He answers, it is Zion and Jerusalem is his. Written Zion be plowed like a field, Misha 312, and as the smell of a field which Hashem had blessed, bear she 2727, which is Jerusalem, therefore it is written, Let your eyes be on the field, for the eyes that will issue from her shall rule no place save the field that they report from that field. All the people receive Torah and shining light as is written, for out of Zion shall go forth Torah, Yeshea 23, 455, and you shall follow them with the good deeds I see, and you have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch you. Rot 29 is to be understood at face value, for a woman's mind is easily swayed, therefore he warned the young men not to touch her, and when you are thirsty, if it is clean language, it's meaning I ask that if you desire to be attached to a man and raise a seed, go to the vessels, if it to the righteous called the vessels of Hashem as is written, be clean you that bear the vessels of Hashem, Yeshea 5211, for the righteous are destined to be brought by. The whole world as a gift to the king Messiah. These are the vessels the Holy One blessed be he takes delight in they are broken vessels in this world for the sake of observing the Torah and the Holy One blessed be he is waited upon only by them and when you are attached to them drink section 39 and his heart was merry we learn from Rabbi Yossi that and his heart was merry as written in and Boaz ate and drank and his heart was merry means that he said that benediction over his food heart refers to Malchut since food is of below God cannot take satisfaction from it unless it is prayed over but on the Shabbat the food itself and the pleasure of eating are included above and below this is the secret of for all things come of the end of your own have we given you whoever blesses God has to do it joyously with a benevolent eye the four chariots in charge of the four directions of Malchut and the troops of angels are nourished by that benediction. After a meal now Rabbi Yossi explains for he gives of his bread to the poor saying that a man with a benevolent eye gives to the poor out of his own blessing and joy the other part of this meaning is that he gives to the place that needs sustenance from all sides that is Malchut who has nothing by itself in the sense Malchut is poor from your Rabbi Yossi moves to discuss he went to lie down at the end of the heap and your belly is like a heap of wheat whoever says the benediction with joy. Ascends after death to the holy temples of Malchut called he from each precept of the master high secrets and highlights and radiances are suspended those who do not observe these precepts are impudent when they looked upon the golden plate with the engraved letters of the holy name their hearts were broken so that they would feel shame and they would surrender before their master 456 Rabbi Yossi opened the discussion with the verse and Boaz ate and drank and his heart was merry 37. What does it mean and his heart was merry it means that he said the blessing over his food and it was explained that its meaning is that whoever says the blessing after the meal he makes merry his heart who is such a one he is alluded to into you my heart has said Tehillim 278 and the firm strength of my heart Tehillim 7326 referring to Malchut called heart 457 and since the blessing after the meal pleases the holy one blessed be he whoever blesses when satisfied does good and joy you. Another place of his Malchut as shown by the meals of Shabbat for that other place Malchut enjoys the blessing and the joy of satiation here Malchut takes pleasure in the blessing of satisfaction of Boaz the righteous this is the meaning of and his heart was merry 458 what is the reason Malchut enjoys the blessing after the meal a man's food is troublesome to the holy one blessed be he being of that place that is Malchut when he eats and drinks and says the blessing over food the blessing. Rises and Malchut enjoys the rising word said by the satisfied man so man enjoys the food below and Malchut above 459 this is a mystery among the friends the mystery is that on weekdays that place derives enjoyment only from the words coming from satiation namely from the blessing after the meal and all the words are crowned satiated and satisfied with joy and that place takes pleasure in them on Shabbat it is another principle Malchut enjoys the actual food and the pleasure in the food consumed to fulfill the Shabbat precept and the food itself is totally included high and low this is the secret of for all things come of you and of your own have we given you Adabrahim 2914 assuredly Malchut partakes of this enjoyment of man and the joy in eating to fulfill the Shabbat precept as explained 460 whoever blesses the Holy One blessed be he when he is full should have intention in his heart and gladness in his mind and must not be sad but he has to bless joyously. According to the secret and pay attention that now he gives to another gladly and with a benevolent eye and as he blesses gladly with a benevolent eye so he will be given gladly with a benevolent eye and therefore one will not be in sadness at all but in gladness and with words of the Torah and one should be careful to bless the proper place namely Malchut 461 here is a secret the four chariots in charge of the four directions of Malchut and the troops of angels are nourished by that. Blessing over satiety and the words blessed are you and the blessing after the meal Malchut enjoys grows and adorns herself with them and he who blesses should do it willingly joyously and with a benign eye therefore it is written he that has a generous eye shall be blessed Mishlei 229 462 here we ought to understand the verse ending thoroughly for it goes on to say for he gives of his bread to the poor but you may disagree with it that the beginning of the verse speaks of it. Blessing after the meal and has no connection to the end and the end has no connection to the beginning but a man of benevolent eye as we said assuredly blesses gladly with a benign eye and not for no reason does he joyously bless for from that blessing and joy he gives of his bread to the poor namely to the place which needs sustenance from all sides right and left the place that has nothing to itself but enjoys on all sides and is included on all sides this is Malchut which is therefore called poor of which is said for he gives of his bread to the poor these words are told solely to the wise men who know the high mysteries and the ways of the Torah 463 come and see Boaz had a benevolent eye he was never impudent it is written he went to lie down at the end of the heap brought 37 this is the secret of your belly is like a heap of wheat sure Hasherim 73 alluding to Malchut Malchut is found even at the end of the heap from this I learned that whoever says the blessing over Food properly with joy willingly
Thus the plate atoned for the impudent and shameless 465 the letters of the secret of the holy name engraved upon the plate shone with glittering emitting light whoever looked upon the radiance of the letters his face would fall in terror and his heart would break then the plate atones for them that way for it caused their heart to break and them to surrender before their master section 40 the incense in this passage Rabbi Yossi tells of the great power of Incense to break evil inclinations to banish sorcery and to protect us from the other side it is as miraculous as the golden plate furthermore whoever reads and studies intently the section on the preparation of the incense is protected when the smoke of the incense went up like a pillar the priest saw the letters of the holy name soaring in the air and going up like a pillar afterwards many chariots circled it on all sides it creates unity above and below atoning for sin and idolatry 466 so is the incense whoever smelled the smoke coming from the pillar of smoke rising from the smoke razor would cleanse his heart totally to worship his master and the filth of the evil inclination would pass from him he would have only one heart towards his father in heaven since incense breaks the evil inclination on all sides as the plate is miraculous so is the incense for nothing in the world breaks the other side except incense 467 come and look at the verse take a censer and put fire in it from off the altar and put on incense beamed bar 1711 what is the sense for wrath has gone out from Hashem the plate has begun to but nothing breaks that side except for incense for nothing is more delightful before the holy one blessed be he than incense it can revoke sorcery and evil things at home the smell and smoke of man made incense cancel sorcery when done for that specific purpose and incense all the more 468 it is a standing decree before the holy one blessed be he that whoever looks at and reads every day the section of the preparation of incense he is protected from all evil things and sorcery in the world from mishaps and evil brooding from bad punishment and death and shall not come to harm on that day for the other side may not have power over him only he must read it intently 469 rabbi shimon said if people would know how lofty is the section of the preparation of incense before the holy one blessed be he they would take each word and raise it to be Adorned as a golden crown upon their heads whoever studies well the section on the formulation of the incense has to examine it closely and if he concentrates on it every day he has a portion in this world and in the world to come death is banished from him and from the world and he is protected from this world's ordinances the ordeal of Gehenom and the judgment of other kingdom have Malchut 470 in that incense when the smoke went up like a pillar the priest saw the letters of the holy name. Soaring in the air and going up like a pillar and afterwards many chariots circled it on all sides and it goes up shining and joyous and gladdens those who are gladdened and binds bonds that is creates unity above and below so that everything becomes one this has already been explained this atones for the evil inclination and idolatry which is the other side as clarified section 41 and you shall make an altar for the burning of incense Rabbi Yossi says there are two. Altars an inner one for fragrant spice burnt incense and an outer one for burnt offering the other side is bound and tied to the altar when he saw the smoke of incense rising he fled leaving the tabernacle purified wherever the section of the incense is said with dedication death has no sway even as Aaron bound the angel of death so he could have no power nor could he pronounce judgment a man can escape judgment if he says twice a day the passage of the incense ordinance upon this passage the world exists and also the world to come if it is not said judgment and plagues hover over the land and it is ruled by other nations Rabbi Yossi tells us that the section of the incense is dearer to God and more important than all prayers incense does more than prayer by creating unity and bringing light and removing filth from the world the incense unites Zir and Malchut Malchut then becomes Hay hey, unites with Bob that is Zir and the Bob rises to be adorned by the first Havana. That hay is glittering by the yud that is chakma then all there will rises to infinity and all of them become one the holy name shines and adorns itself all the worlds rejoice candles burn brightly and there is food and blessing for all the worlds 471 he opened and said and you shall make an altar for the burning of incense Shema 301 we should look carefully into this verse for there are two altars of fragrant spice burnt incense and a burnt offering the former an inner and the latter an outer one why is it called an altar if no animals are sacrificed upon it to give it the name of altar 472 since some evil beings were neutralized and bound and the other side is bound it cannot rule nor denounce therefore it is called an altar Hebmas beach for the other side is bound and tied to it like a sacrificed animal Hebzeb and when the other side saw the smoke of incense rising he surrendered and fled and could not approach the tabernacle so it was purified and no one Delighted in that high joy but the Holy One blessed be he alone since he is very fond of it the altar stands inside for there are blessings in such an altar and therefore it is not exposed that is it stands inside 473 it is written about Aaron and he stood between the dead and the living and the plague was stayed Bimidbar 1713 for he bound the angel of death so he could not have power at all nor carry out punishment a sign was given to us that wherever the section of the incense is set with intention and a willing heart death has no sway over that place nor can it harm also other nations have no power over that place 474 come and look at the verse an altar for the burning of incense Shema 301 he asks why is it called an altar if it is meant for burning incense he answers this is because fire is taken from that place to burn incense like Aaron did as is written take a censer and put fire in it from off the altar Bimidbar 1711 moreover since it is an altar it must be Sanctified by that incense therefore it is for the burning of incense in other senses that the burning of incense literally means that incense must be burnt only in a censer 475 come and see whoever is pursued by judgment is in need of incense and must repent before his master for incense helps judgment to disappear from him and assuredly judgment leaves him if he is wont to say twice a day morning and evening the passage of the incense as is written sweet incense every morning at evening he shall burn incense upon it Shema 307 to 8 upon this the world perpetually exists as is said a perpetual incense before Hashem throughout your generations if it ate, assuredly this world is sustained by it and so is the world to come 476 wherever the section of incense formulation is not daily mentioned when not recited judgment and many plagues hover above this place and it is ruled by other nations therefore it is written a perpetual incense before Hashem it stands always before Hashem more than other devotions the section of the incense is more precious and delightful to the Holy One blessed be he than all worship and petitions and though prayer is most valuable the section of the incense formulation is more highly regarded and precious to the Holy One blessed be he 477 come and see the difference between prayer and the section of incense prayer was composed instead of the sacrifices offered by Israel but all those sacrifices are not as valuable as the incense. Also the difference between them is that prayer perfects whatever needs perfection incense on the other hand does more by both perfecting and binding that is creating unity and brings more light than anything else which removes filth and cleanses the tabernacle and everything is shining perfected and joined together 478 therefore the section of incense is recited before the prayer every day to remove filth from the world for it perfects everything on that day like a desired sacrifice with which the Holy One blessed be he is pleased 479 it is written of Moses and Hashem said to Moses take to you sweet spices bomb Shema 3034 this was already explained nevertheless why is it written here take to you a bit that was not said elsewhere he answers take to you means for your pleasure and benefit for it is as a purified wife bringing pleasure to her husband for incense purified the tabernacle which is Malchut the bride of Moses who was a chariot of Zeir and this is the inner meaning of take to you sweet spices to remove the filth so that the wife Malchut is sanctified by her husband Zeir and blessed is the portion of Moses 480 in the same manner it is written of Aaron take you a young calf Vayikra 92 this also means for your pleasure and benefit namely to atone for his sin of the golden calf that he brought upon Israel therefore it is written of Moses take to you namely for your pleasure and benefit 481 the incense joins things together too. When it unifies brings light and removes filth the dollop becomes hafer before uniting with Zeir and Malchut is dollop for without Chesedim she does not shine and is forehead dollop but when Zeir and unites with her chakma in her is clothed by Chesedim and she shines with all perfection and becomes hay the incense unifies Zeir and with Malchut causing the dollop to become hay by this the hay is united with Bob which is Zeir and and the Bob rises to be adorned by the first hay which is Bina and so receives plenty for Malchut that hay Bina is glittering from the yud
For nothing rises is perfected or connected before filth is removed by incense it is written and he shall make atonement for the holy place first and then because of their transgressions in all their sins Vayikra 1616 Therefore one should atone for the holy place and remove filth and purify the holiness by use of incense and then sing hymns and pray as we already said 484 Happy are Israel in this world and in the world to come for they know how to perfect above and below is this. Perfection is ought to be done from below upward until everything is bound together into one supernal knot that is the incense it is done when improvement is necessary by perfecting the engraved letters which constitute the name of the Holy One blessed be he that is why you behave up a section 42 in sorrow you shall bring forth children Rabbi Lazar asks his father Rabbi Shimon how this title passage applies to the supernal woman Malchut Rabbi Shimon replies by referring to as the heart pants after the water brooks coming to the conclusion that the female Malchut pants after the water the light of Hasidim conceives from the male and is in labor because she is under judgment he says that when she gives birth God prepares for her a big supernal serpent it bites that place and she delivers the meaning of I will greatly multiply the pain of your childbearing is that she shudders daily and is saddened by the deeds of the world the sorrow of the title Versus the secret of the serpent that saddens the face of the world. Rabbi Shimon says that Malchud was originally as big as Zir Anpin, but she diminished her light and rule and has no power herself. But what Zir Anpin gives her exactly like the moon and the sun, and so he rules over her. We are told that the serpent sorrow is required because he opened the way through which the upper souls descend into the world, and if it weren't for that opening, no souls would dwell inside man at all in sin. Crouches at the door, the door is the door of Malchud, whose purpose is to give birth. The serpent stands at the door. However, Rabbi Shimon tells us any souls that descend into holy bodies do not have the serpent present at their entrance because their gates are not closed as they are drawn from the right column. But for everyone else, the serpent rules over the body, and Malchud rules over the soul, both being wrapped around one another. Lastly, we hear that when the serpent delivers before his time. He dies at delivery as written in he will destroy death forever and the dead men of your people shall live my dead body shall arise 485 Rabbi Shimon and his son Rabbi Lazar were sitting one night and studying the Torah Rabbi Lazar said to Rabbi Shimon his father it is written to the woman he said I will greatly multiply the pain of your childbearing in sorrow you shall bring forth children and yet your desire shall be to your husband Bereshit 316 we learned that this high secret THT is which applies also to Malchud above I true below for the physical woman but if this is the reflection of above to with the supernal woman Malchud was told in sorrow you shall bring forth children what then is the meaning of all this 486 Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion and said as the heart longs for the water brooks tail 422 this verse was already explained yet there is a living creature in the world which is Malchud it has in its charge a thousand keys every day namely the illumination of Chakma called thousand this animal is female and is always desirous of the water brooks that is of Chesedim of Zeir Anpin in which Chakma clothes itself to drink and quench her thirst for Chakma in her cannot illuminate without Chesedim and therefore it is dark and a thirst for the light of Chesedim called water as is written as the heart longs for the water brooks 487 here we should look closely in the beginning it is written heart which is masculine and not the feminine do later it is written longs in the feminine form the secret thereof is that male and female are together and must not be separated nor mention the one without the other only together the female longs for the water brooks conceives from the male and is in labor because he is under judgment 488 when she gives birth the holy one blessed be he prepares for her a big supernal serpent it bites that place and she delivers this is the meaning of I will greatly multiply the Pain of your childbearing, Bereshit 316, because she shudders daily and is saddened by the deeds of the world. In sorrow you shall bring forth children, if it is sorrow is the secret of the serpent which saddens the face of the people, for it brought death to them by the temptation of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and she needs him to open the opening so she can deliver 489, and yet your desire shall be to your husband, if it is connected to longs for the water brooks, tail him 422. She is desirous of Zeir Anpin that will fill her with abundance of Chesedim, so she will quench her thirst, and he shall rule over you. Bereshit 316 refers to the meaning that he Zeir Anpin rules over her Malchut, and all this is because in the beginning she was as big as Zeir Anpin, and he did not rule over her, and since the moon said, as we learned, that she is Malchut, who said that it is not possible for two kings to rule under one crown, she was told to diminish herself for that reason she Diminished her light and her rule and has no power of her own but what powers Eir Anpin gives her and so he rules over her as is said and he shall rule over you 490 in sorrow you shall bring forth children is explained that sorrow is the inner meaning of the serpent and if you say why do we need the serpent he answers he opened the way through which the souls descend into the world and but for that opening through which the souls can descend no souls would dwell inside man it is written. Sin crouches at the door Bereshit 47 what is the story it is the door of Malchud which purpose is to give birth to deliver souls into the world he the serpent stands at the door 491 but all the souls that descend into holy bodies namely the souls drawn from the right column the serpent is not present at the entrance for then Malchud is not obliged to draw Shachma from the power of the left column her gates are not closed so there is no need for the serpent to open them the serpent has. No dominion over that soul otherwise the serpent bites and that place is defiled and such soul does not remain pure of these it is written in sorrow you shall bring forth children and the secret thereof is the serpent with whom she bears souls that is he opens the door as was said for the one the serpent rules over the body the body being born of the defilement of the serpent and the other Malchut rules over the soul as souls issue form her both are clothed with each other one attached to the soul and one to the body 492 the serpent is destined to deliver all those bodies before his time is due this is the meaning of the verse before she traveled she brought forth Yeshua 667 because though the serpent gives birth after seven years here he bears after six years that is before his time and when he bears at that time he dies at delivery as is written he will destroy death forever Yeshua 258 and the dead men of your people shall live my dead body shall arise Yeshua 2619 section 43 the resurrection of the dead rabbi shimon says at the time of the resurrection the dead will awaken in the holy land because joseph kept the covenant on their behalf here messiah is destined to be revealed all the troops in the land of galilee will return to their ancestors peace of land and everyone will recognize one another god will give each person his embroidered garment and all will come and praise him in jerusalem that shall then expand on all sides then god will rejoice with them it is written wake up and rejoice you who dwell lowly in the dust 493 rabbi shimon said at that time when the dead of the world will arise and prepare themselves to go to the holy land troops upon troops shall rise upon the land of the galilee for their king messiah is destined to be revealed as this is the portion of joseph and the place where they were first broken and once they were exiled from their habitations to be dispersed among the nations as said, but they are not grieved for the ruin of Joseph. Amos 66, 494. Why shall those who are about to resurrect awaken there? Because it is the heritage of him who was put in the ark, as is written, and he was put in a coffin, also ark in Egypt. Bereshit 5026. After that, he was buried in the holy land, as was written, and the bones of Joseph, which the children of Israel brought up out of Egypt, they buried in Shem. Yahashua 2432. And he, Joseph, kept the covenant more than all the tribes. 495. At that time, when all the troops shall rise upon the land of the Galilee, they shall all return each to his ancestors' inheritance, as is written, and you shall return every man to his possession. Vayikra 2510. And everybody will recognize each other. The Holy One, blessed be he, will give each and every one embroidered garments, and all will come and praise their master in Jerusalem, where multitude will assemble, and Jerusalem shall extend on all sides more than it expanded when they assembled. When returned from the exile 496 and when they gather and praise their master the Holy One blessed be he will rejoice with them as said therefore they shall come and sing in the height of Zion and then shall flow to the bounty of Hashem Yermeah 3111 each one shall return to his property and the property of his ancestors and the heritage of Israel shall reach to the heights of Rome where Torah will be studied as was already explained as written wake up and rejoice you who dwell lowly. In the dust Yeshua 2619 blessed is Hashem forever amen and amen.